くとこ、チェプカルト。ははは、ニハオ。ニハオ、アワリオ。ヒョロ。We're gonna be weirded out on what the freak is going on. Oh, come on. My own damn page won't even refresh. Hello, new person. My shiz would ever refresh, then we could、uh, do something here. Say hi. Do something. Eat fish. All right, so we already verified we have sound. Anyways, we'll get going here in a minute. Everybody come in. Once everybody c o m e in here, we'll be good to go. Hello, Andrew. What is up with you today, sir? Justin, what's going on? Not much.、Um, you saw from the community post, kind of changed that up a little bit to get the guns from you know, being upside down and backwards to being in a much better position.、Uh, Samuel, what's going on? Driving home, but you're here. Well, that's good to know. Drive safely. Don't, don't put yourself in any trouble as you're driving home. That would be bad for you. We don't want you to get in any trouble.、Uh, also, I decided to use a level today and I actually leveled everything out. So, can you believe that shite? What's up, Inquisitor? Not is up much today. Not is up much today. That's me using English. I don't like English. English sucks.、Uh, did I get a picture of the wrecked race car? Hold on a second. Let me see. Got to go in. Yeah, thank you. This is me、uh, looking at stuff and、uh, looking at stuff.、Uh, no, Andrew, I do not see it. Send it again. Er, er, er. Just send me it again.、Uh, let's see. Can I keep the noise down, please? You'll be fine.、Uh, let's see, we're recovering from the eclipse. Yeah, I haven't even gone outside. I've been hanging out inside and avoiding it as much as humanly possible.、Uh, last time you came this early, she left you. Hey, Wood, what's going on, bro? How are you doing today?、Uh, sorry, I didn't see you for a month. Yeah, it's been a while, Ray Fan.、Uh, new, real pew pews or airsoft? They are real guns. Can you please keep the noise down? You are trying to relax. Turn your volume down. It works wonders.、Uh, God! Where? Oh, those. Don't worry about them. I also changed the Glock out for a shotgun in the corner. So, yeah.、Uh, put your first like down, bub. My what?、Uh, oh, yeah. Only one person did so far. Hmm. Wow, a lot of things have changed. Yeah, I moved to the other side of the room and I decided to display some of the firm arm arm arms. From one firearm fanatic to another salute from South Africa. Well, welcome in. Is Colt worth the money? Wait a little bit longer.、Uh, Dan Wesson and CZ, excuse me, CZ bought Colt and hopefully they will inject some of the money and hopefully they'll use some of the stuff that Dan Wesson has been doing into the Colt lineup, which will then bring them up right this moment. No, get something else. Get a、uh, Springfield operator. Probably will outshoot the、uh, Colt stuff. No problem. You created a dog made of pyrite. You are coming along well, you. Nice, nice. Digging the wall display. What did I use for hardware? It's actually really cheap shit.、Um, I went to Harbor Freight just to find some more hooks, and they had these things Yukon 65 inch multi purpose wall mount tool organizers. And. I just decided to give them a shot and I wanted to see, make sure that the,、uh, the biggest thing that you run into is this is how short the hooks are. But as long as it's regular pistols, even、uh, the double stack SIGs and stuff, they fit and then they lean back against the wall. So they're not going anywhere. I pounded in some of the、um, drywall anchors and they didn't go anywhere. But I still got to pull out the screws that are in the wall and fill those in. But other than that, it's actually going pretty well. I even was able to get the、uh, AR 15 to sit flush or straight. So, 
Uh, what are my thoughts on Cajun Gunworks? I like them. Their parts are reasonable for what they do. Uh, even their service isn't terrible. Uh, if I didn't know Life of Boris is back, I didn't know Life of Boris went away. Uh, is that the new shirt? It's not the revised shirt. This is the old one that the first one they sent me, but it will be one of them. Uh, the new one's gonna, the, when they send it to me, the logo's coming down a little bit and it'll be bigger. Uh, not the logo, but the flag. Uh, let's see. Is Canic Firearms worth the money? Yeah, I think it is, Ibrahim. Uh, they are decent guns. They shoot well. They have good triggers. In general, I like them. Uh, I shoot them pretty well. Uh, the SFX lineup and the Rival lineup, uh, they're both really good guns. You won $1,000 on a scratch-off. Nice, Alistair. You're going to change from your name from you to your favorite word. What's your favorite word? Do you think Beretta pistols still live up to the hype? They're decent guns. They're functional. They'll run a long time. You'll notice I don't have any up there because I just don't. They're, they're, they are they're kind of live in the same uh, vicinity as Glock to me. They're a little bit boring, although I need to get an M9A4 so that I have a suppressor host. If you, I've got the suppressor on a stick up there. I could just leave it like this, but I like having it at a little bit of an angle. That way when I'm looking at the screen, it's not as bad a bit of a switch. Uh, what caliber would you choose for self-defense? Uh, Brady, what's up, dude? Nice rifle, thanks. Yeah, that's that one I was telling you guys about a few times. That's the uh, unique AR upper on the Palmetto State lower with the primary arms and the Franklin binary. So, it's a decent one. She do the job. Um, you're including, you're inclined to the Springfield Garrison for a next purchase, kind of backed by my video. You've grown up around Colts, though, so I have a soft spot. You have a Colt Gold Cup trophy. Though they're nice, don't get me wrong. It's just the last bit that were coming out from Colt during the buyout were all parts bins guns, and so they weren't like specific to each firearm. They were just whatever they had laying around. You see that sometimes when a company buys another company and then they just assemble from what they have left over. So all the guns that came out in 2022, 2023 were all just parts bin guns. That's why the Gold Cup matches that came out in 2023 had the wrong trigger and the wrong rear sight on them. It was pretty interesting and funny. Do I have an M1919? No, I do not. Canic Rival versus Meta Pro. Um, the Meta Pro I like because it comes with the threaded barrel immediately. The Rival is nice because it is a longer barrel. It's about the same length as the Meta Pro. Uh, they both shoot really well. What's up, Snatchy? Sorry, dude. I'm trying to get a bunch of comments. I get a lot more comments now that I got the gun wall, which is really weird. I didn't think guns were going to do that, but, uh, here we see. You're a new, you're, you're a new man now. Kingdom Shed. Nice. Why do you have a stock in the corner without an actual gun? What are you talking about, that? That's a single shot shotgun that I just have hanging from the wall. That is a real gun. Uh, thoughts on Apollo 11 Compact for Sub 1K? I don't like their slide cuts. Uh, the guns seem to work okay. Honest Outlaw liked them. A few other videos I watched, they were kind of cool. One of my buddies just picked up the Apollo 11, but the regular 5-inch. It's interesting, but it just looks kind of clunky to me. And I'm a kind of guy that'll run like a TSL Orange or a SIG 226, and I think the, the, the Live Free Armory Apollo 11. Somehow with that one line going through the slide, they managed to make the whole gun look chunky and clunky and funky, and no, I will not be buying one. Daniel, I already said I do not have an M1919. $200 free shipping for a thousand rounds sound about right. Yeah, that's about right. Prices have actually started going up. So if you can get it for with free shipping for $250, jump on that one. Uh, CZ third row shadow two orange grips. What's my take on it? I just bought it. I haven't shot it yet. So we'll see what it is when I take it to the range. Unfortunately, my last time I had to get a cast, they put a cast that was too big for me to wear regular pants. So I'm wearing sweatpants. So I will not be going to the range wearing sweatpants. Uh, adapter plates versus direct mill your optics. As long as it's not a dovetail plate, then you're good. If you have to use an adapter plate, that's because number one, either they just didn't have the money to redesign the whole slide, or they just wanted to give it more adaptability for other, other optics. But I do prefer like the 320X5 there is direct cut for RMR. So they fit right on there. Uh, they're also cut, for, they'll fit Leopold directly onto the M17s, but I'm fine either way. It doesn't really bother me. You're not enjoying the Shadow 2 comparing to your SPO1 Shadow. Really, why not? 
Uh, what's my opinion? Nope. Uh, favorite suppressor? You've got Trash Pandas and Rugged. Alan, right now, the only one I've got is the uh, Osprey 9, which is the pistol suppressor. And I have a gun coming for that suppressor specifically. And we'll have to wait and see what it does. But, um, yeah, I like Silencer Co., but I'm probably going to get the Yankee Hill R9 for the next one as soon as they come back in stock. Does your YouTube overlords hate you more now for having guns on display during live streams? Actually, no, they don't seem to care. Now, here's the thing. As long as I don't touch them, as long as you don't see me physically touch a gun, they don't care. The algorithm, the AI, knows whether or not I'm physically holding a firearm somehow. Obviously, it can tell whether you're manipulating a firearm. But as long as I don't screw with the guns, they're fine being on display because there's no rule saying you can't display a gun. No worries, Woodward. Lobster, what's going on, dude? Like my picture on the wall. Which picture? Do, 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 do. You always wear your sweats to the range, tactical comfort. Yeah, but these ones have a hole in the crotch, and, you know, I don't have an OnlyFans, so I can't put anything up there. Uh, Trinitive has subbed. Thank you, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, you find that Shadow 2 is very jumpy compared to the SP01 Shadow. Really? Uh, yo, nice wall. Does it violate YouTube TOS? Not yet. Uh, AR-15 Swiss Military just received. Oh, really? Did not know that one. Uh, toss the TOS. Uh, should you go to Wings, etc., or B-dubs? Uh, if you want more variety, I'd go to B-dubs. Nice. Uh, what's wait times now? Last one you got took one and a half years to get the stamp. If you don't do a trust, you we had a guy get approved in two days. Uh, if you do a trust, it can take up to like 49 days uh, with the e-file. If you do it by paper, you're still looking at a super long wait. But if you do it with the e-file, it's way, way, way less. Uh, for ARs, what's the highest quality $800 to $1,200 brand? Uh, Colt sells in that price. IWI Zion uh, sells in that price. Um, you can get some full arrow builds that are in that price range. Stag Arms, I think I already said them. Um... So you actually have quite a few choices. Uh, you can get some of the higher end, like um, Diamondback ones. They have like the slightly more match grade versions that you can get in that eight to twelve hundred dollar range that do pretty good. What's up, Lego guy? Did I ever have any pistols with stocks or arm braces? Uh, no, I've never had a arm braced pistol. Uh, I did have a couple of chassis systems when they were first coming out, but I haven't really messed with any of those in a long time. Um, you got the stainless Kimber rafter bone handle. Do I like those? I haven't played with the, with, with the rafter. Actually, I gotta look that up. What is that? Did you mean to put rafter? Do, 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 do. Uh, I've not played with the Raptor. I like the cuts. They look like the ones that were on my Aegis. I had the Aegis, though. Uh, you just put in a bid, and it got accepted on a set of three high standard 22 mags for 50 bucks. 22 mag guns? Uh, which semi-auto shotgun would I choose between five and $700? I wouldn't. I'd go up to $1,000 and probably take, like, a used uh, A300. Baka! Hey, man. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you for the $10 donation out of nowhere. Out of out of, out of of the backfield comes a $10 donation. We love that. Thank you. You love your Springfield Armory Saint. They're decent. They had some uh, early uh, teething issues, but they seem to have worked all those out. Uh, nobody fell into a portal. Uh, I avoided the eclipse just to make sure I didn't get sucked into a portal of any kind. Do I have any mill serps? I've got a few, but they just sit in the safe because I don't use them at all. Uh, I've got... Um... Come on, brain. Think. 941 Jericho and a um, Beretta. They're all normally like 50 bucks a piece. Oh, that's good. Uh, A300 is not yet in South Africa. We're limited on what they bring in. One that I'm actually interested in seeing, Ibrahim, is they are coming out with uh, TSOS SDS out of Turkey is coming out with a $200 gas piston semi-automatic shotgun that I want to try. Uh, when those come out, I will definitely be putting my hands on one of those. Um, 
but I'm not a real big long gun guy. Like I said, that's that AR-15 up there has been like my primary AR-15. I'll buy them when somebody wants to sell one really cheap, but I really don't like to go out of my way to buy them. Man, that one up there is a custom build. Um, it honestly, it costs more than a Daniel Defense now. Um, noted. Yep. So back to that whole AR-15 thing. I would actually build my own if I'm going to spend 1200 bucks. Uh, opinion on pairing high quality uppers with budget lowers. That's a good question, Peter. Uh, and that is technically what you are talking about because that is a $1,500 upper on a $35 PSA Virginia lower. However, it has a $500 binary trigger in it and added on parts for extended releases and things like that and MB uh, safeties. So I, I did that. Um, the lower is not nearly as important as long as you get a known brand uh, that is using, I think, 4140 aluminum or whatever they, it's the industry standard for ARs with the uh, custom high end upper on it. You're allowed to have binary triggers? Yeah, binary trigger is one pull, one fire, one release, one fire. So each action of the trigger fires around. Binary is totally fine. Did I sell the DWX? Yes, I did. I sold it to, well, I sold it to Middletown and they sold it to a friend of mine who actually told me on stream that he's the one that bought it. Uh, he bought it because he liked the serial number. I sold it because I had a lot of money tied up into a gun that I never shot. And that's a really stupid thing for me to say when I have all those. But it um, honestly, for what I had into it, it was it was useless to me because it was an optics cut. Like that, I have no intention of optics cutting. The the TSO is just going to stay stock. Uh, damn, you wanted it so bad. Sorry, bro. Uh, let's see. Bear Creek uppers, are they trash like the interwebs say? They're not the best. I would not trust my life to one, but as a range toy, it'd be fine. Who isn't allowed to have binary trigger? Some states, like I think New York, uh, does not allow a binary trigger. And then Massachusetts, you have to have a certain weight pull and things like that. Uh, what's my opinion of LRB arm of Rhode Island? I have no idea. I've never actually seen any of their stuff. Uh, the M14 maker. Never touched any of their things, so I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, also, which part of the weapon is technically regulated again? Uh, technically, the fire control group is in the lower, like of an AR-15. That is the part that is serialized. Technically, if you buy just a blank lower for an AR-15, that is the serialized part. Even the fire control group isn't regulated in an AR-15, just the lower body. Uh, but when you're talking about pistols, it's where the fire control unit goes. Sig Sauer's, like the M17 and the 320 there, those ones have removable fire control units with serial numbers on those, so those can go in different grips. Like, that's actually an M17. It started life as a basic M17, and now it's got a X5 chassis or a frame on it. Uh, I also got an H3 buffer weight and spring you kind of made out today. Nice, dude. Oh, look at that. What the heck? How the heck did Baca do that? Baca, dude, thank you so much. I have never even talked to you. That is awesome. Thank you. Hey, all you dudes that just got gifted a membership. Thank Baca, dude. What's going on, man? That's incredible. Thank you, sir. I didn't even know you could do that over here. That's incredible, dude. Uh, do, 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 do. Are WIT machine suppressors worth buying? Uh, we don't deal with them much. I would be cautious about buying one um, that is, well, that's standard triggers, Haywood. Uh, I would be cautious about buying one from a company that isn't super well known because even Texas Silencer Shop, who came out with their full lineup with the titanium 30 cal and everything, and they were supplying demo ramps, they're already out of business. So you got to be careful because your warranty becomes shite uh, if the company goes out of business. Uh, I have no idea how he did that. That was awesome. Uh, what close up scope would you use for an AR 15 or a semi for close range? Uh, you would want to go with an LVPO, low, uh, excuse me, LPVO, low power variable optics. So you'll get one that's like a one to six. So you just crank the lever over and it'll go from like one power all the way up to six power. That's what I would use if you just want to scope. What's up, Walter? How you doing today? Uh, you're on PC and just saw it was there. 
<laughs> well, we appreciate that, Baca. The whole everything that you're doing there, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, LPVO one to six. Then you can just switch it up as you need to. That is a fixed four power. That's a primary arms ACS ACSS reticle uh, Cyclops. Uh, that's a fixed four power, kind of like an ACOG, which is what I like on that one. Um, but boom, boom. But yeah, uh, an LVPO, but on a shotgun, you're going to be a little bit more limited because you don't want something like that. You'd want something like a Holosun 510 or 511, or 510, excuse me, because it's a bigger uh, uh, bigger dot, and it's just a reflex sight. Where did I get the Shadow 2? That's not a Shadow 2. That is a TS Orange, and I got it from my buddies down in Harrisonburg. Um, thank you, my good man. No problem, Ibrahim. Thank you for being very uh, interacting with me today. I appreciate that. I love it when people come in there and they're actually talking to me. I like that. I like big words and I cannot lie. Other gentlemen cannot dispute. Uh, I just got it, Andrew. Hang on a second. Uh, that looks like a bad wreck, Andrew. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, don't crash your shit, Andrew. Ocean dude, what's going on? RMR and the shotgun works great. Yeah, that's true. Uh, don't forget to like. Yeah, everybody should like. Uh, you've subscribed and like. Thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, see y'all. Oh, Ray fan. Sorry you got to dip out, but thanks for coming in for a while. Uh, stainless versus blued. Um, it's totally up to you. I I have more stainless. Actually, I have more different colored guns. But in a 1911, I'm kind of like a stainless guy. I like the stainless ones. Um, like, I would, I prefer like that, excuse me, the Mitchell Mauser down there. That one is a, that one above my thumb. That one's a stainless polished. I like that. I kind of like a little bit of a look to them. I don't like, like, polish, 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 though. Are they real? Yes, sir, Crypto Walker. They are real for fire, for fire, for fire, arm, arm, arms. It's not a CZ. What the hell can we get a close-up? It is a CZ. It's a CZ Tactical Sport Orange. It's higher than a Shadow. It's a pure race gun. The Shadow can double as a duty gun. The TSO is Tactical Sport Orange, and it's designed specifically to be a uh, range, or excuse me, a competition gun. Do I have a 22 LR Ruger? No. Nah, just I've had a bunch of them. I just keep getting rid of them. Thank you. Cheers for tonight. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you. You made the choice to rebuild it. You are a man of the people. Kind of like, uh, what's his name? The uh, the, the the Aussie guy, um, Eric Bana, when he kept wrecking his Falcon. First time in one of my streams, but you've seen a lot of my stuff and you actually got your first canic thanks to me. Oh, Michael, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm glad that my information helped you. Have I ever seen a 410 AR-15 in person? Yes, I have. Uh, I can't remember the brand. Somebody had one shipped in and picked it up in Harrisonburg. Um, and then there's another guy that just makes straight-up uppers. Duty gun. Shoot like caca. <laughs> it's orange. is a very nice competition gun, too. Yeah, uh, you're talking about the um, ITS orange. So that would be the... Oh, don't just type in it's orange because then you get orange. Nah. TS Orange is a very nice competition. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, but it, the main reason why I got it is because I got it for a, a pretty incredible price and I couldn't pass it up. Uh, what's your opinion on Makarov's? Makarov's. Well, Forgotten Weapons, he's saying it Makarov, so I'm going to from now on, even though it's supposedly Makarov. Um, they're decent. They're fun. I don't like finding ammo. 9x18 is never as available as 9x19. You're going to be busy for the next few months. You're going to step down as a mod. I may only watch once or twice a month. Landscaping is full swing. Ocean, dude. Not a big deal, dude. I'm going to leave you as a mod just because I don't feel like taking it off. But, uh, yeah, dude, if you come in, you come in. If you don't, dude, work is work. Money's money. got to grind and get that funny. I don't know. Uh, your OCD likes this display a lot more better. Yeah, honestly, I was just screwing around with everybody when I was just leaving them hanging and stuff. I was trying different things, and I was just trying some hooks that I found at Harbor at the uh, Tractor Supply Company. And then I was at Harbor Freight this morning looking for different things that I could use to mount stuff with. Steve! 
thank you, Steve. And I went ahead and picked up these because I saw them on the shelf and it was like, might as well try it. And I did, and it seems to be working well. And I still have extra pieces so I can put them over up top there or I can move the AR over and put another whole row. But thank you very much, Steve. Just subscribe, like the channel, and he's got three likes and a fourth like from me. Thank you very much, Steve. You're king. Any experience with the 9mm Jericho Gen 2? No, I've never played with the Gen 2. I like the original all-steel frame um, mill surp uh, the surplus guns. Uh, I've never played with like the Enhanced, which I think is the Gen 2. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, um, the polymer frames, so. but thank you. Kind of want a 410 upper, but having a feeling might have some issues running. Yeah, you're going to have to run like three inches. Opinions on HK. They're decent, but they're very expensive. I've had quite a few of them, and I always wind up selling them because I usually just get tired of them right away. Michael asks, thoughts on Wilson Combat parts for 1911s? Are they worth the money? Yes. I usually run, um, I have to get, for a couple of my other 1911s, I run Wilson Combat Magwells. I run Wilson Combat Firing Pins, um, Extractors, uh, Slide Locks. I usually change out most of the easy-to-change parts with Wilson Combat parts. Um, I don't really care about, like, the backstrap or the sear, but I'll change out the pretty much everything for their Bulletproof series. Um... Hello, comrade. I am back from Africa. Got very nice hyena from Rimoa. Oh, and very nice. Yeah, the upside down hanging pistols really tweaked your OCD. Yeah, I knew it would. Um, I kind of liked it because my buddy's gun shop, they're usually on hooks like that. And I was like, hmm, maybe I'll recreate that. But then I was watching other people's and I'm not putting up slat wall because, again, I'm buying a house in a year. So I need to be able to remove this. Also, I wanted an easier thing to unload because I got to put the guns away when I leave the house for the day. Uh, not the polymer. Okay, so the Gen 2 is still steel. No, I've not. I got, I, I'll be honest, I've never played with that one then. Mr. Mom, nice wall. Thank you, sir. Anything else in combat is worth the money. It's so glorious. Pretty much. Best 45 ACP polymer pistol, in my opinion. MMP 2.045. Uh, even the 1.0 is decent. You, you got to get a Leo one to get rid of the mag disconnect. But MMP and 45 is probably a pretty good one. Casey, what's going on? Uh, can we have 30 seconds of everyone in the chat smashing the hearts button? Aw, oh, you guys are so special. You're so nice. You're so good. Um, your your wallet hates you for buying eight boxes of 50 uh, ammo. Oh, yeah, BMG. Uh, eight boxes of ammo is going to be a little bit expensive, but hey, at least you got them now. Your favorite gun is the Automat, uh, so the uh, Kalashnikov. Do I have any 44 Magnum pistols? Nope. I do not have any 44 Magnums. Uh, revolvers are pistols, my guy. Um, yeah, some guys actually use that as a differentiation. I don't really define them differently. Um, I call re I, I would put revolvers into the handgun category where most modern people refer to pistols as being semi-auto or auto loaders. So it's somewhat forgivable. It, it's almost interchangeable. But I am a semi-automatic guy for the most part. Revolvers are fun. They have their place, but... I don't like loading that much. 8 plus 1 is my, my max. What's up, Casey? How you doing today, brother? Um, guess it's your turn for the ads. Yay! You don't want to talk about how much it was. Um, yes, you do. I'm going to say, how many how many rounds per box? Was it 10 rounds or 5 rounds? Uh, 44 mag is basically a mean caliber outside of bear country. Yeah, I, and, you know, a couple of my buddies have them still. I sold my last one to my buddy Ryan just because I never shot the damn thing. Uh, it was an 8-inch Raging Hunter. Really did nobody any service, and he liked them. Um, any experience with Bond Arms? Just a few of their Derringers. Like, my buddy has the Zombie Derringer, and a few of my other buddies have the Derringers. But I've never really played with them too much. 10 rounds per box, so I'm assuming you paid roughly 60 or $70 a box, so only $500. Come on, that's not that much. Uh, the only thing that sucks about 44 mags, it's not very versatile. 44 Special is so hard to find outside of hand loads. Um, yep, yeah, pretty much. Hey, Devil YouTube, what is going on? I haven't seen you today. I saw you last week. Sorry, throwing it out there in a weird way. Uh, love that. Oh, and it's also your first super. Thank you very much, Devil. Congratulations for popping the churry. Let's go ahead and like that one because he 
came in here and liked it. Did that. Jiminy, take this, brother. Take the brother. Uh, you have a Colt Anaconda. If I didn't inherit one, I probably wouldn't buy one. Yeah, I mean, but for fourteen ninety five, which is the average price, you know, that's like the street price of them. It's not a bad price for a forty four Magnum in a, in a high polish. You carry a three fifty seven Sig in the semi auto. Not bad. They're good rounds. If you're uh, last more than four hours, you need to see a doc. If I Dude, if my 8-inch Raging Hunter lasts for more than 4 hours, I'm going to a, uh, never mind. Uh, you got a discount and you got it for $40 a box. Well, there you go. So you did better than most people do. Is there something you're currently saving up for? You're saving up for a Max X Macro. Yeah, um, I ordered the, I finally got one the distributors. Amongst all of the distributors at Liberty Arms had, only two distributors had the Night Stalker Double Stack. Um, the reason why I don't just buy it retail is because I work for a gun store so I can get it at cost plus a little bit. So I've been waiting for one of the distributors to get the night, uh, the night stalker double stack and they finally did. So I have one of those coming to me right now. Uh, but I have to pay for it. Yay. Devil's using his card. Devil's using a card. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Make that $3, sir. I have a $3 bill. It's got Mickey Mouse on it. It's really stupid. I picked up a Smith & Wesson 29-2 4-inch with factory Mepro light sights and Smith & Wesson finger grooves. Uh, you got it for eight seventy five dollars from a buddy. That's a really solid price for that one, Mr. Mom. Those are very expensive. Whenever we get them in, we're like at around 1100 And that's with just the plain sights, trench rear and stuff. Um, your Smith & Wesson 686 is high, Mr. Mom. Um... Jeez, Louise. Baca is just out here gifting memberships. Holy shit. That's amazing. Right now, the only revolver you keep is the Kimber K6. Uh, the K6 is decent. I haven't had any real time to futz with one, though. Uh, Miss McManus. Five bucks. Forgot this is a thing, and you always miss the live streams. Well, you're here for this one, and you're having fun, I hope. And you're contributing uh, good questions and stuff. And it's your first super. So... Another one pops his cherry on a live stream with my creaky chair. I have to get a new chair. Uh, Christian, you got a membership from Baca. You should thank Baca. Uh, that Colt Gold Cup you have was only shot at Colt's factory. Nice. This is amazing. Yes, people are coming in. They're having fun. We're helping the channel grow, which just helps you guys out because it means I can get more stuff for the giveaways. Uh, best 1911 for least price, and hey there. Hey, Buzz, what's going on? Um, honestly, TSOS gives you the most features for the lowest price. However, if you want to step up from entry, because TSOS is entry level. There's no getting away from that. Step up to Fusion Firearms. They're like seven to eight to $900, but they have a lot of features that $1,500 guns don't. Like my Springfield operator didn't have front strap checkering, and it was a $1,500 gun. So I would step up to a Fusion Firearms. You get front strap checkering, rear strap checkering, nice designs, good functionality, really smooth slides, and they're like 800 bucks. Kimbers are crappy. Eh, if you if you polish them and you do the work to them, they run really good. Oh man, I'm always having fun. Glad to hear it. Nice gun wall. Thank you, dude. I wanted something in the background. Last week they were just swinging and hanging off of hooks. I found these things for 14 bucks. They're just rails that have uh, screws that go into the wall and stuff. And I actually use drywall anchors, so they aren't going anywhere. Me, personally, I have Smith & Wesson bias. I don't know why, but I judge almost all revolvers. Uh, honestly, the Smith & Wesson has a better trigger than the Colt. The Smith & Wesson 29 versus a Colt Anaconda. I'll take the Smith & Wesson over the Colt any day, especially a new one. The real Jason Tracy asked for a call a shout-out. So, the real Jason Tracy. Jason Tracy, you got too many words in your name, bro. You should just be TC. TC, how you doing, man? Uh, Glock 19 is reliable as hell. They're going to run. Buy a Colt Springfield or junk. You have not been following the industry lately then, dude. We, in 2023, we had two Colts during the last gasp of breath from Colt come out, and they were so shitty we had to send one back because it barely racked. And it was a gold cup match with the wrong trigger and the wrong rear sight on it. So, no. Until the new release comes out in 2024, third quarter, then we'll see what happens. Um, is that a stainless SIG with wood grips? Yes, Danny. That is a 226 Elite Custom, or excuse me, Elite Stainless Talo Custom. 
Last Colt from 1911 you put your hands on was factory new in the store, and the rear sight slid out of the slide and onto the floor. Their QC is not great lately. Like you said, during their last bankruptcy before CZ bought them, they literally were just taking every part they had, throwing them in a bundle, and just building guns and shipping them out the door. We've had to send through a couple of them. Uh, give us the couch back, jackass. Uh, I did. I did the short this morning on the couch, and I did a post saying the couch is going to be coming back, and I actually filmed a TSOS gun on the couch that I need to upload, so the couch is coming back. Also, I noticed that the couch is a good sound dissipator, so the reverb isn't coming back at me, so it's actually better for video, so the couch is staying. Uh, my fear is Colt will drag CZ into the toilet with them. Not if they do it right. If they just inject Colt with the money and let them do what they want, like they did with Dan Wesson, I think they got a chance. Dan Wesson, the DWX, their current lineup of guns, they're all decent uh, because CZ has basically left their hands off. Oh, yeah, my own shot off. Sorry. When I was doing all this stuff, I moved them around, so got to put them back here. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. There's the Schwaffs. Uh, do 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 do. Stick with T sauce. They're cheap and built well. Mm. They got a big recall because of their sears. Um, but uh, uh, agreed. Colt has gone to crap. Yep, they, they have a chance. They just need the money. Glock 17 and MP uh, full metal. What would I choose? I would go with the MP9 full metal. Um, just because I would actually step up an extra hundred bucks and get a competitor. Uh, hey, sorry I didn't see them. Glad to hear the old friend is here to stay. Yep, no, don't worry. Uh, there, it is here. Uh, couch is number one cast member. Yep. Fabfest, you're back home from the hospital. Good. How you doing, man? How you feeling? How you doing today? You have a 2016 Colt S70 government, and it's a tack driver. Yeah, back then, um, like I said, that was before they got themselves back into trouble. Do you know if the SIG 226 Knight shoots as accurate as a scorpion or the elite um no i don't know you're, you're talking about the entry level ones um i mean they're all decent guns they're definitely the best shooting sigs uh that sig 226 will keep up with that legion no problem and it'll outshoot that uh m17 all day long what's a good defender alternative then because the colt ones have recently gotten so bad preferring something with a steel frame um get a sig 938 Bro, I'm going to get my auto clicker and going to spam the heart button and maybe the like button. <laughs> you can. It's a little messed up. It doesn't always work. Very, very, very good, bud. Missed the streams. No, man, I'm glad you're back. How have you been, man? What's going on? God, what's the news? Bring us up to speed, if you don't mind. You going to be good? You hate uh, to SIG P30. Uh, Glock is better. Look, I put one on the wall out of the corner just so people don't keep on telling me that I have to have Glocks. But it, it's... I mean, look at it. It just blends in. It's so freaking bland compared to the other guns up there. Uh, the Glock 17 just disappears into the wall. It's unfortunate, but that's that's what Glock is best known for. They make a decent gun that runs good. It's going to defend you. It's going to save your life. It's going to run all the time. You can keep it dirty, and it's probably going to fire every time you fire it. But my freaking God, is it so gosh darn boring. Uh, thoughts on the Colt Gold Cup Light? You picked one up about a year ago, but haven't shot it yet. $1,200 delivered. I never played with one. That's the one with the aluminum frame, right? Uh, what do I think of the Springfield Prodigy? They got a lot better. Um, the 5 inches had less problems, which is funny because typically a 9mm 2011, the 4.25 is the better one. Um, but the uh, the 5 inches, I like I like full size frames, as you can tell. Also, none of those are small frame, or none of them are small slided commanders, officers, none of, none of that she is. Um, but I think they're decent guns. And with the new crop of guns, I'm going to be comparing my T-Sauce to a Prodigy to see if a $500 discount means you get five uh, one third the quality. Uh, 226 won't go off accidentally either. Dude, I've been leaving those loaded on purpose and none of those have gone off. Come on, man. And I was banging on the wall when I was putting up the, the, the rails while they were on there. So, come on, man. Uh, what's my opinion on the HK VP9 Tactical? Ron, it's decent. It does the job. Uh, it's overpriced. It's about $200 too much for what it is, especially since it's an old design. If you want a small, reliable gun but don't want a Glock or M&P or Revolver S&W. Yeah. Uh, what's the trigger on my A-arm? That is a Franklin Armory binary. Everyone should own a Glock or two. It's like walking around with an ugly person to make you look better. Hmm. 
Uh, would you say a flash grenade is lethal or non-lethal? Depends on your proximity to it. If you're on top of it, yeah, the, the flash, the detonation, the concussion wave from it could damage you. Is that a Rise armament? Nope, it's a uh, Franklin Armory binary. Uh, you're talking about CO, COD flashbangs. Oh, you mean like the really fun ones? Do I like the HK USP 45? Yes, but again, too much money. 1200 bucks for an Elite, too much money. You got a Glock 19 because you wanted a cheap and reliable CCW gun. Absolutely, Mike. Runs. Does the job. And since you don't want to modify your carry gun anyways, run it, dude. A Gen 5 trigger is more than adequate for, for doing it. Um, I'll carry my 1911s, but in a pinch, if I had to grab a Glock, I wouldn't feel unarmed or underarmed with one. What do I think about Sons of Gun, Sons of Liberty Gunworks? I've played with a few of their ARs. I like them. Um, they're not really my style just because they like to do things to them. Um, I prefer function over fashion. Uh, Colt XSC Barry, basically a rail gun without the rails. Interesting. Uh, oh, you got your M17 to go off by whacking the back of the slide with your hand and it was allegedly fixed by SIG. Yeah, that's not good. Um, yeah, that's not good at all, McManus. Uh, don't buy M17s. Oh, shit. I guess I got to get rid of that one. Uh, what's my favorite full-size pistol? 1911s. Full-size 1911s. Things like that. The Mitchell Mauser 1911. That's an imitation gold cup. It's made by a company that actually specialized in repro K98s and stuff. Made it home. The tax lady's pissed. Why? What is something I would never use? Um, well, I use bad language, um, all the time, but, uh, honestly, Kiapa Firearms, unfortunately, I don't have a good history with them. I don't like them as a company. I don't like the way they're run. I don't like their business practice. They're like Freedom Group, only people aren't calling them out on their shit because they only put out like four guns a year and they're always retro or imitation guns. Um, but Kiapa, I don't trust them at all. Andrew, I saw the picture of your, gun, your car. Yep. Uh, what random microwave would I recommend? I was told you're the man to come to about this. Um, I have a GE, and it works well. Uh, get at least an 800 watt, though. What's my opinion on SIG P365X Macro? 17 rounds, holds a lot of rounds, but it's still a small frame. I don't like them, uh, but with the Sharp Brothers uh, grip module on it, it's like 380 bucks. Changes it, but then you got an $1,100 SIG. Have I seen the movie Guns of Never On? Nope. Uh, calls the shots. What's up? Uh, 5906 was pretty good. Yeah, every time I get a um, Smith & Wesson semi-auto, I always sell it to my buddy Ryan, though. He loves them. They, him and his brother are collecting them. You want an A15A4, you're a sucker for the looks, and that 556 flies damn quick with the 20-inch. Yeah. Uh, you hated the Beretta, Beretta 92 FS. Uh, Taurus has the better safety de design. Uh, Mike, if you look at the first gen Berettas, they had the safety on there too. How about Diamondback 16 inch barrel? They do all right. They're nothing fancy. Uh, am I familiar with the Springfield M1A? Yes, a little bit. What's my opinion on car firearms? I like that they own Desert Eagle. I don't care for their guns. Their guns are overpriced when you get a steel frame, and they're shit when you don't get a steel frame because they're polymer frame guns, just like the old Rugers. Don't have metal inserts for their frame rails, so they can warp, melt, damage, uh, heat, cold. Doesn't matter. It'll damage them. Never wa buy a Walter PPK. Unreliable and uncomfortable and too many freaking dollars on their signs. Uh, $900 for a PPK in stainless now. How many rounds a year do I shoot through handguns when I'm healthy, when my leg isn't all screwed up? I go at least once a week and shoot a few hundred rounds, so a few hundred rounds times 50. So let's say I do 300 rounds times 50. What is that? Um, 15,000 rounds a year. Uh, what do I think of the Rock 5.7? Just grabbed one today. I have to re-lube that one and take it back out and reshoot it. It wasn't going back into battery, but it's super dry. Uh, you're, you're getting a microwave that stop your phone from ringing when inside. Lost one. Last one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Favorite zombie movie? Uh, Day of the Dead. CZ hands down. Yep. Uh, you take that back. I have a Colt AR-15A4, decent rifle, but it's a Colt. You pay more, pretty much. Although you can get Colts at about a thousand bucks, so the same price as an, as a Zion. Opinion on Swamp Fox? Decent optics. Definitely go with them. Uh, somebody pointed out the new Justice 2 has a much bigger window on it. It's got like a 31 millimeter window. So if you're looking to do target shooting, it's the same size as my Romeo 1 Pro, but it costs like 190 bucks. Pretty hard to beat that value. 
you like the AR-10 more than the M14. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's more modern, semi-auto, uh, with mag, box mags. Although the M Mini M14, uh, pardon me, I'm thinking of the Mini 14. Uh, if I could swing it, it's better to get an LRB or Fulton Armory M1 versus a Springfield M1A. Um, again, I don't have much experience with either company. I've only dealt with old ones, uh, not anything from a newer or a refurbisher or anything. So I'd say just do your research, and unfortunately, I'm not a good opinion giver. Somebody else should give them you an opinion. Uh, was a lever gun in your post earlier 3030 or 4570? It was neither, Andrew. That was actually a Henry Long Ranger chambered in 556. It was a lever action 556 with a magazine. Uh, what do I think about Zigana? Why do I think? I don't know. Most reliable ever you've ever seen was a Norinco Type 56 AK. <laughs> What's my favorite action movie? Um, Lockout with a uh, guy, um, what's his name? Ah, uh, Guy Pierce. It's a stupid movie, but it's fun to watch. Uh, what about HK replicas such as Zenith? Well, I had one on the couch for a video earlier. They're fine. I actually prefer the PTR over the Zenith. Um, yeah, M M14 does have box mags. I was thinking, for some reason, I was thinking uh, just an M1. Um, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. My brain isn't working. I'm not a long gun guy. Uh, McManus says go with Fulton. There you go. Thoughts on the Canik MC9. Small frame. Seems like a decent gun. I don't like small frame guns. I, I, I don't like small frame guns. Um, especially one that holds 13 rounds. I'll, I'd rather carry a high power. Used giveaway gift card on PSA Upper today. Thanks, brother. Hit the like button. I'm glad you found something you like, dude. Do I like Double Stack 2011 Handgun by Springfield Armory? If you're talking about the Prodigy, I've never owned one. I've shot one. It shoots okay. It needs a lot of tuning. It's got a lot of MIM parts, metal injected molded parts, and they can go bad very easily. Uh, what light do you recommend for the TSOS PX9 carry? Whatever you can afford. If you can afford an $80 old light, run an $80 old light. If you can afford an X300 Turbo, get an X300 Turbo. If you got got 100 bucks, go on Amazon, find something. There's plenty of them out there. Those Warrior Lands, the company isn't answering me back anymore, but Warrior Land was decent. Uh, is that a P226 Elite? You see, be, uh, yep, um, right there, yep, that's a 226 Elite. It's full stainless. Uh, disgrace, you can't have an old timer gun chambered in a new timer ammo. Hey, hey, Andrew, it's fine. And you say new ammo? Come on, 5.56? Vietnam? What's going on? 70 years now uh traveling in vietnam uh saw one someone was shooting nice ak's are sick would love to get an akm but all good suka uh, in your opinion what's the best edc hands down whatever you're good at shooting dude some people love their glock 19s i don't um i shoot a 1911 i edc a 1911 i'm good with the 1911 so in my opinion 1911 uh, Buzz says, happy to see me today. Hope your leg is better. It's still in a cast and I'm stuck in a much thicker one and I'm wearing sweats because I can't get my leg in regular pants. Baka comes back in with another fiver with a cool emote saying, good job. Thank you, sir. I'm trying. Uh, which handgun would I recommend from John Wick? Um, honestly, the... Probably the Pit Viper from John Wick 4, I believe it was, the 2011. Thoughts on 460 Roland? I have some ammo. I've never fired a gun in it. I want to. The 5.56 cartridge is like 80 years old. Yeah, it's old. I just couldn't think. I was just thinking back to Vietnam era in the 60s, so. Uh, you have a stainless 226 Elite like that and never see them anymore. No, they are not out there, Keegan. Uh, the last one, if you go on Gun Broker and you search under the advanced tag, just get a free account. That's a good way to understand what a gun could be possibly worth. The last one that sold and only one has sold like that one, that one has the box, mags, all everything, and it's in like new condition. The last one that sold was over sixteen or was over 1500 plus the fees and shiz. Uh, any holster you think that works with the PX9 carry? A lot of the Glock holsters works with the PX9, but the trigger guard is slightly different, so you'll have to try a few different ones. Um, 460 Roland, might as well get a 44 mag. Don't see the point in a semi-auto. Yeah, but some of the 1911s that were built to take 460 Roland are pretty cool. Sorry to say, but Jason Bourne was better than John Wick. 
Um, I'm going to argue with you on that one, Big Cap, because the fight scenes were better in John Wick because you could see what the fuck was going on versus Jason Bourne. Cowboy Gun, 3030, made in 1889, you think? Where, who are you answering to? Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Um, I think Michael Myers. He just seemed tougher. Jason Voorhees went after a lot of kids. Michael Myers went after a lot of adults. What's my opinion? What's my preference for in waist or outside the waist, kydex or leather? Um, I typically actually will carry inside the pocket when I'm carrying outside the waist. Um, but in fact, I have, this is my urban carry right here. And it's actually kind of a mix. It's hard to see down in there. But the trigger guard is retent it has uh, Kydex retention in there. But I prefer leather for inside the waistband because uh, I carry it at 4 o'clock. I don't carry a pen because I have a little bit of a pooch. Um, mine's in the box with the box and the white paper still on the group. That was first nice handgun I ever saved up and bought yourself. Nice. Again, good guns. You're inclined to the 30-06 out of a Garand. I uh, haven't owned one, although my buddy Daniel has uh, has his, so I need to borrow his. Remington 870s are so crappy now. Yeah, but the good news is there's tons of used ones out there, so just get a used one and you can avoid a lot of the new crap. RC90 from James Bond 007 is better than any enemy UAV. What? What? RC90. James Bond. What the heck? So it's just a P90 with a slightly different body? Gotcha. I guess. Uh, yeah, do, 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 do I like Rambo movie at, or the Expendables? Uh, I enjoyed the first two Expendables. The third one was stupid and I haven't seen number four. Uh, for the X Macro, should I get it with the Romeo or wait for something else? Do not get the Romeo Zero. If you get the Romeo Zero, you are wasting your money. Get it without, and then buy something else. Buy it, get a 507K, uh, which is the micro red dot, a much better optic. Who should be the next James Bond? Um, Tom Ellis, who played Lucifer on Netflix. He's got the build because in season four he went and got all bulked up. Um, and, dude, he's got the accent, the swagger. He'd make a great Bond. Um, someone at work told me they hunt deer with a Barrett M82. I mean, you can. It's going to cause a massive permanent wound cavity. Uh, if you're, if he's hunting it to eat, he's going to damage the meat really bad. Uh, do I think a CZ-457 would be a good first gun? 500 bucks for a nice 22 rifle doesn't seem bad, and it's much better than a 1022 for the same price. Um, honestly, if they're at the same price, I would go with the CZ over the 1022. However, if you got, if you're doing this for a youngster, a kid, somebody like that, the parts and accessories for the 1022 are much cheaper than the CZ. So you can get like the RX 25, 25 round mag. Uh, you can get different chassis for the 1022 a lot cheaper. So I would go 1022 if it's like beginner for a youngster. Uh, I would go with the CZ for like a grown up. Stupid idea. Who's stupid idea? Oh, Mike. Um, yeah. Uh, does the P365 XL need any accessories? If you want to put a optic on it or if you want to put a light on it, those are totally up to you. But uh, the only thing that I would really like mention would be, what's up, DB, is uh, I would probably swap out the grip module. Um, I like the Sharps Brothers. My buddy Daniel, he has one with the Sharp Bros on it. It's like a $300 frame, but holy shiz, does it change the gun completely. Uh, just trying to find something in advance so right when my nine months is up, I can just go by. Yeah, you'll find something, bro. Uh, I've tried the SIG Micro Red Dots and have had zero good experiences with them. Their LV, LVPOs seem pretty good. Um, yeah, the um, SIG Micro Red Dots, number one, they're plastic body. They're shit. They don't run good. Get a hollow sun. Uh, you will thank me later. Uh, DB, 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 accessorize with a Glock. Um, you can barely tell I have a Glock up there, dude. Glock, shit, Glock, shit, shit, Glock, 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 Shig, Schmig. No, no, that's why we got this one. CZ, Tactical Sport Orange. I've seen what it does to a car, and I can only imagine what it does to a deer. Well, here's a funny thing, Andrew. Um, Pew 
PUV did a video where he shot, because everybody that does a 50 BMG, right, they'll shoot it at like 5, 10, 15 yards uh, just to get that massive explosion. But he shot a, a ballistics gel head from 400 yards, and it just went in. It didn't explode the head. It just went in and went out. It just... So range is another big one. Yeah, it destroyed the brain, but it didn't explode the skull like it does at 10 yards. Uh, do, 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 do. Looks like four black sticks on the wall. Look, dude, get over it. I'm getting a house. I don't want to put up slat wall. i uh, really bummed you can't get handguns for another three years. BS. Uh, tell your family what you want and have them put it on your Christmas list. Could you remount the Glock on a toilet paper holder? Seems like it'd be funny. I could. I have a uh, toilet paper holder that I can just set up over here. It's one of those movable ones, but I don't want to give it that much, uh, like, attention. Uh, hot dogs should only be served off the grill, and anyone who drinks unsweet tea should get a parking ticket for no reason. Ooh, come here to Virginia and tell somebody that they shouldn't get a sweet, uh, shouldn't drink unsweetened tea. I know a lot of people. Um, how far do you think Peter Dinklage would fly if loaded into a trebuchet? Uh, depends on what the other weight is, but I'm pretty sure Peter Dinklage would be fighting the whole time, so it would be difficult. And if you bundle him up so that he can't wiggle around, you could probably get a good quarter mile out of him if you just chuck him really good. Uh, the time is 0052, and you are from a village in the small but great Wales. A cool fact is that we have a dragon on our flag. Well, Mr. Grape, I did not know that. That's pretty freaking cool. M4 or 1300 shotgun. Uh, if you don't have the money, go with the 1301. Um, go with the A300. If you don't have money for the 1301, go with the 930 tactical used if you want to save a lot of money. The only way they would buy me guns is if I pay them back. And even if I pay them back for a job or something, they give me money as a gift. It's a felony. Seems same crap. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was saying it has to be a gift. Uh, you need to ha hand the safe on the wall. Uh, hang. I have a couple that I, I not the blacksmith. I'm not going to put the blacksmith up there, but I have one, uh, one of the old quick release four digit safe thingies. And I could put that up on the wall, but I don't feel like it. Do I have good lux? Box in the Medeco or Alboy. Uh, you must be talking to the other guy. Also, why does Americans have guns but we don't, Lamau? Um, I think that your people are, excuse me, the British Isles, European people, uh, they got served that big ass L and uh, they're afraid of guns now. That's why Japan does not have firearms for their civilian population. Because General George Washington, that's right. What do I think about knife combat? Uh, it's interesting to watch. No, thank you. Uh, I have a problem not stabbing myself with knives. So uh, I don't want to have to try to stab somebody else because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to grab it. I'll have a raptor knife or something. And then I'll just take a swing and I'll just go right in my own arm, sever my own artery. And then, yeah. Uh, is Dragon's Breath ammo made for handguns or shotgun only? As far as I know, shotgun only. Um, new stab wound. No. This is the one from a couple of weeks ago. Or a few weeks ago. Um, as far as I know, Dragon's Breath is only for shotgun. Maybe 410 shells for like a judge or something. But for the most part, as far as I know. Uh, what's next to my CZ? That is a SIG P26. 226 Elite Stainless. Uh, the Second Amendment. Yes. Uh, what's the specs on my AR? It's a custom build, so I'll run down the parts real quick. It has a Palmetto Virginia lower just because we, PSA came out with them when Virginia tried to outlaw all centerfire rifles with box mags. Um, it has a Franklin Armory binary trigger in it. It has a um, custom unique ARs upper with a round handguard. It's the Freedom upper uh, that they sent to me. Uh, that upper is $1,500 on their website. You can check that out. It has a Radian charging handle in it and uh, ambi safety, extended controls on the offside, and a primary arms ACSS reticle uh, for power on top with backup irons that are not at 45 degrees because I forgot 
when I was putting that gun together that the front handguard did not allow for the 45 and I didn't have an extra 45 mount so they're just sitting up on top. Uh, poopy? Yeah, I poopy. Do you poopy? Everybody poopies. Uh, you've been clear of the ankle sprain. Ankle sprain? For what? Oh, because of the accident. Uh, is the binary trigger select fire like three round burst or auto in the M16? No. Uh, binary trigger, what it does is so you're in safe semi, so that your standard trigger, one shot per trigger pull, uh, doesn't fire on the release. And then you can go into binary, so you pull the trigger, it fires, you release the trigger, it fires. However, if you pull the trigger, fire, and hold it and put it back into semi, then it actually goes back into semi auto. So you can disable the binary function on it, but it's it's freaking useless it's a waste of money uh really nice man sadly binaries are illegal in canada yeah they wanted to go after them here but it's separate actions of the trigger uh zombie apocalypse what gun are you choosing to eliminate zombies um going to go with um my 1911s i like my 1911s i have one with green grips on it so kind of a zombie already um or something like my sig 226 because i know that son of a bitch is gonna run a long ass time but I'd rather go with the 1911 because I know there's lots of parts available should they all break or explode or any shit like that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you that are just coming in. Not time to get back to building the barn thing. Nice. I know a lot of you guys are coming in here. You've never seen this channel before. Thank you for coming in. I'm assuming you came because you saw guns in the background. But uh, we talk about everything here. So it doesn't just have to be guns. But it's gun centric. But come on in. Become a member. Do all that fun stuff. Hit the like button if you're just coming and dipping out. Just help the channel grow a little bit. I want Google's money. I don't really need yours. I want Google's money. And I need to get them to unshadow ban me. Because the motherfuckers keep on uh, killing my views. Uh, Radiant Raptors are nice. Yep. I like the Radiant Raptors. I also have uh, the Bravo Company gun Gunfighter uh, uh, Ambi. But I like the Radiant better on this one. Uh, is it a 10.5, is it 10.5 AR and 5.56 worth anything? Yeah, 10.5 is okay. You lose like three to 400 feet per second off of like a 2,800 FPS round, but you can make up for that by running VMAX or heavier rounds too, uh, for the power factor. Um, but 10 and a half is fine. The minute you drop to seven and a half, you're losing a lot of it. And then if you go absolutely stupid and get something like the Freedom Ordnance FX, uh, which is a five inch 5.56, you're going to keyhole a ton because that doesn't even give you half the length you need to get one full rotation uh where should i start um start with the uh concrete pad man uh what's my favorite revolver don't really have one i'm a fan of the gp 100s but i don't have a favorite revolver real talk tacos or burritos they're the same thing especially if you get a soft taco no i actually prefer tacos i don't care for rice and stuff in my in my wraps what is my opinion on sniper rifle uh sniper rifles are cool but as a civilian i'm never going to have a need for one and quite frankly if i just swap that out for like a six power i could do just as much work at five to seven hundred yards with an ar-15 as i could with a dedicated sniper rifle granted heavier round 338 lapua etc would do a lot more damage at long range but if we're just talking about hitting a target target shooting I don't care. Five to seven hundred yards with an AR-15 is fine. Uh, considering they both can't die, who are you picking, Deadpool or Hancock? I'm going to pick Deadpool, number one. I like his sense of humor. But number two, Hancock could die if you kidnap the girl that he, you know, the, the, the Charlize Theron's character, and you keep them locked up together. Eventually, he'd lose his power, and he could die. Uh, at work, listening to this on the forklift. Awesome, dude. Just be careful. Watch out for the big... Uh, do I ever use a lever action? Yes, I have a 1939 Winchester Model 1894 that I take out a few times a year. It was my grandfather's. Uh, beautiful gun, shoots beautifully. I had it sonic cleaned to preserve the patina, but got rid of all the internal grease and buildup. And the thing shoots amazing. 100 yards, just bullet on bullet on bullet, even with my shit eyesight. Uh, specifically model 28 three, four inch beautiful pieces and would love to pick one up someday. You'll get one, dude. There's plenty of them out there. Your 6.5 AR-10 is bucket of fun. Yeah, AR-10s are fun too. Advice on California and a compliant AR. Jonathan, move out of California. They have some of the stupidest rules when it comes to firearms. Um, featureless stocks, freaking some of them that have the, where you have to open them from the top to load the magazine. What the 
frick, man. Just move out of California. Save money. Move to a free country. Move to frickin' Nevada, dude. It's the same temperature, same heat, same dryness, and you'll get to have more guns. You bought a 30 out 6 lever action. Good for you, dude. Uh, personally, I'm going to go with the Heritage 22, give her a 9-round barrel, and bam. Yeah. Uh, this beats the tarot channels. Yeah, I noticed there there was some lady reading tarot cards. I was surprised. I never thought I'd get one in my feed. Other than labeling, is 556 any different than 300 Blackout Mag? Yes, the follower is actually reversed. If you look at a 300 dedicated 300 Blackout Mag, they have like that fake... Um, I'm not going to pull the mag out because that would be manipulating the firearm. But the the they stack the bullets slightly differently. Uh, I'm 14. I've never shot a gun, but I'm interested in guns. That's how it starts, blacksmithing. Start with your interest. Watch lots of videos. That's the best part about YouTube. It's freaking free, dude. You get to watch as much as you want on your favorite firearms, be it real or imaginary. And you get to learn so much. Uh I always watch before I buy a gun, and sometimes even after I buy a gun. The orange was not on my shopping list, but the thing walked into my buddy's store, and I couldn't say no to it, so it's here. Uh, let's see. Stop moving here. <laughs> the end frame's not much demand, so they're still down there. Yup. Yup. Uh, it's a lot different, Daniel. Lots of com commonality of parts, but significantly different. Daniel was... Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Um... No, no, uh, McManus, he was asking about the magazine, not the actual gun. Uh, thoughts on 8.6 Blackout? I have not played with one yet, so I don't know anything about them, really. You bought the uh, M&P Sport 2 in Cali. Only downside is the beaver tail and fixed stock both easily switched. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of like we I live, we border a few states. So, like, Virginia borders West Virginia, and then you go a couple miles up, you can go to uh, Pennsylvania, you got Maryland, Delaware. So, we have a lot of people that come to us, like Maryland and Delaware, to get high-capacity mags because they're not illegal to have. You just can't buy them in your home state. Uh, no worries, McManus. Uh, CZ Shadow, heart, heart, heart. It's not a shadow. Uh, technically, I guess you could call it shadow, but it's different from a shadow. That's a t tactical sport orange. Anyone want to go on a scavenger hunt? Yeah, just tell me where the uh, Barrett is buried, and I'll go after it. Go to Arizona or uh, Omn. What's Omn? Thoughts on the FN FNX? If you're talking about the FNX 45, uh, I approve of it wholeheartedly. Uh, once they got into the 5 Series, the 502, 509, 510, 545, bullshit, crap, guns, not worth it. Every other Cali compliant AR, you got a barrel break to change the mag. Stupid as sin. Yep. Uh, you run steel or aluminum mags for your 300 blackouts, and they run amazingly. You've had some issues out of 556 five, Mark Poly mags. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's why they actually create the dedicated 300 mags. And Duramag, man, who cares if you have a Poly mag? It, just because people like the way they look, whatever. But run Duramags if you want reliability, believe it or not. They're really good. Uh, we've surely had a horrible amount of new folks moving here. From California, Arizona, Utah, you name it. You don't know what's up. Uh, a lot of laws keep on trying to change. Devil. I hear you. Uh, Magpul. Yep, I knew what you were meaning. Uh, it's amazing how much you know off the bat. I've, I'm, I'm not young. I'm 44 years old. I'll be 45 this year. And I just, I absorb knowledge. I try to retain as much of it as I can. And when I don't know it, you guys see me look it up right here in front of you. Um, I try to. It's consisting of the Barrett, a wrecked race car, a good running race car, and the keys to your new truck. Dude, um, I'm in. I'm just driving up to your home state and just walking around yelling your name. If you only have one pistol forever, which one would I pick? I'd probably go with a Nighthawk Customs 1911 in 45 ACP 5-inch. Um, doesn't matter what accessories it has. I just, I'd probably go Nighthawk. Uh, that's weird. At least in my uh, honest, the metal mags look so much better than the polys. Uh, the reason why people like the polys, especially with the ARs, is just because it matches the look of the gun really well versus a metal mag sticking out of something that's been tactical-ed. Um, some people prefer like the old A2 style handguards and they love running the metal mags. I don't care. I've got both. I take them all with me to the range. So whatever mags are loaded, I take with me and just shoot them. Uh, most of yours are sure feed, but you can't really get them anymore. Yeah, I have not seen uh, sure feed at our store in a long time. Duramag still has stepped up and produces a lot of them. Um, absolutely. Oh, Jesus, my feet. Uh, gun locker just got done being built. Nice. 
I'm actually, I was at Tractor Supply the other day looking at their 36 gun Winchester for another safe and it's probably going to be the next one I buy. I think they're still on sale too. They're normally like 800 bucks. It was like seven or 650. Boom, boom, boom. Decent people at the place near mine. And if I take their card, then I get six months, zero percent interest. So I might just do that. Pick up a, they have an 84 gun safe. Uh, you like the mag pull mags because in your experience, they handle drops on solid objects better. True. Uh, you forgot. Uh, you're a FUD, that makes sense. Nice. Got any grip tape suggestions for the XDS Mod 2 and 45? I just get the um, Talon tape that you can buy in the flat sheets, and I make my own. You just got to heat it up. The hell? Huh, something just fell off my couch. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just Talon tape. It works good. Do I have shotgun? Yes, I have shotgun. It's more of a vault, but same thing. Pretty much just, you know, make sure you reinforce the door and stuff if you want to have an entire room for it. Um, but yes, I do. Um, do you gunsmith? I have the chances to use a voucher to get something in it. Would you recommend uh, over wedding courses? What? Some training in it. Uh, I would go with gunsmithing before I went over and in, before I do weeding. What model do I have? I've got a 930 tactical and a single shot that I just hang up for fun. So, what's up, Jiminy Show? Favorite 1911 between 700 and 1300 dollars. Um, right now, just a Springfield. Just get a Garrison uh, or a Fusion Firearms. Uh, either one of those, they produce good 500 or excuse me, five inch guns. Um, avoid. Uh, I would avoid Kimber right now, even though they have a couple of their base models, like the TLEs or the uh, do, 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 uh, GFOs, which are the green fiber optic guns that come in under a thousand bucks. Bull Armory, you can get those about a thousand bucks. Those are pretty good. Um, bum, 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 bum. Are 22 pistols reliable or is it the ammo a problem? Ammo is always the problem when it comes to 22 long rifle because it is not a center fire cartridge. So a center fire cartridge. For those of you that don't know, this is fine because it's not in a firearm. Has There's four parts to a center fire cartridge. So you have the casing, the bullet, the primer, and the powder inside of it. A rim fire round is just a... Um, uses the force of the detonation to set off the powder. So you, it's a three-part. And it's not always as reliable. But it's so much cheaper that you can forgive it. If it had to be center fire, it would be very expensive. Uh, welding course. Um, honestly, go for welding, Jonathan. Welding, uh, gardening didn't sound right, but if you can get welding courses and you have a voucher for it, go welding, dude. You can make $50 to $60 an hour doing that, and you don't have to hold special licenses for it, uh, whereas for being a gunsmith, you have to get certain accreditations, and if you want to do it professionally, you have to get an FFL license. Both are useful. Yes, that is true. What do I think about Mossberg 940 Pro and semi-auto? Um, I've heard some issues with them. That's why I have a 930 versus a 940. Uh, the 940s, because it, it was a newer gun last year, just didn't get the... It, it's getting updated and corrected as time goes on, but I'd still like my 930. Uh, you know, ammo's cheap, but you heard it's dirty and unreliable. Yeah, it all depends on what brand you buy, Daniel. You can buy 22 ammo that costs more than freaking 308 ammo. Some of the match grade Ely stuff for 50 rounds can be up to like 40 bucks for 50 rounds, so a lot more expensive than like 9 mil or even 45 ACP. You just gotta use good ammo. What bolt action long rifles would you recommend? Savage and. And uh, probably like uh, Ruger uh, Americans or Ruger American Predators or Ruger American Ranches. Oh, you didn't get what I said. Yep. What he was saying. Yep. Uh, just buy decent stuff. I use a Gila Super Extra. It's not dirty in the least. It shoots good. It's standard velocity, so just under 1,100 feet per second. And it cycles in all my semi-auto 22s. Are MIM internals not frame slider barrel a deal breaker? If not, why don't people why do people get so wrapped around the axle about MIM? So MIM, metal injected molding, as I explained, is kind of the same way plastic parts are made. Uh, it's not a deal breaker because a lot of companies use them. 
in fact, uh, outside of like full on super custom guns, there's always going to be one or two parts. Even in the TSOS, there's a couple of parts that are MIM in there. They even said there were, but only a couple. Um, it's not a deal breaker, uh, but people get their heads wrapped around it because of cost. Like a Springfield Prodigy is a $1,500 gun. The slide lock, the rear safety, the beaver tail, the hammer, they're all MIM parts. Even the sear, I think, is a MIM part. You can actually see the seam in it. So I would say that if the price goes up, like there's no MIM parts in freaking that. That's a $2,000 gun. That's a $1,500 gun. That gun does not have MIM parts in it. Uh, the Mitchell is all stainless. That has no MIM parts in it. But I guarantee you that auto ordinance does. So it's not a deal breaker. You just got to be able to uh, work on a gun to tune it. I have to tune all my Kimbers whenever I buy them. Uh, do, do, do. so your echo triggers are Fostech and you don't have any Franklin's. Do you like the Franklin's? Franklin is like 40 minutes from me, uh, from where you live. I like it. It works really well. I just don't use it that often. I used it a few times when I first put it in there. I like the flat face trigger that it has. And originally I was going to put a flat face CMC. I was going to replace it with the CMC single stage. But, um, number one, I gave away the one that I ordered, but number two, I just don't feel like taking the gun apart. Uh, is 762 by 39 getting hard to get in the U.S. Here in Canada, we have close to nothing except corrosive. Uh, it's getting a little bit harder to come by because we lost two Lamo and Wolf and all the companies that were barred from importation. But it's it can be a little expensive. It's closing in on like 85 cents around again. Any 22 I buy comes in the separated container, works okay in the rifle. The bulk milk carton stuff doesn't work so well. Yeah, for example. When your box says value pack and it looks like, you know, it looks like it's a box of Pop-Tarts, that is probably not going to be something I would trust in my repeaters, but I use this in revolvers all the time. And my bolt action, 1875. Uh, do I own any XDS models and have I tried the Springfield Saint at all? I do not own any uh, XDSs. I used to own some XDS or XDM elites. Uh, but I do not own any um, SDS, XDSs, and uh, I shot a Springfield Saint a few times. I just, it's fine. I'm not a long gun guy. Uh, do I go to gun shows? Nope. I'm usually working when the gun shows are going on, uh, and I have my buddies looking for stuff, but they haven't picked me up anything. Hot dogs are best after poached in beer and then finished on the grill. Yeah. Andrew, you got to go. Your wife is yelling at me. Well... Good luck. Good luck, Andrew. Well, what SIG should I get, but you can only have 15 rounds in your state? Get a 229. Uh, hammer fired, very reliable, gonna run well, and it's a 15 rounder. Or get a 320 that's compliant. Uh, get a compact 320. Uh, your Walter 22 pistol only eats the good stuff, freaking snob. Yeah. Uh, we see that with like Browning buck marks every now and then. And then the Smith and Wesson Victory can be a little bit picky with its 22s. Uh, love the channel. Keep up the great work. You're subbed. Thank you, Roaring Steel. I appreciate that. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, did the 7 plus 1 is legal to Canada? Some said yes and some said no. 7 plus 1 what? Uh, if Phil stops by, ask him if he has his has your pie. Oh, how about that? He sent the pie to me and I ate it. Sorry. Uh, you have a 229 Elite and it is solid. Yeah, I passed on the opportunity because a customer really wanted it when I was at Middletown. Uh, 229 uh, Legion and I loved the way it shot, but a customer came in and wanted it. Uh, chambering for shotgun. I'm not sure. Uh, you'd have to check Canada law. I don't live in Canada, so I don't really pay attention to their stuff. If anybody from Canada is in the comments, leave it down below. Uh, answer uh, Mulo's question. Whether or not they're legal. Why are you up on two screens? Because of hunting, it's two plus one but for the range. Yeah, again, I don't know, man. Um, you you got to check where you are. As much as I like answering questions, I'm not. Uh, I am not Google myself. So please take that with the utmost respect. I'm meaning it, but that's something I don't care about because I don't care about long guns. Uh, I thought Trudeau took all the Canucks guns away. No, nah, he took all the vast majority of them, but shotguns, I believe, still stayed because they're 
they're not considered dangerous because they're slow. I think he took away the semi-auto ones. Also, he took away blackface from people. Is 762 still the bee's knees or 300 blackout? Uh, they're both 30 caliber, but they both come out of different uh, eras. Um, how often do I broadcast? Three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, starting at 7 p.m. Easterns. Mondays, I've only been going like four hours just because it hasn't been as busy, but we'll see how tonight goes. Um, 762 by 39 is an impressive round. Uh, it is going faster than 300 blackout, but 300 blackouts are actually usually a little bit heavier. Um, and it can be easier chambered in an AR-15 because you can use standard mags. Uh, whereas if you get an AK, you have to get specific Stanag pattern mags. Uh, 300 black because of the platform you can stick it in. See, McManus, we are like the same person right there. We got that ESPN shit going on. Uh, Craig Shiv Works got some gnarly knife work drills. I want to go to the class. You should, Lobster. Age limits to guns. That sounds like something an ATF agent would be asking. All right, so in the United States of America, on a federal level, you have to be 18 to own a to purchase a long gun to buy an AR-15, a, a hunting rifle, etc. You have to be at least 18 years of age to buy a handgun in the country of the United States. You have to be 21. However, you can be gifted a handgun if you are under 21. But in almost all states outside of, I believe, nine or 10, you cannot conceal carry if you're under 21. So it gets a little, little bit, a uh, little bit odd. Outdoor Canada. Uh, what do I mean? Seven ammo capacity. Yes. Um, if it's a manually cycled gun, example pumper level, there's no max capacity. There you go. There you go, Mulo. Uh, you can also get 300 blackout and 220 grain subs, which are super quiet. Yeah. See, exactly. That's why I say. Um, that, that, uh, 690. What about it? Uh, three letters. Who's the glowy in chat? What do you mean, who's the glowy? What? Glowy? Um, Julian. 2020 Bentley Continental GT Speed. What's your opinion on a gun trust? You have to really trust the mother father you're in that trust with. Um, you... One thing I suggest if you're going to do a trust is do single shot trusts through silencer shop. Uh, that way you can do each individual firearms without putting them all in one. But if you trust your family and you know that none of them are going to be committing felonies anytime soon with your items, then you can put them on the trust. It just also makes your background check take longer. Um, do I have kids? And if so, are they trained in the least basics of gun safety and handling? I do not have kids, Chris. Thank you for asking. Um, but if I did, they would definitely be getting trained right away. Uh, my buddy has a has a daughter, and she's already she runs around the gun store and stuff. So, and she's barely 15 months old, and she knows not to touch guns. So she's going to get a good education as a child growing up. Thank you, Julian. I happen to be looking at my other screen, and there's one on my game that I'm playing. Uh, you don't trust your family that much. No, honestly, uh, it's not that I don't. It's just that I don't. Um, I don't need. They need. I don't think they have a reason to have access to my suppressors. If my father's going to shoot my suppressor, I'm going to be there with him, having fun. Not trying to be hateful, but what race is this guy? You know, you could just ask me. Why are you asking the chat? Uh, I'm half white, half Asian. Uh, best handgun for protection. Thomas, the best gun for protection is the one you're comfortable shooting. You need to go and pick up a bunch of firearms. For me, I like full-size guns. You can see all the guns that I have behind me are full-size frames, and they work well for me. But you may be very comfortable with a Glock 19 or even a subcompact like a 365, a Hellcat, something like that. So go and put your hands on guns because the one you're most comfortable with is the one you're going to want to shoot. And the one you're going to want to shoot is the one that you're going to get the most practice with. And the one you get the most practice with is the one that's going to save your life. If you just get one because everybody tells you to get a Glock 17 and you don't like shooting something that's a full-size gun, you're never going to practice with it and then you're just a victim so get whatever you're actually comfortable carrying um do 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 hey not sure if y'all knew this but hamburger helper is very un oh yeah cap i love hamburger helper uh, yeah it's hamburger heaven if you ask me nerd uh how am i feeling today good sir pretty good i was a little bit tired before the stream started but i laid down and watched some airsoft stuff i like airsoft as much as i like uh real firearms Hellcaps be snappy. 
Hellcats be snappy? They can be. Uh, that's why I prefer the Hellcat Pro. But again, it's getting into a bigger frame. Um, how am I? I'm good, Assad. Is it an issue to have multiple pistols you feel comfortable enough to carry? No, not at all, Matthew. Um, I'm actually totally fine if you're comfortable shooting them and you have proficiency in multiple different firearms. Like some weeks, I will carry my SIG 320, which is a striker fire double stack. And then all, most of the time, I'll carry a 1911, which is single stack um, hammer fired. And then sometimes I'll carry a double stack hammer fired SIG. So as long as you're proficient with the firearm that you're carrying, go for it, dude. Carry whatever trips your freaking fancy dude why have ten thousand dollars in guns if you're not going to use them for what they're designed for uh can you explain how buying from a gun show works here in vegas but just in general you've never been and just curious on things so here in the state of virginia if you go to a gun show you have to follow the same purchasing rules as if you were at a brick and mortar ffl so you have to supply valid id uh, if you're buying a handgun it has to be an in-state id that's at least 30 days old you will do a state background check and a 4473 which is your federal background check they are run through right there at the show as long as you pass your background check right then you can leave with the firearm if not, then you either have to come back and get it at a later time or have it shipped to an FFL near you. Uh, you'll give me a sub. Thank you, nerd. Appreciate that one. Uh, L for Australian gun laws. You guys even allowed to have any? Uh, you're always told to get what feels good in your hand gun-wise. Yep, exactly. Uh, those real. Yes, they are real. What's my thought on the PSA dagger? It's a decent gun for 300 bucks, but it's not one I'm going to trust my life to. Those are rookie numbers. we got to pump those up. No, that's just what's there, McManus. That's just 2024's purchases. Uh, he carried HKP 30SK. Love that, the smaller one. Um, too small for me, but very good. AO, Virginia. Yep, short bus. You got your Glock 17 at a show in state. Nice. Uh, have I fired any of my 1911s enough to wear out the frames, making them unusable? What's my pistol with the most rounds through it? Uh, believe it or not, Jackson, no. I don't really... I have enough guns that I can go through a lot of them without wearing through a frame. Uh, the aluminum frame 1911s can have a problem where the where the slide lock goes through on the one side could crack, but I've never had that actually happen, or excuse me, where the slide stop goes in. Uh, but on the aluminum frame, like the Kimbers, the Colts, all those ones, they actually cut that, so it's a two-piece slide on that side, and or frame on that side, and I've never had an issue with them. Um, the pistol or handgun I have with the most, uh, rounds through it is a EAA witness, or excuse me, Windicator, which is a 357 revolver. It's got 8,000 rounds through it and it's still timed in cycles. Uh, you have many, many rounds through yours. You'll tell them that. Yeah, Justin, it's, you don't wear out a 1911. You'll wear out a Glock before you'll wear out a 1911. Uh, dagger is not good, sir. It's like I said, it's cheap, Julian, but they're, they're, if you want a Gen 3 clone, they're fine, but if you can find a used Glock 19 for like 380 buy one of those, $380, buy that before you buy the dagger. You buy the dagger because you want something that feels different, um, but they don't have the same robustness, although they're decent. I just don't, wouldn't trust my life to one. Is it legal for PM66? What do you mean? Uh, Magnum Research 1911 versus Kimber 1911. Um, holy shit, I missed a lot of those. Um, boom, 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 boom. Which one would it choose and why? I'd go with the Magnum Research because that's built by Bill, Bull Armory, and currently their quality is much better than Kimber. Um, boom, 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 boom. How much for the 45? Not for sale. We are on the same page. Yay! Uh, white Dagger, no good. Uh, you don't work at a gun store, though. Best friend owns one, so that does help. Yep. I wish there was a modern redesign of the Savage Model 1907. Hmm. Um, fit and healthy got knocked the hell down by Justin. Uh, he's machining the machining on a slide is a poor quality. People will rave about PSA customer service, but can't get them to call. Um, again, the rock that I have up there is decent, but it came to me completely dry and it had some cycling issues. So it's just their quality control is not up to par. Um, Man, thanks for all the info. Honestly, you have only followed me for about under a year, but love the content. Now that I know you do streams like this, you'll definitely ask a bunch of questions. Absolutely, Chris. Got a dagger just to say I have one and to test it in the last 34 rounds before it stopped working. I gave mine to a buddy for some stipple work because I just didn't care about it. Uh, Ruger 57 versus the Smith & Wesson 5.7. Uh, I like the Ruger's grip better than the Smith & Wesson, but I like the Smith & Wesson's feature set, the threaded barrel and the optics cut right out of the box uh, for the same price. 
Uh, oh, I thought you just, hey, what I thought you said that Justin beat you off. Can't wait to see more YouTube plaques too. I'd love to get another one, a gold one. It fit right up above there. Um, I'm getting it today while cooking. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, how many perks do I take daily? You just like putting that in the comments, don't you? On all of my videos and stuff. I don't take Percocets. I'm non-reactive to opioids. Is there a size difference between 9mm and 45 ACP 1911s or just barrel diameter mag size? Pretty much what you just said. Um, the rear of the chamber is slightly different, obviously because of the breech face for 9mm versus a 45 and where the extractor and ejector goes, but pretty much they're, they're all about the same size. Um, what do I think of Smith & Wesson's 22 Magnum? Interesting, I haven't shot one yet, but I need to pick one up. That and the Walter WMP, I need to pick both of those up. The Jackal is not great, and you really wanted to love it. Damn. Have I had any NDs? Zaxxon, yes, I put one into my wall because I dropped the mag out of a gun. I was very sleepy and didn't re remember that I had one chambered, and I was uh, checking the finish on it, and... Uh, but that was an ND because I had my finger on the trigger, and I'm an idiot. Normally get hammer fired pistols, wanting a striker. What would I suggest? Uh, Sig, Glock, Smith and Wesson M&Ps. They're all decent. Uh, how many? Okay, I'm glad people keep on asking me, but I'm done answering that question. Do I recommend any? Uh, what holster? Um, 1791. Get theirs. They offer Kydex, and they, or 1895 does, but they also do a Kydex holster. They offer leather ones. Whatever you're comfortable with, because you may like carrying a in a belly band. Who knows? Jiu-jitsu time. All right, Crypto Walker, do well. Who makes a good double action 45 ACP? Double action 45 ACP. Um, there's some revolvers that use moon clips for double action, but nobody I'd really recommend. Double action 45. Hmm. Thoughts on lever actions? I have them. They're nice. They work well. I just don't. I don't use them every day. I'm gonna go see you, man. Have a nice rest of the day. Thanks, nerds. Thank you. Uh, did I poo a little when I indeed? Um, it it was a it was a waking up experience. It was a Toker of TT33, so it was 7.62 by 25, and it was this far from my face. So, needless to say, it was extremely loud. So I had a little bit of a hearing issue for about 20 minutes. What are my thoughts on the AK-50 coming from AK Brandon Herrera? Considering the coming soon part of your statement is a fallacy because he's been working on it for seven years, I think it's cool, but since it's a passion project, I'm, I'm happy for him, but I think it's useless, senseless. It's just something being built because it needs to be built. Thoughts on the Taurus TS-9? I saw that. I've got to get my hands on one. Um, it's an interesting looking gun. The fact that he took the TH9 and just made it striker fired, I'm willing to give it a shot. Because I like the G3, but I will give the TS9 a chance. Um, da -da -da. Ba -boom. Uh, let's see, FN makes the FNX tactical. Yes, I like that, but it's, again, um, I, I don't like the new 5 series. Glock 30, cool. Uh, thoughts on lever actions. I already did that. Uh, Springfield Hellcat Pro versus the SIG 365. Well, you'd have to compare it to the 365 XL, and I'll take the 365 XL over the Hellcat Pro, although it's a very close race. Uh, they're both decent. Man, nice guns. Thank you, Hunter. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, can you show me your... your, your f no, because I'm not allowed to manipulate a firearm on a live stream, Lizard. Uh, just got an AR-15. What parts would you recommend upgrading? Trigger. Trigger, 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 trigger. Trigger, and if it's got a fixed buttstock, get rid of the buttstock. But uh, go with something like a single-stage CMC, Geisley. Anything is better than a factory one. Rise Armament, whatever you can find. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And they're so cheap. Might get one. Yeah, definitely, dude. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, if I didn't just get that and order uh, the T-Sauce double stack, I would definitely order another one. Favorite manufacturer, Springfield, Smith & Wesson, Glock, etc. Um, honestly, right now I'm on a SIG kick, but I'll, second, it'd probably be CZ. Um, and then third would be any 1911 manufacturer. Best budget AR. 
Um, Radical Firearms are out of Texas. They make a $500 AR that's all mil spec. Definitely a good place to start. Uh, Diamondback, they have a $500 AR. Avoid ATI like the freaking plague. Even their their metal frame ARs are shit uh, and not worth their money. If, uh, Delton uh, 416s or whatever they're called, those are okay. But again, Radical and Diamondback give you the best feature set. Radical gives you all B5 hardware uh, grip and things for a lot less money. Do I have an M911? What 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 brand is that one? Dad bought you an M&P Compact. You like it, but it's time for your own CC. Any tips on good first-time guns? You shoot well and love the trigger, trigger on your buddy's Beretta. Get the Beretta Compact if you like the Beretta, but Glock 19, it's a good gun. Get another Smith & Wesson. Nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, just get what you're comfortable with. Put a bunch of different stuff in your hand. Go to a brick-and-mortar store and actually try a bunch of guns because you never know what you're going to like. If you have shooting experience, you'll figure out which gun feels good in your hand, which ones that you can actually pick up. Uh, one thing I would always suggest, obviously, safe direction. Make sure firearms unloaded, all that shiz. But start with at the low ready and pull up and open your eyes and see if your sights are even close. If you can't pull up and naturally point and open your eyes and be looking at a somewhat of a target picture then you're then the gun is not right for you because you're not holding it naturally what do i think of colt 38 super 1911s they're cool they're higher power factor for competition uh they're a little expensive i know rock island makes one it's just getting ammo sucks thoughts on lmt rifles they're very nice i've had them shipped into our store i think they're a little overpriced for the complete ones but the uh, if you buy the lowers and stuff they're pretty good Anderson is decent, um, but they're creeping up in price. Just get a high point. Ah, for when you've given up. Beretta Striker Fires are underrated. Yeah, I like the APX A1. Uh, they fixed their Toblerone design with the A1, and it seems pretty decent. LaRue is good, not as light or smooth as a, as a Geisley, but pretty solid for the money. Plus, I've had some walking experiences with cassette triggers. Um, that is true, but... Cassette triggers are easier to install. Good tip. Compact Beretta was on the list. Need to rate, rent some pistols. Many that I like, I only like due to the models mods put on them. That's true. Uh, same with the CZ. Yeah, the PO9, the PO9 Duty, and the uh, P10s are very underrated. Glockenspiel. We have the Glockenspiel. The Funken Time. The Glocken No. Uh, what do I think about the M1 Garand? My buddy has one. I don't. I need to shoot it. That's all I can say about it. Most desired overpriced gun on my wish list, not including the Singer 1911. The Court 1911. If you've ever seen that, it has a roller delay blowback system. A roller delay... Uh, it's not even blowback because the gun actually uses a regular recoil rod. It looks like a Glock on top of a 1911, so it's like backwards from a platypus. Because, uh, but it's an amazing gun. It's like fifty five hundred dollars though. Do I have a Tech Nine? No, I've played with them. I don't care about those. The Sig and Orange CZ has you drooling. Is it the two two six or nine? It's the two two six Elite. Uh, where would I line up Arrow AR fifteen? Um, Arrows are decent. Uh, like I said, their Arrow and Anderson stuff has creeped up in price after COVID, um, but they're a decent budget ish rifle. Uh, why do I think 22s are underrated? I don't really think they're underrated. I just, to me, a 22 barely kicks more than an air gun, so I'd rather shoot an air gun. Um, I just don't, I, I just don't enjoy 22s as much as I do 9 mil 45 and all those. You don't have a Singer M9 1911A1? <laughs> you know, I accidentally let a buddy borrow it, and he just, he, he says he lost it. I've never seen it. I mean, things happen. Sorry, Glock 19. Uh, Glock 19, if you're asking what my thoughts are, it's one of the most popular concealed carry and compact carry guns in the world. It's going to save your life. It's going to do the job. It's going to... Sorry. Um, you, we start talking about Glocks and I just freaking nod off. Sorry. Uh, is a PTR worth it? If so, which one? Uh, yeah, I like the PTR. If you're going for like the SK5, uh, the MP5 uh, clone, 
Uh, I would definitely take the PTR over a Zenith just because it has the weld, the rail welded on and it has the three position switch. So if you ever get a uh, uh, registered lower, you could actually swap it right in there. You'll sell me mine. I don't think I have enough money to buy your Singer 1911, Mr. McManus. Do I think Caltech has become more reliable the last couple of years, and what do I think of their bullpups? No, I don't think they've become more reliable, because just in 2023, Middletown sent back like seven of them. Um, their bullpups are okay, but bullpups inherently are junk. So, Glock 19 or Glock 17? Ha! They're, ugh, they're both this... They're, they're, it's Glock. <clears throat> uh, great man, you glocked him to sleep. Nice! Uh, seriously, though, asking for a fanboy. Yeah, I know who you're asking for. Best first handgun. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, man. Um, if you want reliability, just get a Glock. Just get a Glock. Because they're so reliable. <laughs> Sorry. Gotta stop talking about Glocks. Do I have any automatics? No, I don't have a tax stamp yet, so I'm, I'm not in any hurry to get an automatic gun. Do you think the ALG uh, AK-47 triggers have become overpriced? Uh, I don't know. How much are they running? I've never really monkeyed with one. ALG AK-47 trigger. I mean, 145 bucks for a trigger... You're going to spend at least that to get like a CMC and a Geisley. You can run up to 250 for a standard trigger. So, no, I don't think it's that bad a price. If you're talking about the KNS one, uh, your World War II 1911 has a union signal and switch frame. And I thought it was rare, rare until I heard about Singer. Yeah. Uh, can we stop talking about Glocks, please? Yeah. Don't, don't, don't talk about. I've had some crazy ass offers for it, lol, like price of house offers. Yeah, no, if you've got a real singer, dude, you've got a, a good house. Well, at least somewhere that is in California. SA Masquerade, they used to be $50 to $70. Yeah, but still, again, if you're comparing platform to platform, AK to AR, $140, $150 is still a good price. Glock and juice, Glock and juice, Glock and juice. That will summon Glock fanboy, not me. You guys said the G. That's why my girl hates it when we talk about the G spot. Night talk. I think Joe will sell me his house. Uh, sell you a house for your Barrett. I will not give you my house for a Barrett. And in fact, by adding the orange to the wall, I I, I wouldn't even trade you all of those for your Barrett. You'd have to have an M107A1 to equal what's on the wall now. My ring password has been reset. No! Oh, it's papered. I had a family member that was a high-level employee at Singer. If I sold it, my daughter would probably disown me. If you sold it, you would never be able to speak to your family again because if it's already a half a million dollar gun, you know what's going to happen in another 25 to 30 years? Dude, that's paying for a lot of stuff, dude. Don't sell it. Uh, you like the, you don't like Glocks because you stopped playing Minecraft years ago, pretty much. Your wife hates Glocks more than Joe. Nah. Is Q the manufacturer overpriced? Actually, Daniel, no, they're not. If you compare Q to Daniel Defense, I think their guns are actually better finished than Daniel Defense guns. Uh, you get more options on your guns through the Q, like the Sugar Weasel is a $1,600 AR that has a polished trigger, lighter trigger, better trigger, better reset, has a suppressor-ready adapter already on the end of it, and it's available in uh, a nicer finish. So I actually think that the Q is a better price than the Daniel Defense by far. The, you can get a Q for a lot less than what that rifle costs. Uh, funny enough, you like the stock trigger on your AR. haven't measured the trigger pull, but it feels like three to four pounds of pull. What one do you have, Masquerade? Uh, your wife hates Joe. Hey, 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 hey. Nobody hates me. Everybody loves me. The only people that hate me, I don't give a shit about. I only care about you guys. And those Glock people. I deal with the Glock people because they make me. I get so mad when I'm talking about Glock. Not going to lie, I think she's watching at the moment. Uh-oh. 
the products are amazing. They have issues like proprietary mounting systems on the rails and silencers, but they're very reliable and cooler colored. Yeah, exactly. Uh, free personal ammo for life. Um, or a free fuel card. Uh, ammo. Fuel is way more expensive, or way less expensive than, like, a case of ammo. Plus, if I had all the ammo, then I could, uh, or all the, all the, um, yeah. You must like my questions. No, I don't want a free fuel card. Give me guns or give me guns and give me guns and call them guns. But not the nuns that like the guns. They're totally fun. You know what? You grow up when you stop simping for Glocks and Sigs. Ooh, 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 C88. I don't simp for anybody. I just appreciate some more than others. And I denigrate others that like certain brands. But simping, yeah. There are the guys out there that are total simps for brands. I don't get that. I can find something I like with most brands, but it's not always the case. Uh, it's a cheap AR I built with a mil-spec lower parts kit with a dissipator from uh, PSA, Dis dissipator upper. You got a good pull on it then. It's probably heavier, but it's probably such a smooth pull that it feels like a four pound. It's what I can hear a lull despite the office door being closed. My employees keep coming in. <laughs> uh, you'll take a free ammo card because I don't know how much more 50 ammo you can buy. Well, just remember, when you get tired of paying for that ammo... What's cheaper, an STG-44 or Singer M1911? That's a good question. If we're talking about a true STG-44, STG-44 sale price. Uh, let's see. Rock Island Auction, the last one they did. Yes, I'm of the illegal age. A German World War II STG-44 sold for $28,750 in 2013, which means it's probably gone up probably around closer to like forty to 45000 so it's worth 10% of a Singer 1911. So yes, the STG is much cheaper than a Singer 1911, although it's probably just me, you're not picky with triggers. No, dude, if you like your trigger, you like your trigger. You can be like over 10 Windex and think of fucking Glock trigger is better than a 1911 trigger. Fucking rube. Uh, you tend to like snappy or crunchy triggers. Nice. Jamie says, thinking about picking up a Canic that you love your SIGs, Walter, and Glocks. Canics are budget-friendly guns, but seem like they're starting to become uh, close to top tier. What do I think of Canics? I really do enjoy Canics. Uh, Canics are basically Walters, so they're what Walter P99 based. Uh, good triggers, good resets, easy to, easy to shoot, and a lot of variety, so... Yeah, Canics are awesome. 28K wouldn't even buy a real Singer 1911 mag wall. Singer it is. Uh, but you're okay with most trigger on most guns, including... No, I'm not reading the word because it's going to make me find uh, fall asleep. Do I like Weatherby? Never shot one. I'm not a long gun guy. Uh, speaking of what do I think of Overton, he speaks his mind. He believes what he's saying is true, so I'm not going to fault him for that. He does give bad information, but you know what? You're never going to convince him otherwise, so... Enjoy when he makes fun of people and just ignore what is wrong. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of what he says is wrong because he's got a uh, I'm always right mentality to him. But I enjoy him. I do agree with a lot of what he says. But one way to do everything is bullshit. There's no one. There are cases where doing one thing a certain way is the best way. But when it comes to firearms, there is no one right gun. There is no one right hold. Uh, if he believes in isosceles or weaver or car or whatever, I don't give a shit what he believes. I believe in what I can do. So, um, yeah, he believes in what he believes and he puts it out there. So good for him. Um, and he's gotten a hell of a, a fan base cause he's willing to insult literally everybody in the world. I just call out people when they're, when they're douche nozzles, but you know, good for him. Um, so win the lottery, go buy a singer. Uh, I know where there is one. It would cost you a lot of money. Uh, if you like your trigger, you can keep it. Well, sorry, had to. Nice. Uh, Jamie says, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. Um, yes, mechanics. Uh, I believe they changed a few things when they went to the meta. But yeah, the TP9 series is a dead clone mechanically for Walter P99 because it was a licensed design. 
What's my opinion on Ruger? Um, I think their Security 9 is underrated. I like the Ruger American Pistol, believe it or not. Uh, I wouldn't own one, but I like them. Um, they're, they're pretty, pretty decent in general. CZ is the one right gun. Yes, but which CZ? Unlike the G word people, uh, each one can be slightly different. What's the worst pistols? Anyone that has the Kiapa name on them, because Kiapa is a shit company. I wish I had those guns. I want to make 3D models. Lol, need real life things to do it for some reason. Just download some uh, 3D printer files. There's plenty of gun files. So does a Singer 1911 begin belong in a glass airtight box with motion sensors and alarms? No, it belongs out on a range being fired. Uh, what's my opinion on the IWI Masada? It wasn't good enough to be an IWI product, in my opinion, because they went for a mass-produced gun. But as for what the gun is, it's a good gun. Runs good, shoots good. Uh, the optic system is fine. Um, decent gun, and the price wasn't that bad, but it wasn't really what IWI was putting out at the time, so it didn't really fit into their lineup. But if that had come out as a M&P, nobody would have batted an eye. Bought the Hollow Sun 507 competition for the FNX 45. Wanted a big window, so I didn't have to replace suppressor height sights. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem, Jack. Has Phil showed up yet? Nope, he's hiding. Nice hoodie, bro. Yeah. It's not the right one, though. As soon as I get the new one, they're sending me out the new revised one. Pretty much Matthew, low production, amazing quality. Quality. Yeah, no, no. Uh, douche nozzle. Thank you. Oh, you're talking about people. Yeah. Uh, you need your pie. Go get a pie. You have a Barrett. Walk into any pie store with your Barrett. You'll get as many pies as you want. Uh, we were watching the wrong live feed for an hour. Jesus Christ. So you're telling me little buddy has been listening to some other dude talk about guns? Uh, when did I know I loved guns? I've always been interested in firearms, even way back when I was a youngster, 30 years ago, went to the first gun show, and I really liked guns, but I really didn't get into guns until 2017, so I've only been playing with guns for about seven years. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you had to use a gun for duty, what would it be? 1911. All day long. 1911. Uh, what do I think about the IWI 45 steel frame Magnum Research? Um, well, the Magnum Research and IWI, that's two different companies. Uh, which one exactly are you talking about? Now, I meant I am 3D artist and I'm working on a uh, sci-fi series coming soon. You need some real-life references. You will visit Gun Place tomorrow. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, McManus, I only own four guns that are never going to be fired while I'm alive. The Singer's one of them. You got to shoot it, dude. It will actually increase the value as long as it shoots. That's what happens with a lot of like old collectible blunderbusses and stuff. If they fire, they're worth 10 times as much. So as much as it probably hurts you to do it, uh, maybe go get like a black powder load 45 because it's softer, but you should shoot it. Make sure it still fires um, just because it is, it'll increase its value to know that it still fires. Union Signal and Switch made 55,000 1911s. Glad you're uh, on the lower end of production numbers. Yeah, um, do I know about SPN firearms? No, I don't, Justin, Jesus Christ. Um, what is SPN firearms? Is that a YouTube channel or is that an actual company? check them out at some point sorry i was just checking out their channel real quick i just can't man you're not wrong though yeah dude if you want to i'll come over and we'll hang out um i'll bring a um high point for you to shoot and then i'll shoot your uh your singer just to make sure it runs we'll do a video you're normally wrong uh, i think he was talking to me andrew but hey you're not normally wrong you gotta bear it I do need to pick up one of the E-Flex, uh, FN, or excuse me, the EOTech, uh, FLX sites. Uh, I'm currently in school for gunsmithing. Any advice? Yes, practice, practice, practice. Even if you're doing a lot of book learning when you get time, find guns to work on. Find anything to do machining work on. Even if it's not a gun, 
anything that you do in terms of um, machining work and stuff will e uh, e um, become applicable in the world of gunsmithing. 100% fair trade. Look, you can keep your gun. I just want to shoot it and you shoot my high point that I'm going to buy and put a $1,000 suppressor on a $200 gun. You let me shoot that air up there, I'll let you shoot my Barrett after you find it. Oh, i got to find it and let you shoot my gun? I don't know about that. Uh, I do need to change my grip, though. I want to get a different grip. I want to ask the president if the tunnels are real. I wonder if they work like slides. Are you okay, Atticus? Did I miss something? Did you say something else? Or was that just one of those random McDando comments that comes in out of nowhere? All you new motherfuckers, just hit the like button, would you? Tell Google that I deserve to get my content out there. And that you guys like looking at guns on a wall. And you like talking to me about shit. Uh, you like your EOTech eFlix. Yeah. Um, and for the price, as, a, as, a, as an FFL, I can get them for like 250 bucks. So I'm thinking about it. What grip is on the AR? That is a Magpul K2 Plus, but it's been custom stippled by my guy Greg down at Liberty Arms. It's on a really, really... Um, it's a really aggressive stipple on it. How many guns do I have? Uh, more than I care to think about. Um, obviously, there's nine behind me, but at any given time, there's a lot more than that. I need another safe. Still live. Yeah, Katie. Uh, we're only at two hours. We're only at hour 55 minutes. We've got a long time to go. What gimmicks have gotten very popular but are still sad, are still bad? Air racking. I think that's a gimmick. Um, every gun needing a light. Um, uh, you pay two seventy five. They're like three fifty retail here. Yep, uh, retail. Yeah, three forty nine on the site. But yeah, two seventy five is a pretty solid deal. Uh, they're like two fifty three is cost right now on them. You mathematically told us last stream. We figured out it's a lot. Uh, what's your thoughts on the FX nine? Uh, if you're talking about the Freedom Ordnance FX nine, the AR pistol. It's fine. It's overpriced. If you're talking about the, um, what other FX9 is there? What do you do with them? I shoot them, make videos, and then I put them in a safe. Do I have an FAL? No, I'm not a long gun guy. Uh, Magpul bad lever is a bad gimmick that won't seem to die. Yeah, no, I don't have that. I know a lot of people like those. I did not put one on the AR-15. I just have extended controls on the one side and an ambi safety, but I didn't do the bad lever. Oh, geez, I definitely need to change devices. Uh-oh, your, your battery's going to die. Uh, what's my favorite gun you own? Um, I sold my DWX. Depending on how well that CZ shoots, that will probably become my new favorite gun uh, if I really like the way that shoots. The only downside to this backdrop now with those rails up there is that it hides black guns very muchly, and I can't pick them up. Uh, but my second favorite gun is probably the SIG 320 X5 Legion. I think it's better than the DH3 and even the AXG. Uh, do I hunt? Nope. Nobody will take me. I'm physically disabled, and I can't stop running my goddamn mouth. Uh, do you wish the U.S. would get Russian and Chinese firearm imports again? Yeah, absolutely. Because it would bring the value or the price back down to what they're actually worth. Uh, all those guns you will never use, coward. Okay. Uh, howdy, brother. Hey, how you doing, James? How do you know when you need to buy a safe or a vault? Uh, you should always have something. Now, I have safes. I have gun lockers. I have a bunch of gun lockers. Way over there. Sorry. Place is a mess. I'm moving a bunch of shit around. But I have gun lockers. Those are for easy access for when I'm working on stuff. Um, but I have gun safes that are not visible. Um, and then you should always have something that you can secure. Oh, they said it. Hey, Glock, look, it's actually up there. Sorry, I haven't been staying like I wanted, but just wanted to drop in and say, Glock! <coughs> you almost made me fall asleep, burp, and fart at the same time, Glock. Uh, no staccato P-Love? They're too expensive for what they are, dude. Why would I want to spend $3,000 on a gun that is only worth 1500 bucks? I mean, and I'm not asking in a derogatory manner. I'm not asking because... Um, I don't think that they make a quality gun. They don't make a $3,000 gun. The, the staccato, whatever, the XCs and the full size, they're not worth $3,500. They're worth 15 to two. If Platypus can make an excellent shooting gun that will outshoot a staccato for two grand, then there's no reason for staccato to be that high. Oh, they're hand fit, they're handcrafted, they're hand, they're the fucking hand job. I don't care. They're just not worth three grand. Uh, if you will be quiet for an hour, I'll take you out turkey hunting. No, thank you. 
I paid sixteen fifty for your SVT forty. Gunbroker has them for like five k plus. Yeah, Shadow Two on the wall is gorgeous. What Shadow Two? That's a TSO. Uh, would you rather have Ghost Guns back or Bump Stocks back? Well, considering they overturned the Bump Stock ban. Uh, love your shite, man. I'll join back later. Gotcha, Glocky. Like I said, I even put the Glocky style PSA up top. Only because they blend in and I don't have to look at them. Uh, government stopped banning inanimate objects arbitrarily. Well, that's the, the funnest part, McManus, because technically the government didn't. The uh, law enforcement agency that is only supposed to enforce the laws and make recommendations decided to make those, and that's why they got overturned by the government. So, yes, I don't believe any firearms accessory, any accessory that goes onto a gun, should be banned because it's just a freaking accessory, especially when the ATF starts by defining something as an accessory and then changes their mind because they're used more often by bad guys. Guess what? Bad guys will use whatever the frick they want because they think it's cool. Nothing us law-abiding people, I was going to say students, citizens are going to fuck with, but, you know. Uh, you shot a staccato, not worth the money. You'd rather get a Toon CZ or SIG for that money. Yeah, when those came out, they were on the street for like 1500 bucks. They run for about two grand now. And that will outshoot a staccato all day, every day, seven times on a Sunday, and cost $1,000 less. You know how much ammo you can get for $1,000? You can actually get become a better shot with one of those because you can get 4,000 rounds of ammo plus the gun for less than a staccato. Sorry. It's just not worth the money. Uh, do I like red dots on your pistols or irons better? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I like the red dots for the like the guns that are able to take them, but I would never cut a steel frame or an iron sight gun just to run an optic. Um, so if it can take an optic, I'll put optics on it. If it doesn't, I won't. That's the best response I can give. You don't have to tell me the Alphabet boys are overstepping their authority. Yep, exactly. Uh, do you think you'll ever get bored with YouTube? Possibly. Everybody can run into burnout. To be honest, uh, there's been many times I've wanted to just stop, but it gives me something to do. And that's probably why I started doing the live streaming this year is because it adds a new dimension to my YouTube channel. Whereas before it was the same thing. I was doing the same thing every day. I was doing a short and then twice a week I was putting up a long form and I was just responding to comments and shit. Now that I'm doing long form and live streams and everything else we're doing, it's made it worth my time to do it more again. Whereas before I was really starting to burn out. I like this shit because we can talk. You guys can bring up stuff I don't think about and we can have fun. Uh, do I like the Echelon? Yes, I need to pick one up. Uh, dagger, dagger, dagger. They're fine. They're not worth it. Don't get one if you can get a Glock. Turn my mic up. No. Um, turn your speakers up. Um, my volume is all the way up. I can't hear you. Then there's something wrong with whatever device you're listening to me on because that's perfectly fine. In fact, perfectly fine. In fact, that's at 20. 20% volume and it's fine. Uh, you just watch a video on the CDC stop re reporting on the number of gun-related self-defense cases because it would make it hard to make bans. Well, yeah, they don't want to have accurate numbers on self-justified use of firearms. They just want a total number, and now they can just guesstimate. Uh, your dagger runs. They're fine, but I wouldn't trust my life to one. It, as a range toy, maybe. Joseph says, any giveaways coming up? Yes, in fact. Um, it's buried under a bunch of shit, but I'm giving away a blacksmith safe. Um, hold on a second. Where did I put it? Single pistol gun safe. You can actually fit two 1911s in it, and I'll be giving one away. And yes, I'm wearing crappy looking sweats because my leg's in a cast and I can't wear pants. Bro, do you have a Glock 19X? I've had them in the past. I don't have one now. Hellcat Pro or a Glock 26? Hellcat Pro every freaking day. With the Lago Alien hype has died down, was it actually that good? Uh, it's an amazing shooting gun, but it wasn't a $5,000 gun. Um, but, 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 what's the pistol near the plaque. Which one? There's several. Uh, the one up top is a Palmetto State Armory Rock 5.7. That one's a CZ TSO Tactical Sport Orange. It's the first gen, not the second gen. And that's a SIG 3, uh, 320X5 Legion. Uh, what do I do? What would I do for mods on a stock 92FS? Langdon Tactical Trigger. That's about it I would do on a standard one. Okay, man. Gotta head out. Work early tomorrow. Lobster, thanks for coming in, dude. Glad you were here for it. Do I shoot shotgun? Not often. 
you need Phil. He'll be here, maybe. Uh, Bonnie Tyler blocked out of the sun. Blocked out the sun or something today. Snafu, it's been a while since you've been in, bro. What's up, dude? Thoughts on Bear Creek Arsenal uppers? Again, kind of like PSA, I wouldn't trust my life to them, but they're fine for range use, slow fire, things like that. I don't see them lasting the course because uh, they produce them so cheaply that their quality control probably is a little lacking. Um, do I have a dog or any pets? No, my buddy has a dog that uh, I kind of claim, um, and she loves me, and that's good enough for me. I can't uh, handle pets right now because of my physical... Would it be legal to do custom tuning if folks ship them to you, or would an FFL be required? Um, I would need to have an FFL if they ship me the entire gun. If obviously, if you're shipping me a serialized part, I would need to be able to accept it into a bound book. Now, you can just get an FFL to do repairs uh, without getting a brick-and-mortar store, but you still need a location, uh, either your home or an office, etc. Like, if I set up at my office, I'd have to uh, have the ATF make sure that it was a secure office, and then I could do it, but... Um, yeah, if you sent me a slide or something, that's fine because you can send slides through the mail with no signatures required. But anything serialized has to be sent to and from an FFL. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, but yeah, I've had the 19X. I did, it, the 19X is just, it's a 19 with the 45, with the 17 frame. And I don't care for, why would I want a short barrel? Nine mil. Uh, so ever every time a person sees a serial number, it's documented. Um, it's documented somewhere. Now here's the thing: there's no well, as far as we know, there it's not legal for a registry within the state and everything. Like every gun that I have has paperwork done on it. So the place where I did the transfer or bought them from, they have a record with that serial number. But when the police run a serial number, the only things that come up is whether or not it's a clean serial number or if it is it has been used in a crime and is actively being sought or if it's been reported stolen. Uh, gun serial numbers do not come back to individuals unless you can get to that level and you figure out what store it came from and you get a warrant for the information because we don't just hand out owner information to anybody. We're not Liberty Safes. You think hollow sun optics are good? Yes, they are good. Very good. Andrew's coming back. All right, bring your own pie. Thoughts on anti-gun Democrat woman saying that we only need two bullets to protect ourselves, not ten in California. Uh, she's an idiot, and uh, she needs to be put through a uh, simulated robbery with a uh, paintball gun with two, two paintball rounds in it and see how well it goes. Uh, have I ever got my hands on a BAR? No, I wish I could. That would be fun. Or a Tommy gun, just the new versions of it made by Car Arms, just a semi-auto. I have a video of us shooting it. it. It was oiled so heavily that the front sight popped off. It was funny. Should we keep bad magazines as training mags? I mean, if you want one for, like, like combat switching, things like that, sure. Um, what you consider bad and what I consider bad are two separate things. Like, this is just a standard 1911 mag. Um, I don't use these. This just happened to be in a gun that I bought. I don't use the ones that have the all-metal followers. Uh, I tend to just sell these on eBay because I'm sure they work in something, but I'm not run. Again, there's things I trust my life to and things that I don't. Uh, magazines are someplace where I much rather spend 35 to $50, get Wilson Combat mags. These are far superior. They work better. They're going to last longer. Much better choice. Doesn't the 19X have that little dongle on front of the magwell that doesn't allow it to accept Glock 17 mags? Yeah, that's why you either have to shave your mags or get extendeds. You built an AR-10 with your buddy using a Bear Creek Arsenal upper. We'll keep you updated. Yeah, and, and like I said, it'll run fine. Just don't expect it to save your life. Um, you know, just plan on it being a good plinker. Uh, sorry for the fat finger typing. It's fine, dude. Uh, doesn't the, 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 the hollow suns are great optics. Yep, got a, got you so good to have a trusted company to deal with that will help you protect rights like Liberty Arms. <laughs> you mean Liberty Safe. Liberty Arms is different. Oh, you mean because we won't give away your information? Well, if anybody that's got a, a real FFL and not one of those fly-by-night turds working out of their garage, yeah, they're not going to give up their information. It would take a federal warrant before we give up our owner information. Uh, you can get rid of that part, though. Get a Dremel. Yep. 
Uh, you love dremeling your overpriced handguns. Hey, hey, hey. All you're doing is taking a gun that's $630 that should be $300 and making it worth about $200 because you cut the frame on it. But here's the good news. With the Glock 19X, let's say you cut the frame and later on you decide to sell it. The way to get your money back is send that frame to Glock and for $100 they will replace your frame. Uh, which is actually a pretty cool deal. So you can modify the shit out of it, see what works, and then if you hate it, send it back to Glock, and they will send you a brand new frame for $100. It's part of their refurb process. Uh, thanks for letting me pick your brain. Good night. No problem, Mr. Skywalker. Nice to have you in here, Mr. Mr. Hey, I take it a frame. Have I heard about the PSA MP7-ish gun? Yes. As soon as one comes out, I will be picking one of those up just because I like the 5.7 uh, round. Uh, did Phil show up? Nope. He did not show up. Good 1022 chassis. Archangel makes a couple of different versions of them, and then Sharps makes a good 1022 chassis. Uh, they do like a precision style. Um, it's a little expensive, but pretty good. Know how to fix a sticky 1911? My uncle got a Rock Island that is having issues. Depends on what you mean by sticky. Is it locking back on its own, or is it just like not going all the way back in a battery? Rock Islands, they use a parkerization finish, and the first thing I always recommend is take that off the inside of the rails and stuff. Um, but if it's sticking like when it comes back and it's locking open, that could be the slide lock might need to be trimmed, or it's the wrong size that could be interfering with the swinging link and causing it to lock open. Um... Oh, specific, you should specify the magwell. Um, if you're having problems, it's because uh, Rock Island sh ships with shit mags. Another issue with a lot of these mags is they are not built to the right spec. Uh, so they're actually slightly wider, and you're talking one or two thousandths. But guns I have, like my, my auto ordnance, my Wilsons will drop right in and out, where an ACT shit mag won't, or a KCI mag won't. So mags are a big difference. Uh, auctioning off what, uh, heard Phil was on his channel. Oh, God damn. You're buying all the pies. Good luck to you, Andrew. I hope you get all the pies. You don't own any gun for its monetary worth. Mine are for shooting protection, and I want my kids to be able to own them later. Not swag, bling, bragging rights, or showpiece. James, great way to look at it. I do not view any of these guns that I own as money. Um, even though that is a lot of money on the wall, I bought them because I like them. I can shoot them all very well. I would not keep a gun I can't shoot well. And I've even gotten rid of, like, my DWX. If you guys never saw it, I had a Dan Wesson DWX, and the serial number was 00220222. So it was a really cool serial number. It was all twos, and I got rid of it because it wasn't optics cut. And I think a DWX needs to be optics cut because a DWX will outshoot that gun on a good day with an optic, but when it comes to just irons, that will outshoot a DWX. So that's why I got rid of a cool-ass serial number, valuable gun, $2,000 gun, and I just got rid of it because it didn't suit my purposes. So I totally agree with you, James. Charter Arms versus Taurus Revolvers. I'm going to go with the Taurus because Charter Arms, they feel a little bit cheaper. They produce a lot more in different varying calibers, so they might not have quite the same quality control. Why not both, James? Eh, what do I think about carrying without one loaded? I think you're just a victim if you carry it without one in the chamber. Uh, if you carry a gun that is... Uh, if you're too afraid to carry a gun with one in the chamber, you should not be carrying a gun. You should be carrying bear spray or some shit. Um, and if you're going to refer to, like, um, freaking Mossad, the way they used to carry, that was because they were accustomed to picking up enemy firearms on the field of battle and always racking them to make sure a round was in them. But if you're talking about normal civilians... If you're not carrying with one in the chamber, put the gun down, get some pepper spray, and go about your business because you're probably not going to get attacked well enough to understand how to use a gun anyways. Do you carry with a sidecar holster? Nope. Am I near Philadelphia? Four hours away, five hours away. Uh, best budget optics, Swamp Fox. Uh, Sub Romeo for 80 bucks. A Sig Romeo. A Sig Romeo what? If you bought a Sig Romeo Zero, I would highly recommend getting rid of it. Um, and I would go and get a hollow sun. Um, the Romeo zero, it's a plastic body. It doesn't really take, uh, hits well and it can lose zero very easily. Um, and that's just me being honest. If you want budget optics, go with like Swamp Fox. They're under 200 bucks and they're really solid. Oh, a Romeo five, those are fine. 
Romeo 5 is kind of like a standard uh, for for PDW, PCCs, and AR-15 basics, non-magnified non, uh, non optics. Uh, okay, you're new, but you have a SIG P320. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the main thing is, if you don't trust the gun, get rid of the gun. I carry that one all the time. That's a SIG 320 X5 Legion. That's an M17. If you can't trust yourself, get an M17. Swap yours out for an M17 or get a fire control unit that has a safety on it. Then you can kind of help yourself. But if you're so afraid of your gun going off that you carry without one in the chamber, just don't carry the gun. Get a different gun. Haro-san. Yeah, they are Chani. Uh, because I have plenty of money, all the guns I have ever bought you still own. Yeah, nice. Uh, do we tell him about the 320s going off? No, McManus, that's why he carries without one in the chambers, because he's afraid it's going to detonate on its own. Uh, I, and James, that's awesome. Having enough money to never have to sell your guns is awesome. Um, there's many guns I have that I won't sell because they were gifts, but also in my limited time buying firearms, I have enough of them that I don't need to to really collect anymore um but i buy the new stuff just to try it and i'll usually sell those if it's something that's still in production easily replaceable easily available i don't bother keeping it because why the hell do i need to keep a g3 when i can use 250 bucks to buy like used glock and flip that and get more money and fucking i i play the flip game um i never lose money when i buy a gun let's put it that way uh walter p22 they're fine it's old, outdated 10-rounders, but... Uh, God damn, I hate autocorrect. Yeah, pretty much. You had a Smith & Wesson 45. Well, get that one back, Mike. Uh, do, do, do. Everybody hates autocorrect. Thank you, Count. Schmegla. Count Schmegla. This SPN company or channel they seem to like their striker fired stuff i'll tell you that get a goddamn hammer fired gun an entire month with no hammer fired guns in 2024 when everybody's talking about 2011s why do you have a remington r51 holy shit uh comparing 20 plus sight pictures okay doing a lot of production for not a lot of views bro i do one takes and i get the same number of views Yeah, that's like me. I joke about renting, getting rid of your Barrett, but I would never give it away. But he's going to let me borrow it. Uh, the computer is a i9-12900K and, and a water-cooled 3090 RTX. It works well. Dude, Andrew, I have nothing... I have no desire to own a Barrett. Do I game on that PC or is it for editing? I can edit on it for sure, but uh, I play uh, Android-based game emulation. No, I, I play a lot of like racing games and Ready or Not VR stuff. So it works really well for the VR. Sorry, it's very shaky because of the mouse. Um, but yeah, I play a lot of VR stuff. Sorry, I can't do the flip game, but I respect the hustle. I treat them like Pokemon when I got to collect them all. Yeah, well, I'm back into that mode. Um, 2023 was a bad year for flipping. I think uh, I checked my transaction record. record. Um, between December of 2022 and March of 2023, I'd done like 200 transactions. That includes selling and buying, but uh, typically there was always a trade involved whenever I did things. So I, I did a lot of transactions in 2023. So far in 2024, this is the 2024 wall minus a few that I've already sold. So I'm doing pretty well in terms of not buying shit, but that's also because I'm working on my company and stuff. Um, and I do have two on order, and there's three in the safe that I put away already. Uh, typically, when I put guns in the safe, they, that's where they stay. They're not coming back out. So if I don't sell them, then they go into the safe. So what I'm was do, what i doing this year is I'm using these gun lockers, uh, and I'm filling them up all through 2024, and then I'll go through them uh, near the end of 2024 and see if there's anything I absolutely don't need to keep, and then I'll be getting rid of a lot of stuff. Is an MP9 as good as a Glock 19X? In my opinion, yes. Uh, some people will tell you no, but I think the MP9 is an excellent gun. Uh, the triggers are a little meh, but so are the Glocks. Um, and they compete with Glock 19 and 19X and the 45s in terms of law enforcement carry and military around the world. 
Um, bum, bum, bum. You want a Lapua 338 that's the only rifle you still own. And yeah, get an Emo. They're only like six grand. Um, wish I was involved back in 05. Yeah. Is one of the ones on order the TSOS Raider? No, not the Raider. I got the TSOS Night Stalker, the double stack uh, 2011 with the threaded barrel and the lightning cuts in it. Um, so that one will hopefully be here. It was ordered today, so hopefully it'll be here by the end of the week. So hopefully by the Friday live stream, it'll be up on the wall. That's with that one extra space. I'm going to wind up moving probably the M17 up and then move that over. So I'll probably put the M17 on the top and then I'll have the night, the SIG down and then the Night Stalker in the middle. I don't know. We'll see. It'll be the third cheapest gun on that wall. So that's always impressive. I used to say I love the cheap stuff, and then I look at the wall behind me, and the cheapest thing up there is the Glock 17. Uh, selling a white Chris Vector. Ooh, you should buy it then. When you sell it, let me know. Pretty please? Pretty, pretty please? Uh, unfortunately, um, I don't think I'll be selling it, my good sir. I've been wanting a uh, comp. I, ha I bought the Gerson, or I ordered the Gerson 2311 when it came out. And I wound up not liking it, and we wound up letting it go. It was one that already had one of Gerson's shitty optics on it. Um, but I'm getting the new one. I know that it's 507 uh, RMSC, or the compact uh, RMSC footprint. So I'll be putting a 507K on that one. I was going to take a nap, but now I'm more interested in talking guns with a bunch of guys you've never met. That's the way it goes, Crazy Legs. You think you can get away from me, but you can't. That's why I appreciate all the likes you guys give me. Uh, what gun manufacturers aren't known about enough? Um, there's not a lot of like independent gun manufacturers. Um, in terms of gun manufacturers that don't get enough like um, or gun brand gun types, the Mossberg MC series is totally underrated. I have the MC1. I want to get the MC2. I had just haven't bought one yet. There's a bunch of guns I need to get. But the Mossberg pistols were actually really decent guns. They just were ignored by the entire community for some gosh darn reason. Uh, you like Jiminy. Build your business, my man. Uh, yeah, I'm working on it, dude. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of this stuff this year. Uh, you didn't like the Gerson either. Yeah, it just felt too plasticky. The trigger felt like crap. The trigger had a double set first pull, but it was mainly because of the manufacturer of the trigger. And the plastic felt really shitty, and their magwell sucked. That's why I'm hoping that the uh, T-Sauce is going to be much nicer feeling. And it's got the threaded barrel and optics cut out of the box. Uh, street price is like $950. Cost is under $800. Bucks. So $800 bucks for a 2011 that hopefully will shoot with a Prodigy since it doesn't have MIM parts in it other than I think two parts. Should be pretty good. Chris Vector. Um, the problem... Nightstick or TLR7? Um, I'd probably go TLR7. I've got a couple of TLR7s. I don't have any nightsticks. Uh, catch you later. Wife wants to go out to eat. Thank you for being a real person and not a gun snob or market shill. Good night. Stay safe. Keep your powder dry. You as well, James. Thanks for coming in, dude. I do appreciate it. Hope you come back for other ones. Uh, a lot of us just, it's a lot of the same people, like the consistent level of people, and we have a lot of fun. So definitely, dude, come back for another one. Um, or who knows, by the time you're done with dinner, maybe I'll still be on. I, I have that kind of time since I'm retired. Bye bye. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you. Ooh, creepy. Buddy of mine just got a Vector in 40. Cool, but way too much money for what it is. Yeah, and the problem with the Vector is the design of the recoil system really needs to be fully automatic. You really want a full automatic one. Um, if you can ever get your hands on a full automatic one at like a full auto shoot, you'll definitely see how well that weird ass down recoil system works to pull the whole front of the gun down. They, uh, just from what I've seen, I haven't shot one yet, but from what I've seen, they're pretty amazing. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Are suppressed pistols good for serious use, or is it more for range toy plinking? Austin, suppressed guns really have no point in the, the market. Um, don't go anywhere, since you can't see it. I can't reach it, and I wouldn't be touching it anyway. YouTube, I'm not touching it, but that's a suppressor up there. That's my um, Osprey 9. It adds 8 inches to the end of the gun, so it really does nothing for, like, concealed carry or anything. There's no point to have a suppressor on a carry gun. Um, so it's basically just for planking and having fun. Now, on a rifle for hunting, that's a different story, but on a pistol, it doesn't mean anything. 
your vector doesn't run on suppress worth a shite. You hear it's because it, it's in the 45 and the 9s run great. Yeah, 45 is a lazy recoil round. And again, it's not fast enough to really activate the cyclic rate of a Chris. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, I did not know that you're having problems with yours, though. Do I have a Desert Eagle? No, I sold my Desert Eagle a long time ago. Uh, I'm a good guy and I give out good knowledge. I try. Uh, the full auto vectors run great. That's how it was designed exactly. If you ever get a chance to go any place that has one for rent or anything like that, you have to find somebody that has a display license for a full auto because they're too new. You can't actually own one under full transferables. Um, well, I just bought a white Chris vector. Jesus Christ, Andrew. Um, but yeah, they were designed to run full auto and that recoil system would be amazing. Uh... Just check stock at your closest store. Screw the Cali laws. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a man trying not to regret his choice. Thinking about picking up the Springfield Armory TRP thoughts. I wish they would drop the TRP by like $300. Then it would be like a really good recommendation. But they're a good gun. They shoot well. Uh, the last one I had, I had redone and sold it to a buddy. Because he really wanted it. Disagree on the silencers. For concealed carry, yeah, that's not great. For home defense, they're awesome. Yeah, I can see the application for home defense. Home defense and hunting, like I said, in a situation where you want it to be quieter, I totally get that. Also, hearing safe inside the house and shite. Uh, is YouTube getting any less pro-gun with ads or censorship? Uh, no. Um... I'm shadow banned right now. What that means is they didn't issue me a ban, but right now, this time of the year is the worst time of the year for YouTube YouTube when it comes in terms of ads and stuff or ad revenue because we had the Super Bowl, you had Christmas, all that stuff. There's really nothing going on until we get until May-ish, June. So right now is the dead time. So they will selectively pick categories to promote because they want every single ad dollar they can get. Um, so my stuff, I went from getting 5.8 million views a month ago to this month, I got 580,000. So I lost 90% of my views. The only thing that's really kept it going is the fact that the long form views are the ones that have picked up and long form pays hundreds of times more than the shorts. So for a hundred thousand views on long forms, I'll get the same amount of money that I would get for like 20 million shorts views. So... How much for a sponsor to buy you out and say a gun is good when you know it's crap? Um, no, there's no number, dude. I'm actually talking to a light, another light company right now because they sent me over the contract and it says they get to review the video. And I said, nope. Uh, and then they sent it back saying, well, we just want to check it for factual errors. I'm like, there will be no factual errors, but you're not reviewing the video. So I actually backed out of that sponsorship and lost a couple of grand. Um, you gagged reading that. No worries. Um, yeah, I, I gave up a couple of grand just because they wanted to view the video first and try to get me to change it if they felt I was doing something that breached our agreement. I'm like, fuck that. No, 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 no. I gave you a deal on the ad and uh, I was going to review the products honestly and then they were going to sponsor a live stream. So the review was not going to be paid, just to be clear. They were going to sponsor some live streams for a couple of grand and uh, they were going to give me some giveaway stuff, all that shit. But the minute they said they wanted to review the video first, I said, nope, not going to happen. Uh, never sell out and become another Such. Pretty much. Has a maker tried to pay me to take down a bad video? Um, I, just straight up, like I said, originally my contract with Blacksmith, they've done three sponsored videos and the two giveaways. Um, they wanted to have control over it. They actually wanted to control the video and they wanted to tell me what to say and when to put it up and, and how they were going to use it. And I explained to them that my integrity is not for sale and that I would be doing it however I wanted to. And they, they were receptive to that. I guess there are people out there though. Uh, and I can point fingers all day long. If you look at probably half the motherfuckers that are on their, their website, they're paid shills that just took the money. Um, I took a lot less money, but I took full control of all my videos. They can use my videos, but if I tell them to take down my video, they have to take down the video. Uh, would you mind if, uh, would you mind if you reviewed the 5.7? I can't hold it. 
it can be up on display, but I can't pull it down on a live stream. Your truck gun just stove pipe for the third time. Not sure if it should be your truck gun. Uh, no, not if it stove piped. I wouldn't. Is it just me or did anyone else notice the viewer count jump? Uh, what you're seeing, Crazy Legs, is I'm doing vertical live streaming. So people are getting served this as they're scrolling through shorts. So at this time, that tells you how many people are actually looking at different things. So people are scrolling through their shorts feed and I'm popping up and then people are clicking on it. So when it jumps up by 100 people, it's because 100 people decided to click on the video. You are the smartest 100 people ever. Like the video before you run away screaming like little bitches though. Um, you don't want to be a sellout or a shill, better man than me. Dude, it just, here's the deal. Uh, I mentioned it last live stream for those of you that didn't hear my rant on that. Canik came out, or they teamed up with Terran Tactical. They came out with what they call the TTI uh, meta, whatever bullshit, TTI combat, they're calling it, right? Here's the problem with that gun. TTI, Terran Tactical Innovations, did nothing other than suggesting changes to the gun that Canik then did. All those guns are produced by Canik in Canik factories. They are not assembled by Terran Tactical. The G34 Combat Master, the Pit Vipers, all those have direct input from Terran Tactical. He built them. Those are real guns. But to charge a thousand dollars for a four hundred dollar gun just because you put a comp on it and laser engraved it is total bullshit. But because they didn't get the sales immediately like they wanted to, if you look like through gun channels histories for the last few weeks, you'll notice in the last two weeks four or five different reviewers all of a sudden got Terran Tactical Innovation Combat Mechanics. That is bullshit in my opinion because that is a clear indication that they're just trying to buy views by sending guns to the popular reviewers. And I will not be one though. Found me ages ago through the shorts, the couch sold you. Thank you, McManus. Yeah, I, I did like a few videos without it and everybody's like, bring back the couch, you freaking bastard. I'm like, okay. Um, then I caught his 10,000k live stream. Yep. The 100k, yeah, that was way back. Um, shorts haven't been out for ages. Well, that's the thing, though. I put up a short nearly every day, crazy legs. But since I'm not being promoted, you never see them. Integrity is missing in the production space of the 2A community. Yes, because, you know, everybody wants USCCA law and U.S. Law Shield money and all these other motherfuckers, you know, Glock being a sponsor of a lot of channels. You have to suck the assholes of a lot of people in order to get that kind of money. And I just, I don't give a shit. I'd rather have no money and some integrity than some money and in, in low integrity. Oh, Milo, Milo is right here. Milo is hanging out with Shiloh. So they just sit there. Yeah, I'm the only motherfucker in the in the gun tube sphere that, that keeps stuffed animals on their desk. So do I still trust SIG after their recent issues? What do you think? Yeah, it was a manufacturing problem. They tried to cut their corners and try to make things as finite as they could, and they wound up with issues. So what? When the Gen 2 Glock came to the United States in the 80s, in the first seven years of production, matching the same amount of time as a SIG 320, there was literally 10 times more lawsuits filed by Glock owners saying their guns were going off than have been filed against SIG so far. So, yes, I'm trusting SIG because there have been more negligent and accidental discharge of Glocks than there have of SIGs. Documented. I'm not bullshitting. It's documented. You can go look up the number of lawsuits. Up until this year when more lawsuits were filed, there were 247 lawsuits filed against Glock for the Gen 2, Glock 17, 19s. And there was 31 that went to court at the time that I did the research against SIG. And they produced two times as many pistols. So it was literally 20 times more based on the production numbers. Uh, definitely not the ATF is always here. Thank you. When you see a gun, do you sometimes feel like you can make it sci-fi? Uh. I don't really go crazy over like the sci-fi super duper special super duper guns. Um, things like the orange are probably as crazy as I like to go. Um, although, I mean, those are kind of getting spacey looking. Uh, killer name. 
Who, Pingu? Uh, how do I check if your 365 model is that made after they fixed it? It has a sticky slide lock up, lock up after you pull the trigger. Just go on the SIG site. They should have a serial number lookup or just get a hold of their uh, um, RMA department. Uh, do I like gun? No bacon. I hate guns. I don't even want to ever be around a gun. Guns scare me. If I ever see a gun, I run the other direction. In fact, I will stab a gun with a knife. Uh, opinion on airsoft over mantis for dry fire training. Ah, you're somebody who saw Overton Windex's video. Uh, if you can afford it, go for it, dude. Overton is a very, very minimalist guy when it comes to things he likes to spend his money on in terms of um, what he thinks of as unnecessary. So if you can afford the Mantis system, get the Mantis system. It allows you to not have to buy CO2 cartridges and all that shit. That's another thing. If you're talking dry fire, and that's one thing that's different between the Mantis and Airsoft is unless you put BBs in the Airsoft, you would have to hold down your slide lock slide release, which you don't do in real life. So, um, yeah, 12 gram CO2s are like five bucks for 10 cartridges, but you get 30 shots per cartridge. So you're going to spend a lot of money dry firing. Whereas the Mantis, yeah, it's 240 bucks. But uh, for example, I'm going to actually tell you right now, the M17, which is uh, one of a popular one, depending on which model gun you shoot, right? But the M17 airsoft gun, right? M17177 uh, is a $139 gun. Then you buy ammo, then you buy the CO2, then you do all this shit, and you're going to be at the exact same price as the Mantis. So you might as well get the Mantis if you don't want to clean up shit in your house. That's what I think. Uh, real talk, your issue with SIG is they like to use their customer base as a testing base and then silently making changes without telling it. Otherwise, they are serviceable. Yeah, that, well, that's why, honestly, I prefer the hammer-fired SIGs because they're an older, one, older design, military, tri tried and tested before civilian use. So I agree a little bit, McManus. Um, I prefer just the Legion line. Um, the only reason that X5 is in up there, or that uh, M17 is because it was such a good deal. Otherwise, I prefer the higher end SIGs because they seem to have more development into them. I don't care for the M17's version of the 320 trigger, flat face or nothing, in my opinion. So I get it. Uh, going to buy Vietnam War era food cans from a guy at 10 o'clock tonight, be, but it's going to be a fun night. Um, be careful eating them. Love your PDPF, but was a little too snappy for your liking, but such a nice feeling gun in the hand. I don't know if I want to keep it. Um, I don't mind the F. I think it has a better grip on it than the standard one, but I need a full size, so I would need the competition or the pro. You use green gas, almost one-on-one -on -one replica airsoft gun to practice in your backyard. Green gas is a way to go too, but again, you're talking $17 for a can. Um, and if you go through five cans in one year, that's 35 plus, you know, 50, so 80 bucks plus the gun. Do I have any Nerf blasters? No, I've got a bunch of uh, airsoft uh, guns. Actually, not airsoft. I have BB guns, which shoot 177 BBs and pellets. Um, but yeah, uh, airsoft, you can spend just as much in airsoft as you can on anything else. Uh, when you look at, like, um, let's see, air guns... Sort by price. And I'm not talking about PCP guns. I'm talking about just like handgun handguns. Because a lot of people, you don't dry fire rifles that much. At least not as many people as I know. But yeah, so a 25 pack of CO2 is like 15 bucks. So that's not bad. But if you get like the basic shit, you can get the Daisy Model 415, which is like a model that's been around forever. You can get those for like 40 bucks. But an M&P blowback, blowback is important because you want blowback. If you're not getting blowback, that's reducing part of your dry firing stuff. But you can get those for about 50 bucks. Uh, anytime you get a serialized one, like a Glock, or not a serialized, but a, a, a replica that's licensed, it's always more expensive. 60 bucks for a USP. Makarov is 70 bucks. Um, the 357 is $100, and then it just goes up from there. Glock 19s are $85 to $100 if you want to blow back to get more expensive. Um, so, yeah, it just the cost is almost the same as a Mantis. But, of course, Overton was trying to make a point, so he decided to just use the cost uh, of the gun versus everything else needed to run the gun. Uh, you did it, it sounds expensive. Do I have any Nerf blasters? Nope. No Nerf blasters. I used to collect Nerf stuff 
back when I was doing a lot of auction and flea market stuff, but it got too hard to keep track of it all, so I just dumped it all in one big bundle to a guy. You gotta go, your wife is yelling at you again. Tell that lady to shush. Tell her the Jiminy Show said shush. And shush stands for super hot, underrated, sexy, hey. Your iron stomach was quenched by the fires of post-Katrina summers, night fishing, MREs in the toolbox. You bought that Umarex Glock to get accustomed to it, and it has the worst trigger. It's not that much worse than a real one. You can sometimes find an electric pistol, but they run like shite. Yeah, AEGs. Yeah, you can go to Evike and uh, Fox Airsoft. Do you think the subcompact Glock 26 is still relevant these days compared to others of better offerings? No. I think the Glock 26 is completely overrated, and all the mother fathers you see putting them up on YouTube in their shorts is always morons using clear ETS mags. So they're putting a 33-round mag into a Glock 26 and talking like they're hot shit. So no, Glock 26 is dead to me. Uh, it's got a terrible grip. Comparative to its size, it's chunky, it's bullshit. In fact, I turned a Glock 26 into a Glock 45 because I hated it so much. Hey, Phil, Andrew was looking for you and he just left. He wants his pie. Uh, get up at 6 o'clock, get in here for a while on Wednesday. You do that, dude. Um, Austin, yep. Uh, AEGs, just go to Fox Airsoft or Evike and you can find them. What optic do I have on my rifle? That particular rifle has a primary arms ACSS Cyclops reticle. It's a fixed four power with an etched reticle. So it's basically like a um, uh, battery powered ACOG. Um, it doesn't use fiber optic for glow, but it, it's battery powered. Tell him I made another pie. I keep telling him you keep making pies and sending them to me and he's getting angry, but he wouldn't give me his Barrett. So fuck that guy. Uh, is 40 s and a good pistol round? It's not a bad pistol round. It's overlooked because 9 is generally cheaper and more widely accepted and used in firearms, and 45 is more powerful. And then, of course, you got 10 mil, which was its parent cartridge. So it's just it's underrated because it doesn't get any real love. There are plenty of guns that still use it, though, including SIG 229s can be chambered in it. Uh, Glock still makes the, the, the 22, which is a very popular gun still in 40 Smith & Wesson. M&Ps can be had in 40 Smith & Wesson SD, V40s, whatever the V2s come in that. How's the eye relief compared to an ACOG on the primary arms? Way better, dude. Way better. It's just a standard. If you were using a magnifier and a, like the Romeo and Juliet where you flip the magnifier over, how your eye relief is fine, same thing with that. Um, I will say the battery life sucks on that one though, but it might be a problem with my optic, but, uh, brand new batteries, I have to change them every few months, uh, because it dies. He does really want the pie. Uh, 40 Smith and Wesson versus 357 SIG. That's a bit, a bit different because, uh, 40 Smith and Wesson is just a cut down 10, but a 357 is a nine millimeter in a 10 millimeter casing. So 357 is going faster than 40 Smith and Wesson, but a 40 Smith and Wesson is a heavier bullet. Uh, all right, I hope I can get in here on Wednesday. I hope you can, too. Uh, 40 was the answer to a question no one ever asked, and it's kind of gone away. Yeah, thank you, Mr. FBI. We want a more powerful round than 9mm and 45, so we want the 10. Oh, wait, none of our people can shoot the 10. Can we have the 40? Oh, now that we have the 40, it's not powerful enough. We don't want this anymore. It, it came around, it stayed popular because it was used in law enforcement and uh, a lot of gigs. It's a perfectly fine round, but it's not a round I go out of my way to buy guns for. I've only got a few. What's your thought on the info active self-protection gives? Active self-protection. Which guy is that? Um... We, every single day we post a real defense encounter caught on camera and perform it after. Uh, pizza delivery guy sends car thief flying. Idiot picks wrong guy to pull a gun on. Um, I mean, it's cool that they're actually examining real life scenarios. Uh, I'd have to watch some of their videos to see if I really agree with what they're saying. Um, but yeah, I mean, it might be something I might have to check out. Random Goose event. Oh, Untitled, how are you doing today, Mr. Untitled? How are you doing? Ho-ya-wa. 
hopefully you're having a great day, Mr. Untitled Goose. Welcome back. Glad you came in. Uh, scruffy looking guy from Arizona. Yeah, he looked a little scruffy. Uh, talk to me, Goose. <laughs> oh, God, that was almost a Seth what is Rogan. <laughs> Would have figured you knew them by heart. Nah, shows a ton of real life events. It's really hard for me to sit and look through a bunch of different people on YouTube, and it's just because of time. I'll spend all my time just watching other people's stuff, and I have that problem with some of what I do, where I just kind of let myself get dragged into things, and I just keep on uh, watching all their shit. Like, even though I've seen most of Donut stuff, like when I see one of his videos come up, I'll just watch 50 of them. Uh, thoughts on 6.5 Grendel? Never shot it. Uh, ASP has very he heavy USCCA bias. Is he sponsored by USCCA? I mean, his videos get a lot of views, so good for him on that. But, um, I mean, actually, he doesn't, considering he's got 3.3 million. Um, but, yeah, uh, if he's sponsored by USCCA, good for him, I guess. Yay, this is the boring time in the hour where I run out of things to talk about. Do I like blingy guns like Black Rambos? Black Rambos? USCCA for when you want to spend money and get nothing in return. No, 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 Haywood. They will defend you until you lose. And then you're fucked. Uh, which pistols have you had seller's remorse on? The only pistols I think I've had that I've regretted selling is my Kimber Aegis Elite Custom. I had the Elite Custom Bobtail 5-inch gun. I had it perfectly tuned. I had the trigger redone. I had it down to like 2.5 pounds. It shot amazing, never jammed. I loved that gun. And I sold it to get a 220 Elite or 220 Legion that had the wrong sights on it, which we wound up finding out was why it was shooting three feet low. But I regretted it because I hated that 220 because I took it out to the range and instantly it was off. I mean, I only paid $600 for a 220 Legion, but still it should have shot like it should have because it was brand new in the box. Never regretted selling a Glock, Justin. Uh, I think Demo Ranch is sponsored by USCCA. I've never seen him say it, Jabbar. So if he is, that would be interesting. Uh, Mag in the AR up there what is it and is it loaded uh no none of these guns are currently loaded that you know of uh no i they're they're all unloaded right now i didn't want to take uh the chance if anybody walked in while i was in the bathroom or something they'd have an unloaded gun uh my bedside guns and stuff are loaded um it's a 556223 then i'll make a video talking a bunch of shit about me nice who will uscca i hope they do bunch of punk ass bitches Dude needs to shave the rest of his head. Uh, you'd be trying to be summoning them Glock tards. Uh, no, we had Glock fanboy. Hey, I love your couch-based reviews. Nice variety of guns. Picked up a Kimber KDS-9C, and it is super nice. I've heard people like that one. I have not picked one up yet. I need to grab one. Uh, you do it for the interaction. I meant what brand of mag... Oh, it's a Magpul Gen 2 or Gen 3. I can't take it out because then I'd be manipulating a firearm, and the stream would end in a hurry. Um, it's either... Uh, I think it's a Gen 2. Do I make videos on Rumble? Most of my stuff gets put up on Rumble, but they have not been pulling all my videos recently. Uh, let's see. I've made 10 cents on there since I started it. Um, bum, bum, bum. Let's see. Yeah, they have not pulled up any of my videos in quite a while, so I need to check my auto settings. Yeah, ever since I did the negligent discharge one. But yeah, I'm on Rumble under the same name, The Jiminy Show. Uh, so hey why handguns over long guns honestly it's just long guns seem like they're a lot more work and I shoot long guns very well um, but they just seem like they're more work they require more stuff in my opinion like I can go out to the range with like that SIG 320 shoot a few hundred rounds have a hell of a time uh, I feel that if every time I take the AR out, it's like I have to shoot it long distance or I'm not getting any fun out of it. Because shooting an AR-15 at 50 yards isn't that fun to me. I like to take them out a few hundred yards 
and uh, Middletown only goes to 200 for private use and it's not long enough. Um, I just don't have anywhere around me that I can shoot long distance. If I had like 150 acres and I had a good spot where I could put like a thousand yard range, I'd probably shoot more long guns, but I just, I just don't have anywhere for, for shooting them. Uh, Odyssey, Odyssey is great for finding files as cool as for a good ass gun shit for printing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, that's my only main reason. And there aren't a whole lot of long guns that really, as you can tell from the, from what I have on the wall there, I prefer a modern aesthetic to my guns. Like my AK-47, my 9mm that I wound up selling, the NAC-9, had all Magpul furniture on it. I'm aesthetically driven in a lot of my guns. If it just looks like dog shit, I just don't like owning it. Like the, like the, uh, Live Free Armory Apollo 11, I will never own one. It may be a great shooting gun. But it looks stupid as hell because they put that one line through the side of the slide. Either they were trying to break it up visually, but they put that line through it, and then they put the extra long cuts that go over the top. That bullshit, I hate that. That's why I will never own a Lone Wolf or uh, the Bull Axe series. Their cuts are stupid. I like minimalist cuts, functional cuts. But to just put stupid cuts all over the slide, I can't stand that. Uh, so they putting on a, a ban on 5.56 or not? No, who said they were going to? Uh, you've got the yardage, but the neighbor's house isn't a good backstop. It is once. Uh, interesting. Okay, I mean, I live in the desert where it's flat for hundreds of miles, but I use your arms for a lot of close range training. Yeah, see, I, I don't ever... And I agree. If you, if you like to do that, uh, that's awesome, but I don't... <sighs> I don't have a need for that. I live where I live. It's going to be all close quarters, uh, three to five to 10 yards. Um, I'm not going to have the time to grab the AR. I keep my 1911 by my bed. So it's the first gun that I pick up. Um, yeah, an AR-15 would be great for home defense, but uh, I don't, you know, I don't really need it. And I keep a shotgun by the bed. So one of those two is going to be my running around. Are any Glock clones any good? Shadow Systems, yes. Shadow Systems, I highly recommend them. And if you want to save a little bit of money on the Shadow Systems, go with the Foundation Series. It's the same gun, same trigger. The only difference is it doesn't have slide cuts and it doesn't have a fluted barrel. But they shoot just as nicely and they are about the same price as an MOS Glock. Uh, what desert? Your Western Mojave. To be fair, most of your combat experience and training is on that platform. Again, see, that's, that's exactly... Um, you definitely, you, you train how you were taught or how you learned or what you actually did. I was trained because I was going to be helping them work at their gun store. So most of my training or practice, depending again, Overton, I don't know why we keep bringing him up. It's because I did it. Shut up. I know I did. But, um, most of my practice has, is always self-defense at short range because I'm in a gun store where it's 20 feet across from one side to the other and about 60 feet from the door to the back door. So you're talking, you know, I'll start at three, I'll go to five, I'll go to seven, I'll go to 10. All that is point shooting stuff. And I need to hit a three foot by two foot without having to think about it. Um, and then I'll move back for fun. But like pistol range, we have a 33 yard box that we have set up for target for steel targets. So I usually shoot from there. Bad slide, slide cuts remind me of Zafardi Prishans. Precision slides. Yeah, go Google the 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 Live Free Armory Apollo 11. Just look at the slide cuts. It makes it look like a gun that was designed in the 80s, and I cannot stand that. Uh, good lineup there, McManus. Yep. Uh, how do you know which public land like Sand Hills are legal for shooting? Mm. Uh, Zaxxon, any customers ND while in your store? No. Uh, I've had plenty of customers assuring me the gun was empty, and then uh, you see a round pop out of the chamber when we rack it. Um, but I, we luckily have not had an ND. There's a pawn shop that's uh, like a 30-minute drive from me. Uh, they had a guy ND right into his own leg with a gun that they had in their counter. Uh, somehow they checked in a gun, put it in their case, priced it, did everything, uh, took it from a customer because it was a pawn and uh, had a live round in it. And the dude indeed into his own, uh, I think into his, his stomach. The guy lived, but yeah, that caused a lot of problems. You live on the land and a lot of it's owned by us. Nice. 85% uh, of the state. Nice. So you're a long gun guy. Nice. Yeah, like I said, if I had a place to use it more, I'd probably get more into it. So. 
why am I not getting my auto syndications? YouTube. Oh, that's why. For some reason, it's turned on or off. What the fuck? That would be one reason why. Oh, they will not link my YouTube anymore. Okay, well, fuck you, Rumble. I'm not uploading manually for 10 cents in a year. Uh, you mentioned Shotgun by the Bed, opinions on Mossberg 590. Can't go wrong. It's a hell of a platform. It's been around for a long time, very reliable, and if you decide to upgrade it, there's tons of things you can do to it. Um, yeah, I've got a 930 Tactical, so it's a semi-auto, but... Um, yeah, I like it. Is the Maverick 88? Yes. The Maverick 88 is probably your go-to budget pump action shotgun. Uh, you can get the Maverick 88 with just the 18 and a half inch barrel, or you can get the security and field, which gives you the two barrels. Um, but you're talking about a hundred and 145, uh, 145 to $180 for a gun. That's basically a 500, uh, with lower end parts in it. How about the Thunder Ranch 590? It's cool. It's overpriced because it has Clint's name on it, but it's not bad. Brothers, you survived round two. Man, she making you make a baby? Is that what you're talking about? Is that why your name's Blue? You popping Viagra tonight? Andrew, yeah. If you scroll up through the chat, dude, Andrew, he's not kidding. Phil was here. Uh, yeah, he told us to tell you that he made another pie. He said it was a damn good pie, too. It was a Barrett quality pie, whatever that means. Barrett quality pie. Ever see the EG240 from Panzer? There's like no reviews. Allegedly has a proprietary gas system. Hold on a second. Let me check it out. EG240 Panzer. Um, I need a close-up of the receiver, but... Patented gas system and tube-fed magazine, semi-auto shotgun, it's a perfect companion, blah, blah, blah. I need to see a serial number because it kind of looks like it's an import. I mean, they're Benelli knockoffs, so more than likely. Panzer Arms. Oh, I can tell you by the... Yep, yeah, no. Uh, hand looms, hunting rifles, blah, blah, blah. His panzer arm stays on the way to being a prob. Da, 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 da. Yep. It's Turknelly stuff. Yep. www.panzerarms.com.tr Turkey. It's Turkish Turknelly shit. It's basically a Benelli clone. Um, bu -bu -bu, sorry. Uh, hella expensive. Yep. A Maverick 88 or slightly used older 870, you can get them around the same price and the finish won't fall off. Nice. What would you consider your top pick for your personal favorite pistol to shoot for shits and grins? Um, my DWX that I sold was my favorite, actually. Um, poor guy had to leave, think it was a stomachache from too much pie. Lol. Is the pi Panzer Chinese? No, it's Turkish. The new ones are hot garbage, though, and I've had to have all three of mine refinished because they rusted sitting in the safe in the desert. Yeah. We had a couple that were on the shelf at the store, and somebody had some, like, sweaty hands, and they, they started rust. Uh, yep, each, each safe has a dehumidifier. Yep, that's the way to go. Um, yeah, Turk Nelly is a Turkish Benelli clone. So even though they say it's, like, a special, their, their own version of a gas system, they're literally just ripping off uh, Benelli. Is Beretta A300 worth the price? Yes, um, I would say it definitely is, um, cause you're talking about Mossberg 930, 940 money. Um, and I'd say it is worth the money. Um, everybody I know that has one likes them. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I tried to connect my rumble account. Poorly ripped off Benelli too. Yeah, most of those Turk Nellies are. Um, there are a couple. I mean, if you're going like slow fire, they they work. But I would not. Again, it's another one of those won't trust my life to it. Um, what do I think of the T sauce is in Ghana sport? It's all Turkish. Thoughts on the Raider S4? It is a Turk Nelly, but it has a way, way higher quality control standard. 
Yeah, I mean, they might have higher quality control standards, and that's good, but the Turkish semi-auto shotguns have all had a lot of the same problems. Stove piping, feeding issues, things like that, because they're trying to imitate Benelli without actually copying them outright. Like, they give a shit because they copy every other gun. Um, but it's just, they're all just slightly off. Uh, bald, how are ya? You said hi, hello, been here for a good time, not for a long time. That's what I tell all my dates. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Better grab the headboard and hang on. Canik is the only Turkish manufacturer you trust to defend yourself. Yeah, and that's because they actually did the right thing and licensed the technology from Walter. I think 99% of those guns are made by like two or three companies, despite the, TA, the, the names and importers. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like... Um, I'm trying to think of another company that did it for a while. But yeah, basically, they're probably all in the same complex. Like, I had a body shop, but I shared a big, giant complex with, like, 50 other body shops. So we were all body shops out of the same thing. So technically, you could think of us as the same con same concern. So a lot of them are built off of the same chassis and things like that. And did I hide your comment about attacking Phil? No, but it probably was auto-hid. Raider is $1,500, but has all the mods people do to M4s. I mean, if it works, great. Have you seen the TP9 SFX limited edition? Which limited edition? Um, Canik does multiple limited editions. Uh, Skin Ken, what's up, dude? How you doing? What's up? What's up? Get in here. Get in here now. Get in here now. We're having fun. We're having fun. We're in here now. Every one of you needs to like this video. There's 99 of you. There's 35 likes. <laughs> There's a disassociation between that number and that number. So get over here, hit the like button so that YouTube will stop shadow banning me. <coughs> and then more of you mother fathers get to watch me cough and hack and not be able to breathe. <coughs> uh, can we get Pylor? Um, yes, uh, in the early 1700s, uh, apples were actually considered poisonous. So old ladies would sneak them into their homes and try to kill their husbands with them. Little did they know it was the extra sugar in the apples, which was then converted into sugars and health being what it was back in the 1700s, uh, men would eat them, develop diabetes and die with swollen feet. So that's your fake lore for the day. Um, the white TP9 SFX, only 7,000 made. Problem is, they do 10 limited editions a year, so they'll build 500,000 guns and then claim that they're all limited edition. It's just an SFX. Do I have a Stealth Arms Platypus? No, I intend to get one, but uh, a couple other guns came up that I'd rather have first. You have a white Canic TP9. Nice. <coughs> where are the white women at? In the kitchen, where they belong. Please, whoever just saw that, try to cancel me. Uh, I, you're going to head out. All right, Clazy Legs. Thank you so much for coming in. <coughs> That's the problem. You got it because it was white, not because it was rare. Yeah, no. Uh, they did the uh, Stormtrooper edition, which was the white and black. Then they did the Miami Day, Miami Night. Recently, I just did a video, and it actually has had a lot of views um, on the Apocalypse version, the one that comes with the fixed blade and the Zippo lighter. Um, that's fine, Skin Kin. Nobody believes me. Um, but yeah, so, uh, they recently did that. It's one of 5,000. Um, but again, they jacked the price up. It took a TP9 or a Meta and jacked it up to 750 buck. Cohen comes in, says, what's up? Yep. Uh, going to his ask and ask him to make him a new one. Good luck getting over the border there. Hey, uh, what are you doing up here? Uh, coming up here? And then you'd be like all like, uh, yeah, the, that guy up there, Phil, said he was going to make me a new pie. I don't know what Vermonters sound like. Uh, rate Vipers from 1 to 10. They're about a 7. They were cooler when they didn't have traction control or windows. Um, actually, no, my favorite would be a 2003, 2004, but with all the upgrades of a uh, newer ACR. So, they're 7, 7.5. Seven when you consider a new Mustang GT is faster than even a second-gen Viper. 
I think that kind of talks for itself. If you're going to bet a long day of playing an instrument tomorrow. Oh, Andrew. I know that's actually your girl telling you to get off. That's fine. It's okay. If you don't have the stones to admit it, we're good. See you later. Hi, people. Oh, my God. Yes. Mr. Rods comes back with the agreement. I appreciate that. Boom, boom, boom. Nope, I don't do Spanish. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Jesus, Zaxxon, you're just trying to mess with him. Watch the new Godzilla movie. It was overrated as crap. Yeah, unfortunately, most of the newer movies that are out there are either super popcorn or super, super sad and uh, super crap. What's my opinion on cryptocurrency? It made me some money, um, but it's it's very volatile, so only get into it if you have money to lose. Uh, don't jump in it if you're trying to like make money, because you ain't gonna. I really want the Noreen Bolt 50 BMG. Well, then get it, bro. KP, time to crash. All right, dude, thank you. Uh, no number 38 super in this chat. Oh, no 38 super. Why not? Uh, wait, he's not here. Nope. Uh, what do I think of it? The Noreen Bolt 50 BMG? I don't really have much of an opinion, because it's a long gun. Um, no, what I feel is that you feel that, uh, you heard me say it, and now you're... Whoop, square. Yay! Woohoo! Take contactless payments. Yay! Uh, what's my favorite suppressor cover? You've got an OCL polonium, and it needs one. Uh, no idea. Just uh, get some car engine exhaust wrap. I don't. I don't. I have a pistol suppressor, and it doesn't need a cover. EDC of choice, 1911. Thank you very much. Just call me the Crypto King. You invested 24 cents in a GameStop in 2018. If you haven't sold yet, you're screwed, bud. Do I like comps on handguns? They're fine. Um, I prefer just to learn how to shoot. Uh, just kidding, Austin. Um, I don't trying to think i've only got like three or four com uh, compensated handguns uh i'm not a good enough shot for it to matter um i don't speed shoot i don't do like competition shooting so it, a comp to me is nothing if i can't handle recoil while shooting for my life then i don't deserve to live uh do 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 speaking of vipers do i own a viper tactical in your collection of weapons no i do not uh, burn proof gear for silencer covers. Chris, those guys are amazing and their customer support is great. There you go, man. Uh, cool guns. Do I use any thermal? Nope, because I'm not a long gun guy. Do you have any other ARs? Yeah, I got a few. Um, nothing fancy. They're all just stock. So that's why that one's up there because that's the one that's been changed the most. Uh, Jesse says, hello there. And I say, hello. Uh, now I'm going to say this once. Go away, ATF. Uh, ATF is always here, man. Uh, best PCC under five to six hundred dollars used Ruger PCC. Um, if you can get them, because some people like to overcharge for them, the Smith and Wesson FPC is a good choice. Uh, Caltech is hard to go wrong with if you just want a simple tube. Um, those are all under six hundred dollars if you can get them at, at the right price. Zaxon, if Phil does show up, tell him he's going. I'm going up there to take his pies. I will let him know if he comes back. Uh, nice guns. But do you have a single shot shotgun? Single shot shotgun. Thoughts on the PSA crank? Uh, I heard it's not as good as people are thinking. Uh, we'll have to see. I've never put my hands on one or even went to SHOT Show. I didn't go to SHOT Show this year, so I have no way of knowing how good they might be. Because I think they displayed them at SHOT Show. Uh, favorite 12-gauge pump? My old Stevens 520 that I wound up selling it with Slam Fire. Um, I have a video on the channel of that. Uh, you see 162 watchers and 35 likes, so you all can go even them out for this man. Yeah, all you, well, there's 41 now. You just need to refresh your page. But all you new people, I'm trying to get unshadow banned by YouTube, so every time you guys hit the like, it shows them that I'm worthy. I'm not asking you to give me money. I'm not asking you to subscribe. Subscribing would be cool, but if you guys could do me a big favor and just make the likes go up just so that YouTube will unshadow ban my ass. I've lost 90% of my views because, you know, advertisers are a bunch of punk-ass bitches. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. what do you want the PCC for? Uh oh, would you put a red dot on a shotgun? Sure, but I would probably do something with uh, do like 
a uh, 507C, which has like the 32 MOA dot, because it's a shotgun. I would go with a large MOA dot. Uh, MOA dot set up like the six mil dot with the uh, or six MOA dot with the thirty two MOA circle, cause then it would just run as uh, reflex. Steven three twenty kicks ass. Yep, YouTube will eternally hate us. YouTube can suck my left nut. Um, they don't like guns. Well, uh, you send me free sites and or staccato because you love me so much. Go sit by your mailbox. We'll see what happens. You have a question for you, my dear friend. What upgrades do you recommend for a stock Gen 5 Glock 17? Uh, throw it away and get something else. Um, it all depends. Honestly, Jesse, uh, if you're going to be carrying it, don't change the trigger. You could always put a different barrel on it. You can put like um, you can polish out the trigger bar to get it a little bit lighter. Polish the inside of the slide so it's a little bit smoother. Um, but if you're looking for, use it uh, as a duty weapon or a carry gun, don't modify it. Just carry it the way it is. They have a slightly better trigger than the Gen 3, Gen 4s. They have a slightly better barrel, supposedly. But change your sights, definitely. Get rid of those plastic sights. Get a good set of night sights. Got your 15-year-old hip fire shotgun. Shotgun and actually hitting stuff actually easier than shoulder fire. A lot of times, yes. My favorite 1911, currently in production, probably a Nighthawk Customs. I, I don't really, 1911s, I like them, I love them, they're my favorite guns. I don't really have to differentiate between makers. If you have a problem with Mr. Joe, please leave a hate comment as it will boost the popularity of the video and help him in the end. Yes, everybody just keep on yelling at me. Sam asks, what's my favorite lever action caliber? 3030. UK sucks for guns. It's very bad for guns. You guys don't even really get guns. You guys... You guys can barely get pellet guns. You can't even get airsoft guns. Or actually, I heard airsoft guns were harder to get than pellet guns, which is freaking retarded. Uh, what is my favorite gun? 1911, the platform, is my favorite platform. I shoot it well. It's very comfortable to shoot. Um, the two that I've been EDCing are right there. So you got uh, this guy, which is a Mitchell Mausers, and that guy, which is a Auto Ordnance 45 GI. I like 1911s. I shoot them well. Have you seen how much quicker the NFA process has gotten? Last month they restructured the process. Your boys at the shop after submitting to the ETF got a guy got his suppressor in 22 hours. Yep, I saw that, Ethan. Down at our shop, a guy got approved in one day. It was pretty cool. Uh, if you're adding a full trust, though, it can take longer. But if you're just uh, just going with the E-form with single, even a single shot trust through Silencer Co., yeah, a couple of days. I've got a few nice ones uh, that you use for ratting. Nice. Uh, what is my favorite AR? Um, not a huge long gun guy. I like my custom build. Um, that one is my favorite AR, and it does the job. So I'm a long, I'm a, I'm a handgun guy, not a long gun guy. I have an AR because you have to have an AR. It's the same reason I got a Glock up there. Because if I didn't, people would bitch at me. Why don't you have a Glock? I have a Glock. Shut up. Uh, red drink. Woohoo! Weedy weedy boo. Although, I have to find the right mount for the AR because I had to take my Surefire off of it. This is my, my normal rifle light. It hasn't had a battery put in it in like two years, and it's still holding on. So I was impressed with that. This is Surefire Scout, um, something or other. That normally sits on the gun, too. Uh, UK only allows 22, and you have to be in a gun club. You have to, it has to be removed from the gun club. You must surrender your firearm, not to mention all the background property and other checks it takes. No, thank you. Our staccato's worth it. No, they are way too much. People thought they were the greatest thing since sliced bread and uh, toilet paper to wipe your shit. And uh, no, they're not worth it. If they were fifteen hundred dollars, sure, three grand. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, what do I think is better, SIG X3, 320X full or Springfield Echelon? Uh, the SIG 320, because I like the trigger better. The Echelon is decent, but I haven't had a lot of time with it. You're still waiting on your suppressor. It just got submitted Friday. You got the Octane 9 2.0. What do I think of that can for your shadow systems? It's a good choice. Uh, that was going to be my second choice if I couldn't get the Osprey 9. Uh, oh, I didn't know we could bitch enough to quit you, guilt you into things. That's powerful information. Who, me? Is that a Rock Island single shot in the corner? No, I don't even remember what brand that is. Um, I think it's a something. Yeah, it's a good one. That's what I'll call it. It's a something. I have no idea. Let's get you away from that. You don't need to see that trash. I just had an extra hook on the wall, and that gun was laying on the floor. 
Uh, favorite World War I weapon? Uh, a Falk Wolf uh, uh, biplane. Um, I don't really have one. I guess 1911. Uh, thoughts on the Steyr AUG? The Steyr AUG has the same problem in the United States as the P90, the MP5, the Chris Vector, and that it needs to be full auto for us to really get the full benefit of what the system actually is. I did that shorts video where I pulled the barrel out and everybody's like, oh, you got other things you can do. It's easier for cleaning. It's all that. It's not what it was designed for, okay? It wasn't designed to make it easier to clean. It was designed because the gun has a high cyclic rate when it's in full auto and the barrels get super hot so you can do that to change it. And then the other turd that said, oh, you can change calibers easily. Fuck you. You know, you, you can go 5.56, five, 2.23 two, and maybe 300 with the same bolt, but otherwise shut the fuck up. What 2011 do I think is the best for the money? Considering that the only company that's allowed to call it a 2011 is uh, Staccato. Uh, by default, they win because they trademarked the name because technically when they were still STI, they, they invented the 2011 name. They invented the three-part frame or the three-part 1911. But in terms of which one do I think is best for the money currently, um, I think that the best way to go would probably be a, a platypus uh, can I grab a pie and name Wednesday Wednesday streams uh, we got I tell you what for Wednesday I'm gonna eat an apple pie during the stream not a big one I'll just get a single one because diabetes but I'll get a small apple pie and then I'll slowly eat it during the, the live stream are Gen 3 Glocks good compared to Gen 4 and 5? You hate Glocks, but that might just be because California only has Gen 3 available. Uh, the Gen 4 is no longer in production because all a Gen 4 is is a Gen 3 with back straps. Uh, Gen 5 is better than Gen 3 because you can get ambi slide locks, uh, bigger mag release, uh, better uh, trigger slightly, and it has front and rear slide durations on many of them. Uh, but the Gen 3 is the only one on the California DOJ roster, and that's why they still produce those ones. Bad weather tonight here in Texas. Oh my gosh, they got one cloud. The AUG is a terrible modern platform. Yep, like you said, unless it's fully auto, you don't get any of the benefit. Has to be a cream pie, though. We'll see. I'll, 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 I'll get a banana cream pie. Any bows? Nope. Uh, any thoughts on a Tavor X95? Uh, CA, I have massive nerve damage, and uh, I can't feel my hands 90% of the time, So, and my muscles are always twitching, so bows are out for me. Thoughts on the Tavor X95? It's fine. I've played with them in the store a little bit. Who am I going to vote for? A bowl of Captain Crunch. Um, my political views don't matter to you. You built out a platypus on their site, and it's just a little under 2K. Should I just take the leap into staccatos? Nope. Because 2K for a two-pound trigger, threaded barrel, flat face, fully custom, optics cut with better sights than the stock ones. No, you're still, you're going to be 1,500 to 1,700 less than the stupid staccato. And the staccato mags are like 60 bucks a piece, whereas the platypus takes Glock mags. No, just buy the, the platypus, dude. Waiting on the Gen 6 Glock when they stopped looking like bricks. Got a little bit of a disappointment for you, Haywood. They buried the uh, Gen 6 with uh, Gaston. Uh, as far as I know, they're never going to produce another variant. Which is a lie, but it's probably true. Uh, no crossbows. Uh, K1A1. What's a K1A1? Favorite World War II gun. 1911. You're not going to change me. I'm going to go all the way up through to 1983. 1911. Um, I wasn't alive and I don't care about World War II. Sorry. Just got a two in EA Windicator. Oh, two inch EA Windicator. What do I think? Uh, they're fine. Um, I like them. I've got one with 8,000 rounds. It's a six inch, but I've got a, um, uh, it's got 8,000 rounds and it's still timed. So I was impressed with that. It's obviously been taken care of, but it's never been like disassembled and it works fine. Uh, Chris, you're very welcome. Uh, CA, did I serve? No, I did not. I was physically precluded from it. Too many physical injuries, so I was not able to serve. Uh, I tried, but uh, I turned 18 in uh, 1997 during the drawdown in military power. So that was one of the biggest times where they were giving guys like 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars to retire early. So I'd be okay with ending after Gen 5, lol. Gen 5? Is that what's underneath the heart? Sorry. Yep. 
yeah, there's no reason for them to change it because their 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 guns haven't changed. Oh, we have a smaller recoil spring. Oh, we put a metal one in. Oh, we have a different size for the front recoil spring, so it looks a little bit aesthetically pleasing. Oh, we rounded off the edge of the front of the slide. Oh, holy shit! Suppressor suggestions for two AR 1500s, 10 or AR 15s, 10.5 and 18 inch barrels. All just depends on what length you want. You just got to make sure you get them for the pressure rating. Um, you, it's hard to go wrong with like a 36M with the with the 22 caliber end caps on them. Those are nice. If you get the hybrid, you can make them shorter or longer. The Yankee Hill R9 is a good choice. It's a 308 rated suppressor that's only five inches long. Um, the length of the barrel really doesn't matter with the suppressor. It all just depends on what you want your overall length to be. That's why I would get like a 36M hybrid because you can shorten it or lengthen it. Uh, it's your first stream, been a good stream. You're looking forward to the next one. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for coming along. Uh, six hours, seven one six or five one six. Uh, what's the difference? I don't know. Uh, what do you want the silencer to do? If you can only have three firearms, it would be a 1911, um, probably the Sig 226 behind me, and an AR-15. Crazy legs hath returned. Nice. Um. Dude, thank you so much for telling me about the platypus. My wallet hates you, but I love you. Dude, comparatively, you can get a platypus for the same price as that, and you can get it fully customized. For an extra 100 bucks, you can make your own goddamn serial number. My buddy's thinking about getting one for his daughter, and he's going to put her birth date on it. I thought that was pretty cool. Dad built an AR-5-7 last week. Expensive as hell, but cool. Nice. Thoughts on Gerson Witness, specifically 6-inch six mil six 10 millimeter. Uh, the overall feel of the Gersons is a little bit cheap in my opinion, so I really, I don't know if I would highly recommend it. I picked one up and then I gave it back to the store to sell before doing the paperwork because it felt a little cheap. I didn't like the trigger, um, so I don't know what my feelings would be on the 10 millimeter 6 inch version. Um, I'd say wait and get the T-Sauce if they do a 6 inch 10 mil. How do I feel about dovetail mounts for red dots? Um... I've used them. There's always a possibility that you can lose zero more easily on those because they basically use a set screw to lock them down. So use red Loctite uh, when you're putting them into the dovetail because they're always going to move much more readily because, yeah, the, the red dots locked onto the dovetail mount, but the dovetail mount is inside just the dovetail. There's a reason why uh, the dovetail mounts or dovetailed sights are only as only basically as wide as the dovetail unless you have something like an LPA site but then they have a dovetail that's like almost a half an inch long is for stability reasons uh, they can lose zero a little bit uh, easier the P90 mags are fragile though um, yeah but you can get the Caltech version I think they sell the mags they're pretty cheap is it the one that takes the P90 mags 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 my answer was questioned yep uh, and have MG42. No, thank you. We tried running a dovetail MR, RMR mount on your SPL1, and no one could uh, verify, uh, could make it stay on. So I did the exact same thing. I wound up selling an SPL1 to one of my buddies uh, with a red dot already on it, just because he wanted it. And uh, I was able to get it stay on because I, I, I mixed red and blue and made purple Loctite, um, and it stayed on. Glock 45 or Glock 43, which do you think would be better for EDC? Well, the Glock 43 is much smaller. The Glock 45 has a Glock 17 size grip on it, and when you run with the Glock 45, then you're going to be printing a lot more. The Glock 45 has a Glock 19 slide with a Glock 17 frame, so it's going to print a lot more. You can get the Glock 43 and get the, um, the, the, the not the Platypus guys, but Stealth Arms makes a 10-round mag for the 43. Uh, are you... AR-57 ejects through the mag wells and top feeds P90 mags. Gotcha. Uh, green Loctite will never come out. Eh. Jesse, it was nice watching you, bro. Have a really good rest of the night, and I hope that tomorrow will be awesome for you. Same to you, bud. Thank you so much. If that was his question. Yes, that was the question that Crazy Lake started answering, asking, but he just wanted to know if it was the one that used the PS90 mags. Whew. Man. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little bit tired. Uh, later, Jesse. Thank you for coming in, dude. If you happen to come back on Wednesday or Friday, we'll, we'll still have some fun. Uh, you know your stuff. I try to a little bit. And when I don't, I'll look them up. So there's a Massachusetts-compliant PS90 
only 10 rounds nice for 1900 bucks i'd love to see the trigger pull on that thing 10 rounds of 57 i don't know if i would even want to own something like that i don't know i think haywood is actually chained down in the state of massachusetts green loctite is for engine cylinder sleeves yeah, that would do it Hey, working. Yeah, see y'all Friday. All right, homie. It was good chatting with you. My eyes are going cross-eyed from reading. I read a lot more when I do these because you people have to type things. Enjoy my knowledge. That's right. Enjoy the knowledge that I have thrust into you. With your consent, of course. I thrust into you hard all the knowledge that contained this. My pullout game is weak, but mainly because I like to. Dale, Rossetti is checking in. Thank you so much for coming in and thumbing up the vidya. Not begging or anything, but if you're ever low on mods, they're available pretty much every stream. You know what? Um, I'm going to give you a shot because one of the other guys has stepped down. I'm leaving him as a mod, but he's got some uh, some work that he's doing. So I'm going to give you a, a, a chance, Skin Ken. Uh, just keep it chill. Don't go crazy with your powers. Um, just be good. Best 1911 magazines. Wilson Combat. Wilson Combat. Uh, next would be Chip Mac. Chip McCormick's. But Wilson Combat's are the way I'd go. Ed Brown's are okay, but I like Wilson Combat's. Uh, consent not needed. Oh, no, no. Every time I fill somebody up, I get their consent first. By logging in here, you consented. Uh, did it, did, did, no diddy. Exactly. Okay, you gotta go now. It was nice watching you, by the way. You're from India. Well, thank you for coming in, Sharma. Appreciate that. Uh, what's up? What's up? So you're like the couch I don't pull out? How do you know my couch doesn't pull out? No, I'm like my couch where if you lift up my cushions, there's guns. Uh, it makes everything I say less funny if I'm a mod, though. No, no. I've, I've had some crazy mods. Uh, Legendary 47D. Nice. Just chillin'. Uh, diddy done diddy did it. Diddy diddy did it. Diddy done did it. Diddy diddy did it. I can't read that. It makes my brain stop. And I want to go and do a tune. Dun dun diddy diddy dun dun diddy 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 dun dun diddy 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 do it. Thanks for all the info and responses. You gotta go, but you'll try to come back later this week. Absolutely, my dude. Having a lot of fun. There's a lot of people walking above me, apparently. Uh, there's some friends and family visiting, so. Walkies and talkies. Walkies and talkies and peoples and stuff. Nah, we mods aren't normal. Dude, Andrew went on a pie rant one time. If you lift up my cousins, you might find guns, was my first thought. You're weird. You got a nifty little wrench by your name now. There you go. Cautions. That's what they call it when they do the casting couch and you're related. Cautions. The wrench means you're broken. Uh, that would be funny. I wish I could figure out how to make the wrench yellow so it looks like service now. Uh, favorite silencer QD mount. Um, I don't do long guns, so I don't really have a favorite. I guess a trilug would be my, my go-to, though, because there's a lot more of those. Microwave mayo pie. Shut your keyboard, Justin. See, that's what I was talking about. Uh, skin Ken, you know that. Can't believe Andrew got excited when he thought Phil was back. Walls. You're such a mean guy, Zaxxon. I am very broken. Thank you for noticing. Yeah. I started with only half my red drink, so I'm trying to be conslated. Shite. I didn't take my, my daily pills, though. Hold on a second. The Jiminy Show only condones medical use of pills and things that are prescribed to you by a doctor and things that help you continue living your life in a way that is productive. Zaxxon has to take off? Oh man, not a big enough wrench to fix some of us. <sighs> My daily pills sound like I'm gargling or trying to eat a bunch of Skittles. Ah, that hit the spot. I wonder how many calories there are in, uh, like, aspirin. Percos, right? I wish. Uh, opioids do nothing to me. So they aren't hallucinogenic? 
I don't know. They might be. Oh, crazy lucid dream. I love, I lucid dream like a mother father. Um, so I woke myself up because I can't, I can't throw fast punches in my dreams. Uh, my punches are very slow in the dreams, but they are always effective. Um, but I was fighting Anthony Starr. He plays Homelander. Uh, but he was wearing regular clothes and we we're fighting outside of a bar and I was punching him with pickles in my fist. And he kept saying they weren't working, but his eyes were like swelling up and stuff. Cause apparently in my dream, Anthony Starr is allergic to pickles. Uh, so it was a, it was an interesting dream. And I woke up at the end of it cause he kept saying they weren't working. Anyways, it's funny. Uh, skip the wrench and go straight for the hammer. Oh, you mean the band hammer? Don't forget, I'll also time out my own mods. I ain't afraid of you, motherfuckers. Peel off the duct tape first. There's no problem that zip ties, self tappers, and duct tape can't fix. Also, what is that on top of my safe? Anyways, pry bar. I don't like pry bars. I'm I don't drink, so I don't I don't like anything that's a bar. Maybe because you were using the pickles incorrectly. I don't know. Uh, every now and then, so I lucid dream, and I know I'm in the dream, and something always happens. I think it was because I couldn't throw a punch. I also can't run in my dreams, and it's not because I don't have feet, so fuck all of you that were about to think that. Uh, no, I can't run in my dreams because no matter how hard I try to run fast, I can't run fast. I can walk normally, but if I try to run, I just lean forward, and I don't go anywhere. It's really weird. <laughs> Uh, Self-tappers don't work on wood. Self-tappers work on everything. You shut the heck your keyboard, my friend. You fart a lot in your dreams. It always gives away your location to any nightmares, beasts, your sleeping mind conjures. I need to get some JD Weld to fix my, uh, my 1911. Somebody, uh, you guys have seen it in the shorts. Somebody drilled through the top of a GI 1911 to put a Glock sight in it, and it's loose. Oh, hey, Roy, what's up, dude? Actually, I was hoping you were coming in today. It's shipping out in the morning. They didn't come and pick it up yesterday, um, so it'll be shipping out tomorrow. Uh, you haven't tried hard enough. If you try hard enough, anything works on anything. Um, but yeah, Roy, congratulations. Um, but yeah, I will be definitely doing that. I just, it, they didn't come and pick it up today, so I got to physically walk it down to the post office. Make a video of the 1911 JB Weld. You know, they would probably, like, remove that video because it violates modification terms or some stupid shit. Uh, that somebody was you. They're going to go nuts. Yeah, pretty much. I could list, if I don't monetize it, and I list it as member only, they would probably let me do it that way. But they, they will more than likely do that. Who drilled through the slide of a 1911? Well, here's the deal. It's the... So it's an auto ordnance straight up GI, right? But it's got a Wilson Combat extended slide lock, uh, Wilson Combat mag release, and it's got Glock tritium night sights on it. But the standard GI has that welded on blade front sight. It's not dovetailed in. So what he did was he drilled straight down through where that front sight was and then screwed it in, but it's loose. It can go, it moves. So I'm going to JB weld it in place and finish it. Uh, it was for clout. Nice. It was it was to hide the pennies in. They're not loafers, Justin. Justin, I think you need to open a window. You might be suffering from CO2 or nitrous oxide or uh, carbon dioxide poisoning. Who's going to carry the boats? I think everybody, everybody, everybody go to your window, open it, and take a deep breath. I think you guys are all getting a, a, a carbon dioxide poisoning. Gross. Yeah, but you know what? It kind of looks fun. And it changed the look of the gun. That's why it's got those green grips on it. Those aren't zombie grips. Those are stoner grips. In fact, here. You know what? I've been holding you guys way back. So I'll show you different stuff. Like, so you've got, you can see how heavily used the CZ is. You can see all the scratches up underneath it. But, yeah. So if you look at the top there, you can see how badly the sight is on there. Yeah, it's not even fit in there all the way right. And there's a shitty Glock. Yay. Glock parts on a 1911 hurts my soul. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to deal with, but I did have an ATI Moxie 45. Uh, ATI's polymer framed one, and uh, that had Glock sights on it too. This is what happens when the chat slows down. The mods come out to play pretty much. 
Maybe running a generator in your room with sealed windows wasn't a good idea. Nice. Someone can be... Oh, yeah, dude. The the mags, they're all chipped up and stuff. I got to get some new stuff. Um, small... Uh, FBI. Uh oh shit. Three letters are in here. Uh, thoughts on the Smith & Wesson FCP. You mean the FPC? Uh, the folding pistol caliber is a fine gun. It just has a shit body on it. I don't like it that it's all polymer. Also, I'm kind of angry at this Smith & Wesson, although I should just be angry at my idiot friend. Ex-friend. He's not a friend anymore. But dumbass, um, uh, mag dumped... A, the FPC with that Osprey suppressor on it, but it had the Nielsen device in it, not the fixed piston adapter, and he bent it and baffle struck that suppressor. Yeah, thankfully, Silencer Co. repaired it for free under warranty, um, but yeah, it, 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 so I'm a little biased against the FPC just because it tried to break my $1,000 suppressor. Um, don't say anything. Do I like, still like the Moxie? It was fine. I modified it. I cut the finger grooves off and stuff, and I modified it myself, but I sold it. Uh, are they real? Oh, yeah, Ryan, they're real. No, I cannot grab one. If I pick one up, the live stream ends immediately. Uh, read my last chat. Uh, let's see. Putting a little perfection on that dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, Baron, uh, Allosaur? Uh, dinosaur? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Putting a little perfection on the dinosaur. Okay, I get it now because it's Glock sights on a 1911. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, but screw you. Uh, proper use of money. Yeah, pretty much. I do not have SBRs in my back pocket. <coughs> What's the point of PCCs? They have all the downside of both handguns and rifles. Pretty much. Um, although I understand it for a truck gun. Like, I kept the AR-9... Uh, or, excuse me, the AK-9 in my truck. Now I just have a short barrel, not a short barrel, it's a pistol, uh, AR-15. If I pick anything up, dude, it'll go away. Um, I know, right? Preferred pizza topping, pineapple. Fight me. Uh, you have SBRs in your back pocket, maybe you're doing SBRs wrong. I have so many SBRs that they look like rifles. I cut down all my 16 inches to 15.99 inches just to see if the government's actually paying attention. 300 blackout for a truck gun. Yeah, I'm doing a build, so um, I have to pick you up again, and I apologize greatly because you're going to be wobbly as shit because I'm wobbly as shit. But you see that upper there, how it's a giant round handguard? I'm actually, I have another handguard exactly the same from Unique ARs, and it's a We the People. And it absolutely perfectly fits a hybrid 36M. So I'm doing a seven and a half inch 300 blackout with a 300 or 36M hybrid with the baffle removed. And it's going to stick out an inch and a half from the end of a 15 inch handguard. So that's going to be my truck gun. The suppressed 300 blackout with a uh, SBR. So it's going to be like my own honey badger. Uh... Maybe the damn ATF is doing SBRs wrong. The ATF just wants money. Uh, you want an FPC because you're in apartments in a rough area. Most likely threats are junkies, and I want to avoid hurting the old lady across the hall if shit hits the fan. I get that, but just get good hollow points. I uh, saw a toy chat shut down for an action figure holding a bang bang. Yeah, pretty much. I'm probably like pushing it by holding the camera up to there. Ooh, being picked up tickled more than I thought it would. Nice. I must have grabbed you in the right spot. Redneck, what's good, man? Had to dip for a bit. Sorry about that. Holy shit. Welcome back. What's the best cheap AR? Crazy Legs has it right. The best one you're going to get is one you build yourself. However, if you need one that's already pre-built, get a Radical Firearms or a Diamondback. They're both around 500 bucks. They're mill spec, uh, so they take pretty much all parts. They're not commercial, um, which is a stupid thing to put, but they're two different types of guns. Uh, basically, two different types of uh, designs. Um... But yeah, either Radical or a Diamondback. They're both around 500 bucks. You like Bear Creek Arsenals, but don't have enough experience with them to determine what they will do. Bear Creek Arsenal is very cheap, very inexpensive. They're fine for plinking. I just don't know if I would trust one with my life. Like, that upper is $1,500, and I've shot it, and it runs flawless. I would trust my life to that one. Um, my I had a Bear Creek side charging 7.62, and it had a failure rate of probably three every 100 rounds. And I would not trust my life to it. When you change a handguard, you're going to have AR part. You don't want to have it laying around, turns it into a build. Dibs. 
Hold on, you mean, uh, hold on a second. You just saw my sweatpants covered crotch, but you'll be fine, kids. Uh, I'm coming, don't worry. I mean, I will be coming. I mean, I'm coming, I mean, around the mountain when she, uh, so this is the upper they sent me just to see if I could damage it, but I'm not going to. Uh, so I'm going to be running this one. So it's a full 15 inch handguard. It's going to get a seven and a half inch barrel with an eight inch suppressor out of it. So that'll be cool. I thank them a lot for sending me this when they first sent it to me. Good people. Polymer lowers make me six. Yep. Uh, you didn't have his consent though. Nice. That thing is so sweet. Thank you. Nice thingy. Ooh, you saw my thingy. Uh, well, it's polymer, so much better and lighter. You don't need that flood metal. Who said polymer? Nobody do polymer. None of my shit's polymer. Who said polymer? Oh, shite, an acorn just fell on your car. You gotta go handle it. Jesus Christ. I'm hit! I'm hit! Roll, 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 roll! Tuck and roll! Uh, they sent you something to destroy, but instead you're just going to run it? Legend. Well, I'm going to throw it off the hill at the range, but... You know, we the people is so sick, though. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I'm laughing with you. Lols. Nice. Uh, Bear Creek lowers. Oh, I've never messed with the Bear Creek lower. I've only messed with their uppers. Rimac. Are they not poly? I don't know. I've never messed with the Bear Creek lower. You like that, actually. Mine is 8-inch with a 7.5-inch BCM handguard and a direct thread Banish 30. Yeah, there you go. Um, back before Texas Silencer Shop went out of business, I was going to run their Titanium 30, 30 uh, cal can because it fit perfectly. Um, but, yeah, they went out of business because, you know, they were giving away too many of their freaking suppressors. But, yeah, I need to pick another suppressor. Uh, like I said, the 36M will fit just inside of the suppressor, inside of the, the, the handguard. Um... And I've been meaning to get uh, both the handguards Cerakoted in custom colors. I have sad news. I had to sell my pistol to repair my car. Oh, I'm so sorry, dude. That sucks, Elf. What manufacturer made that AR in your wall? Uh, it's a custom build made out of many different parts. Um, it's my favorite self-defense gun. 1911s. Uh, thinking of the uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 5.7, any experience? Just from handling it, um, I've got the Rock 5.7 up there, but I've never spent any real time with the Smith & Wesson. I need to. Um, I'll be getting to that probably here in this year soon. Uh, you're allowed to make your own suppressor if you pay $400 for a Form 1 and a Form 4, right? Uh, yes. Suppressors have artificially inflated prices. Um, kind of, I agree, but you got to remember they're more expensive because they sell way less. The more you sell of something, the lower you can make the price. Now, the problem is because there's a $200 tax stamp involved, let's say that uh, if there wasn't a $200 tax stamp in an up to one year wait, you could sell a million suppressors. Those suppressors would be $300. But since you have all these wait times and not that many people use them, and quite frankly, for 90% of the public, suppressors are useless or stupid. You should have known one unless you have a dedicated purpose for it. You live in a city bad enough that you need to actually have a suppressor on your home defense gun. That's an edge case, but hunters for sure. But because they're, they have a limited audience for what they're producing, the cost is much higher. The cost to produce the suppressor is much higher because they're not selling nearly as many. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Uh, you wouldn't recommend the Banish. You run the 300 Blackout under night vision and the Banish you got from your dad. You're going to destroy it soon because it's not rated for that. And I'm burning out the baffles. Gotcha. Plum Crazy AR-15 looks pretty promising. I'll throw a cheap Anderson lowers on it and call it good. Nice. Still disagree on suppressors. Like I said, McManus, you, you have training in it. 90% of the public doesn't have a need for a suppressor. Um, and quite honestly, I'd be afraid if everybody had suppressors.
just tap and weld on an oil filter and to your boom boom stick and don't tell nobody. That's called bad advice. Just because there's a wrench next to his name doesn't mean I endorse his comments. Um... Do I like the M&P 1522? Yeah, they're good for what they are, although I'd go with a Hammerly. I think Hammerleys look better and they function better. 90% uh, of the public doesn't have training on the Glocks they're building either, though. Exactly. Um, I, I respect their right to own them, but I don't think they need them. Um, suppressors, the only reason I have a suppressor or I'm getting more suppressors is just because I like them. Um, if you can't afford it, don't get one. That's the other thing I say. If you think that they're overpriced, then... You probably don't need one. IWI Zion versus Smith Springfield St. Victor. I'd go with the Zion over the St. Victor personally. Uh, is a GMC 2500 HD better than a 3500? It all depends on what you're using it for, dude. Uh, Patrick, if you're not hauling things around all day long, heavy loads, then 2500 is better than a 3500 because a one ton is sprung way stiffer than, a two, than even a three quarter ton. Favorite 22, don't have one. Uh, Sig P322, how about that? Um, oh, you said boom boom stick, nice. Uh, damn, nice AR, thank you. What red dot is on the tan Sig? That's a Leupold Delta Point Pro. Uh, this one has a Romeo 1 Pro. Suppressor, save your ears. Wish we were all able to get them. Only if you fire the right ammo. If you're firing 115 grain 9 mil out of a suppressor, you're still getting a supersonic crack. Oh, if you can't afford it, don't get anything. Yep, pretty much. Get the 2500 with an Allison. That yeah, makes sense. Uh, suppressors are only good for actual stealth. Uh, so the only caliber that really works is 22 subsonic. 300 is really... 22 is really... Redneck, I'm going to disagree with you on that one. 147 grain, 9 millimeter through that Osprey. All you hear is the action of the gun in the round hitting the target. You actually don't hear any gas escaping. Um, what's my strongest pistol? Well, I sold my 50 cal, and I don't really, I mean, I've got just 45s and 9s and shit, so. 5.9 Cummins or 7.3 Power Stroke? 5.9 Cummins if it's a 12 valve. Uh, 7.3 Power Stroke, uh, otherwise. If it's a 12 valve 5.9s, then I'm down, because that's got the mechanical fuel injection. Um, way better than the, the later 24 valve. It's night. You're half asleep. A couple robbers break in with guns. You grab your shotgun and 9mm. Gunfire ensues. How can anyone hear anything after a firefight? Won't that gunfire kill your ears? Common misconception, Roy. Adrenaline makes the ear sphincters, and yes, they're called sphincters. It'll basically cause your ear canals, your adrenaline and stuff will be pumping so hard that your, your brain will just instantly shut off your hearing after the first shot goes off. Uh, para ordnance P45 or a River P89. Never heard of a P8, River P89. Are you talking about the Ruger? No, I'll take the para ordnance every day. You wouldn't recommend a suppressor for home defense. The first shot is going to blind and deafen you. It, if you're in a gunfight in your house, I don't think that you're going to be as concerned as you think you're going to be. Instant, in the moment actions. Overton says the same thing, and I agree with him. Instant, in-the-moment actions, you're just going to be pulling the trigger, especially if you don't have training. Like, I'm sure guys like um, uh, McManus, who has trained for it, is going to be much more prepared for a flash and things like that. But as a civilian, the minute you pull your freaking trigger, you're, you're going to be blind and deaf regardless because you don't know what the hell you're doing. You want to see some Daniels and Noveskis. Oh, wrong channel for that. I don't buy into that bougie bullshit, he says with... $11,000 in guns behind him. Would a suppressor work on a black powder pistol? Probably. Uh, how can I paint my pistol slide for an excellent camo style? Uh, just go ham, dude. Personalize it. Uh, but how big is the Osprey compared to the size of a 22 suppressor to the same effect? Uh, the Osprey is longer than like a 22 switchback, I'll tell you that for sure. But it's not bad. It only weighs 7 ounces, something like that. Lower decibels, thus saving handy, at least decreasing the pressure where you mentioned for hunters who are using supersonic most of the time. Uh, no, that's not true, Bryant. Uh, most hunters do not use supersonic rounds with a suppressor. Most people that buy suppressors know that you need super uh, subsonic rounds to make them function correctly. 300 blackout, 220 grain through a suppressor is very quiet. Yeah, yeah it's hard to suppress 5.56, five, but most dudes don't hunt with a 5.56. Five, so your statement sounds like you're making sense, but it's not. 
lowering the decibels is not the reason for a suppressor. A suppressor is to hide your position, also to not give away your position to, say, hogs, things like that. You get more shots off if you have a suppressor. So, sorry, your argument is not valid. Uh, Cummins versus V8 Power Stroke. Yep, 2011 or 1911s. Um, it all depends. They're the same basic platform. You can get a high capacity 1911s too. What model CG is the one with the orange handles? That is a tactical sport orange Gen 1, uh, 9 mil. They also increase muzzle velocity usually and reduce muscle flash. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, they're designed to hide your position, hide your location. They're not just designed to lower your, your noise. Is a Ruger GP100 a good revolver? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It has a better trigger than the Colt Python in my opinion. Uh, SD9 or Glock 17. I'll take the Gen 2 Glock 17, or uh, SD9, excuse me, over a Glock 17. You hunt with the 556. That's cool. It's not legal here in Virginia, but that's cool. Isn't the only way to hand load subsonic is to use less powder? Um, that I don't know, but your, your bullet weight is the most important factor. 115 grain 9mm is not subsonic. 147 grain is very subsonic. Uh, buying a 22 will be only one for a small game and prep shite model of Ruger suggests i could not understand that buying a 22 it will be only one for small game and preps shite model of ruger suggests 1022 how many guns do i have i have no idea um i've got a bunch when in combat you shoot at muzzle flashes suppressors are good at hiding that yep you got your second suppressor in two days yeah that that e-file stuff is working now uh walter pdp versus the 320 i like the 320s uh uh, bore axis better. The PDP has a tall bore axis on it. It also just looks stupid. Uh, the, the slide is super tall on the Walter PDP. You have to have at least a 5-inch barrel to make it look like a normal gun, in my opinion. Uh, although I love the trigger better in the PDP. Uh, 6.7 Power Stroke or 6.7 Dually? That made no difference. That's why you retracted it. Got it. Thank you for taking your time to answer all the questions. No problem, dude. I try to answer them all. Patrick, thumb down my response. Oh, well. Uh, Arrow EPC-9 or CZ Scorpion for a PCC? Uh, I'm going to go with the EPC-9 because the Scorpion uses proprietary mags. Uh, that does make sense. Thank you, Redneck. Um, pum, 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 pum. Yeah, that's why a 45 caliber 230 grain bullet is naturally subsonic. Unless you're, like, hot-loading it. Any on the Canic TTI Combat? Um, I already went through this earlier. I'll go over it again because uh, I don't mind saying it. Uh, it's an overrated piece of shit. Uh, you're paying $1,000 for a $500 gun because it says Terran Tactical on it. If you want to throw away your money, buy a Terran Tactical Canic because he literally does not build the gun. He put his name on it. He licensed his name and gave him, oh, here, put a compensator on it and this weight spring in it. And then call it my gun. Canic builds that gun. Terran Tactical doesn't. Terran Tactical builds his Combat Masters, builds the Pit Vipers. He does not touch the Canic TTI. So you're paying $1,000 for a $500 gun because you bought a name. You're probably wearing Nikes and a Supreme shirt instead of one of the Jiminy Show shirts. So, yeah, if you buy a Canic TTI, you are just wasting your money. Crazy Legs, thanks for coming and hanging out, dude. Appreciate that. 6.7 Cummins or 6.7 Power Stroke? There is no... What? 6.7 Cummins. Suppressors do have their use, but uh, not how Paul is thinking. Yeah, pretty much. Here in Connecticut, you have to get a cam lock, then $200 for governor, then silencer itself. Labor to have shot, pin, and well cam lock on over $1,000. Easy, too rich for the poor boy. Yeah, I can understand that. Magpul makes mags for the CD. I did not know that. I didn't pay any attention to that. So, I mean, that makes it a little bit better. If you can get them cheap uh, uh, mags from Magpul that are like under 30 bucks, then I would go with the Scorpion first. Most hunting rounds are mainly, mainly supersonic, brother. When people hunt, they don't wear ear protection suppressors so unless the theoretical damage suppressors are not just to silence. See, you're you're completely backing your own logic into a corner, bro. You don't understand what you're talking about. Shooting a supersonic round out of a suppressor does not suppress the supersonic crack. People that run suppressors, which you obviously don't, people that run suppressors buy subsonic ammo. There's plenty of subsonic 308, 3, you know, whatever you're going to be shooting. So 
the fact is you're you're trying to make an argument and you don't understand what you're saying. So thank you. You can keep commenting. I'm done reading your posts. Can you give me your 1911 in the bottom right? Nope. Uh, how much to put Jiminy on your meta SFT? $10,000. Like you're not getting in military style engagements, even in home defense in a few rounds here and there. We are civilians. No one has a logistics for whatever. Shit hits the fan. You're not thinking it's right. Yeah, no, the average self-defense shooting even in the home is three to five rounds. So three to five rounds is your average home defense shooting and civilian shooting and the seven yard bullshit, 21 feet bullshit rule. None of that applies. Vester t-shirt, t-shirt man. I like a Mia t-shirt. Uh, I got a rugged obsidian suppressor for your FN 510. It makes it sound like an old toy cap gun. That's cool. Try to get my goat. You're not going to get my goat. If you don't understand what you're talking about, you're going to get shut down in the, in the comments. That's just the way it goes. Uh, like you said, suppressors have their use, but the average civilian doesn't need them. Pretty much. Um, a crocodile that does uh, investigators. Get it? Invest anyway. Uh, like I said, they're used for concealing your position. Yeah. You run suppressor out of six dasher makes it more quiet for me, but not for the range and a little too loud for non-protection. Out of a six dasher makes it more quiet for you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to the people that think it's just for hearing protection, you don't understand what a suppressor's for then. Good job, you watched fucking nothing fancy or one of these other morons that doesn't know what they're talking about. I was in the military. Doesn't mean you know shit. You know how many dudes I see come in that are in the military and they don't even know what a fucking M17 is? Dudes that are supposedly issued that gun that don't know what that gun is? Just because you served in the military or in the police doesn't mean I'm going to trust you with what you're saying. Get out of here. <sighs> For an elk hunt, what would be your preferred caliber? I've never hunted elk, but I would assume something big. 300 Wind Mag, maybe? That'll do it. Uh, best round for elk. Uh, top five ran, uh, calibers for elk, according to uh, hunting. Peterson's hunting. Uh, they are saying um, 30 out 6, 28 Nosler, 300 PRC, 4570, or 338 Winchester Magnum. That's a hunting website. I love them. Are you talking about me? No. The only way suppressors make sense is if you're in stealth situations and, like Joe said, concealing your positions indoors, your position is compromised anyways. It's meant for outdoor stealth. A lot of people go into the military for the look of it and never deploy just because you're a vet doesn't mean you're a combat vet, pretty much. Uh, and shit, I don't even remember what handgun we had in the Navy. Stupid shit doesn't stay in, bearing, in the brain. How hard was it to get a suppressor? It's way easier now. Um, you have to fill out just an e-file form. When I did it, they were still processing them by hand. Um, but you have to pass an enhanced background check. And unlike your state laws, if you've ever had your rights restored, you cannot get a federally controlled item. Um, if you're in state like Texas, I think you still can but you can't get a class three item outside of your state. I don't even know if you can get one in your state. Actually, I know a felon that had his rights restored and he can't get suppressors and all his was, was for embezzlement. So, you know, uh, that's the most uh, democratic shit ever. You use a suppressor because you have kids because your adrenaline is going, sure, I might not get do go deaf, your kids will. Uh, that's one use for a silencer. It's not the only use for a silencer. Uh, yeah, and again, I agree. It's not the only use for a suppressor or a silencer. I'm just saying that what the other guy was saying, you fire supersonic rounds out of a suppressor, you're going to get a supersonic crack. There's no way to stop that. Uh, they have guns in the Navy. Um, yeah, it's because when the boat goes down, they can just do themselves. Uh, my aunt's friend used to brag that she did it for the uniforms. Nice. 
Uh, did a suppressor serve no use for the average citizen? I'm not saying you shouldn't own one, uh, but logically folks don't even use subsonic ammo with it. A lot of it use it just for the tactical look. Yeah, and I, again, again, if you live your life expecting to have a gunfight in your house, um, you either live in a really bad area or you're just a shit person. Um, being prepared is different from planning out so far as to get a suppressor just because you might have to use it in your house. I have never once had that thought run through my head. I've never thought, man, I should definitely keep this threaded onto my home protection gun, not have a loud boom when I'm engaging into a gun battle in my house. So in my opinion, that's just kind of it. it if you want a suppressor, get one. I just don't think most people need them. Uh... I did subyard, so yes, uh, we did. 1911 or Walter PPK? 1911. Honestly, annoys me seeing non combat veterans putting themselves on the same level as a combat veteran. Everyone thinks it's movie Hollywood crap. No one thinks logically about that shit. Kind of annoying. Again, um, I hate having to keep on bringing up another person, but like Overton Windex has a good point. And when your adrenaline is pumping, you're not going to notice that you've gone deaf. You're not going to notice what's going on. Most of the time, most people don't realize that they can't hear after they fire a gun inside um, until the event is over. So either you're going to survive the event or you're dead. So you own know, like 14 silences while you do keep one on the pistol and rifle next to your bed. But some my home defense was not the reason you started getting into them all. Yeah. And again, McManus, you are like the example that proves the rule. Um you have the training, you got into it, and like you said, that's not the reason you got into it, but you have an excess of them, so you have the availability to do it. If I wanted to, I don't even like putting red dots on all my guns that have cuts, but you are the exception that proves the rule. So I, I highly respect what you are capable of, but you are not the average person. You are well above the average based on our conversations, your knowledge that I've seen so far and the things you've said. So, uh, your second oldest boy is going to buy a Daria Mark 12. If you got that right, what do I think of it? Daria makes some decent stuff. It's a Turkish company. They produce Rock Island shotguns. So if you can get a Daria and it's not too much money, I recommend it. Uh, courts hate suppressors too because it makes your gun look scary and when most folks don't need it, it just hurts you more than helps. It hit or miss on that one. Um, again, it depends on what the situation is. If you're out walking down the street and you have a suppressor on your life card, that could look bad in court, but in your house, I don't think they'll care that much. While you appreciate that you find it kind of sad, it really is, dude. When I spend all day in a gun store and you see half the people that come in there, or actually three quarters of the people that come in there, you start to realize how rare somebody like you actually is. The number of armchair veterans that come in, guys that think that they could have served in the military, guys that act like they served in the military, guys that act like they hunt every weekend, even though they can't even, they drop the mag on the floor of a gun because they don't even know what they're doing. It, it You lose faith. And a lot of people, when you see that every day, uh, most combat vets don't like to talk about. Yeah, my dad never talks about his service, and he's deployed six times, so, and I don't ask him. Uh, I enjoy your live, man. It feels like I'm talking to a bro. Your knowledge and real about the stuff to talk about, not a paid sell up gun tuber. Thanks, Jamie. Appreciate that one. Uh, my dad did five years and never mentioned a thing about his deployment besides when he was deployed, and I didn't ask. Yep. How do I feel about the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner combo for the Glock? So far, mine is great. Notice it works better with higher grain rounds. I've heard good things about it. I'm not a huge Glock fan. I have one, but it's just a standard 17. Uh, and the custom Glocks, I always just put threaded barrels on them, and I never put comps on them. So I don't have a good uh, response. I've watched like a few different videos, and they say it definitely helps, though. That's fair. You spend a serious amount of time at the gun store and gun shows here locally, and you're not wrong at all. Yeah, it's really bad, man. How many people just act the act? Uh, I may have just gotten back from a deployment, but I'll never claim to have the experience of a combat vet. Yeah, it's... it's, And I never want to denigrate anybody that served. Thank you to anybody that's currently serving or has served. 
we really appreciate that you took the chance, you know, even if you just did it to get the GI bills or whatever the fuck they're offering now, but you still took the risk that you would have to go and serve in a combat situation. But to automatically assign competence with service is really bad. Um, and you can see examples of that all over YouTube. Yeah, some of the most egregious ones are the ones that make it on there. But when you see like a soldier training for his AR-15 qualification and he's literally trying to put in his AR-15 mag backwards, I mean, come on. Uh, all these situations described from a lack of training. Many think they can just guns and ammo. Yep. If you actually train, I wish they would. Yep. The chill nature of the videos and streams are why I stand. started hanging around here when I can. The lack of shilling and paid bullshit is why you stayed. Appreciate that, McManus. And then, you know, you and I can have a Discord. We can agree and disagree on stuff. You and I have done that a few times, and we usually come to some sort of agreement by the end of it. Do they still make the oil can attachment suppressor thingy? I'm sure you can go on Wish or Timu or something and find one. It's an oil trap or a, a, a solvent trap, I guess. Uh, what's my most special gun? Um, it's kind of hard to say because my most special gun would be um, 1894, model 1894, Winchester 3030 because it was my grandfather's that's kind of special but my buddy built me that one um, my buddy gave me that one as a gift buddy gave me that one as a gift so you know it, it, it varies from time to time I don't really say I have one favorite gun Carter I can't pick up guns sorry comps are not worth it to me if you ever shoot at home at night, you're just going to blind yourself. Not practical on EDC at all. Range toy, maybe. Yeah, and I don't shoot good enough, and I will never claim to be an awesome shot. So people that sit there and say, I'm an awesome shot. I can hit everything. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck that. No. When you see my videos at the range, you'll hear I'm about an 80, 85 percenter on a six inch at 15, 15 to 25 yards. But I don't shoot well enough for a compensator to make that big a difference in my shooting ability. Uh, my recoil control is decent, so I don't need the comp, and I shoot heavy-ass guns. Uh, well, that's because we're on the spectrum. Nice! Yay, I got a helmet that I wear to bed. Your Carcano is probably your nearest and dearest. Awesome, dude. Carcanos are beautiful. Uh, civilian tactical strikes me as, as bought out. Yep, a lot of them are. Um... And again, I'm not trying to call out anybody, but there are some channels out there, and I'm not going to give the name, but there are some channels that do like 40 or 50 reviews a year from Chinese companies. I've done three, and I only did them after I spent time with them, but I see a couple of channels that are very consistently, like almost every week, putting out more and more. I don't know why. I like these on my hoodie. Uh, special. Um, but I see them, and they're just they're just... Every week they have a new Chinese red dot and they're pushing it as the best thing ever. Meanwhile, I had those warrior land lights for three months before I did a video. I have had the blacksmith safes um, for months before I'll do a video on them and I don't get paid for them. Your special gun is a Mauser C96. Ooh, I'd love to have a C96. Do I train with the AR more than pist more or pistols? Pistols. I'm a handgun guy. I shoot that every now and then, um, but I don't need to. Um, it's stupid to say it that way, but I, I'm proficient with the AR-15, but I know that at working at a gun store and being at my office on the daily and leaving at dark, I'm more than likely going to have a handgun encounter if I ever do, so I practice for handgun shooting. Sam asks, Staccato P thoughts, overpriced. There's a litany of guns that are much better value. Staccato, unfortunately, got a swelled head and, and their price tag followed suit. I would get a Stealth Arms Platypus, takes Glock mags, and it's at least... $800 cheaper based on the lowest price. Uh, Civ Tech is like your California cousin that shot two guns at a range once and now he thinks he's knowledgeable. Nice. I don't even know. I know who Civilian Tactical is. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very much, uh, they spend their entire work week trying to get sponsors and then they make videos. Like I said, that's why I appreciate folks like Joe and Honest Outlaw. No one can buy them out. Very rare to see these days, but finest go underappreciated. Honest has an association with Canik that I'm not really happy with because they keep sending him all the guns because he likes them. But he's one of the few that I believe isn't shilling for Canik. Uh, he got the Meta and the SFX when they first came out, uh, and he got the TTIs. But his his response is he didn't think that it was that much better than a regular one himself. So, 
What's your take on TSOS 1911's models? Are they worth the money? Uh, I'll let you know in a week because I have one of the Night Stalkers coming. The standard one at $750, that's a hell of a price. It's half the price of a Prodigy. Go for it. But I have the Night Stalker double stack coming, and we'll see what happens there. Almost all the Chinese optics that get rebranded are from Vector Optics, apparently direct from, from them. Quality is higher quality. Yeah, and I'm not saying that Chinese optics are bad. Sightmark is Chinese. Um, it's just that I get sponsorship requests every week from another Chinese manufacturer that says they're the number one manufacturer in the optics market, and I'm not willing to do them. I just say no. Uh, I tell them that if I want to run an ad, an ad is different from a sponsorship. An ad is me reading off a piece of paper before a video. If they want to do an ad, I don't give a shit. I'll read their piece of paper. I'm not going to say that I trust them or anything like that. But uh, I will not do a sponsored video for every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes down the line. Uh, why would somebody need a gas-powered shotgun like Benelli M4 assault shotguns? Consumer grade is not gas-powered. Well, Benelli M4 is consumer grade. It's a very common gun. Even though it's an expensive gun, it is considered consumer grade. It's professional quality, but it's consumer grade. And it's just different uh, system of operation. Uh, who's gimmicky? Minus the metal frame, what's some of the pros to, on the Platypus over the Glock? 1911 linear trigger, uh, the um, just the overall design of it, the grip angle, things like that. Um, other than the metal frame with some of the pros. Um, and the, just the, well, that's, that's all you need to know. It's a 1911 that takes Glock mags. Is that a SIG X5? Nice. Uh, that's a M17 with an X5 frame, and that's a X5 Legion. What do I think of Stag Arms AR-15s? They're decent. I had one a long, uh, a long time ago. Uh, he has a little bias, but everyone else is saying that TTI is superior to the normal one, at least on the slot. Yep. Uh... 9mm or 40? 9mm, thank you. Platypus build time's around 30 days. I may do it. Yeah, they shortened that down. They were at 14 to 16 weeks. They cranked it out. Uh, I have the Rock Island single stack 1911, and it runs great. It looks nice, and it's practical, but I'd still prefer a high, higher end 1911. Just work at it, dude. When I started doing things with all of my guns, I started with the lowest end, and, you know, I built up. What job would you say is good to start in the gun industry? Sales. You got to learn sales, you got to learn people skills, and being in sales, you have to learn lots of different models and stuff. I feel like a 16-year-old girl. I'm just sitting here stroking myself. Totally wrong. Don't clip that. Fuck you. Um, but yeah, sales, you need to get to learn people. You need to get to learn products, and then you can work on things. Gunsmithing is great, but there's tons of gunsmiths out there. I like the reviews from Focus Strip and Bargain Bin Tactician. Nope, never heard of them. Uh, for an MBA mid-professional. Hmm. Uh, AK-47 or M4, I'm guessing you were meant to write. Uh, I'll take an M4. Uh, what isn't China-made optics? Please expand upon and what you recommend. What isn't Chinese? I think Leupold is one of the last one that isn't making them specifically in China. I believe a lot of companies have moved. Uh, Rock Islands are amazing pistols. Yeah, they are, especially for the money. Uh, I don't know what the thug shake is, and no. Bye-bye. <coughs> Excuse me. Too late. Damn it. Uh, I mean, five to six months, that's why nope. Uh, no, they moved the, the, down to uh, five to six weeks. Uh, ARP 5-inch or ARP 7-inch. Uh, what caliber? Uh, if you're talking about 9mm, then it doesn't really matter, because 9mm will run out of a 5 or a 7. You're not going to get that much of a velocity hike. Uh, if you're talking something like a 10 mil, I'll go with the 7 inch. If you're talking like 45, I'll still go with the 7 inch. They have more powder, so they get more velocity. But a 9 mil out of a 5 or a 7 inch, they're going to be going just about the same speed, so there's no difference. I'm going to make a compilation of incriminating things, bro says. Go for it, and then I'll stand up and say, I can still be president. Uh, EOTech and Trijicon are American-made, and Aimpoint is Swedish, you think? Yeah, I think you're right. Although, it, can Aimpoint? Aimpoint has to have a factory here because Aimpoint made military stuff for the U.S. And I'm pretty sure anything on the U.S. military stuff has to be made here, right? So I think they're owned in Sweden, but they have a manufacturing here. 
Is that still true? Because like the Comp M4s and stuff that were on the rifles, I thought military stuff had to be produced here. Um, you got the clip started. Go look at your page. God damn it. Best complete lower. Um, whoever you like, man. I mean, they're all, if you're buying just a lower, they're all mil spec anyways. Uh, 556 or 300 blackout or 308. Well, you're talking about two different platforms by doing that. Uh, 300 blackout and an AR-15, 308 is an AR-10. Uh, it'll be funny as hell. Nice. Uh, I know it doesn't matter because they're banned, but I know some Eastern Bloc optics like the Cobra, Copa, are still made in Russia. Yeah, see, people like the Russian shit, and there's no guarantee it's better than the Chinese shit. How do you send a 30 6 pump action? Uh, yes, I have. Um, Remington 760 is a, I think the 760, was it the 760 or 7 something, is a pump action. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, depends on your need. Yup. Uh, what's the pistol in the middle of the rack with the wood grip? That is a SIG P226 P226 Elite Stainless. Uh, Talo edition, it's called, but they basically wound up just selling them as SIG 226 Elites. So I like the stainless because it's got the heaviest frame. Um, that is a double action to single action. Actually, if you look up there, that is the only double action to single action gun on the wall right now. In my experience, the Russian stuff is cool for cloners, but trash in practicality. Well, there you go. Um, I know that I've played with some real Russian stuff, and it seemed fine. But again, I didn't long-term a lot of stuff. I don't long-term a lot of stuff just because I'm just doing quick as if I was buying it kind of stuff. Um, have I ever had an FN FNS9? Yes, I did have an FNS9. Uh, took it out to the range, shot really well, um, but it didn't impress me. It was just a decent striker fired 9. I wound up getting rid of that and replacing it with an FNH9. I prefer the FNH. Uh, in my experience, that's, uh, that's true, but I would hope that the Russian mil spec and quality control is better than China's. It's not like anyone can really find out. Well, you can buy a lot of Chinese stuff and compare it. You have a Russian red dot and it has two reticles. And if you have four drinks, then it goes back to one. Deegan says, thank you. And I say, you're welcome. Uh, you're new to gun culture and want to carry when I'm older. Any tips? Yeah, don't open carry if you're out in public because it makes you look like a douche. Uh, if you're going to conceal carry, you have to make sure to figure out whether you're going to carry at the 4 o'clock position. If you have a big pooch and you can't carry appendix, you have to figure out where you're going to carry. you got to figure out what you're going to carry, and you need to practice with whatever you're going to carry. I see so many people that don't practice with their carry guns, and especially the people that come in and buy one box of 20 rounds. They're like, oh, I'm not going to shoot this ever because it's my self-protection ammo. Dude, you got to dump your ammo. you got to practice with your carry ammo. Uh, I know I made a... a um, a very exaggerated example when I said that uh, the difference between a hollow point and a bull nose could be three feet. But your point of aim, point of impact can change depending on the bullet grain weight and the design of the gun or design of the bullet. So practice with what you're going to be carrying. You haven't had good luck with PSA lowers. You got one and your dad did and both of the bolt catches were out of spec. Can't beat Anderson's for the price. Stay away from composite lowers at all costs. Yep. Picking up an FNS9 and 5 mags for 300 this week. That's a good deal. That I approve of. Uh, like I said, it's a perfectly fine gun. I just like hammer-fired stuff. Night crawlers, you got to figure out whether you want to carry a revolver or autoloader. There's a big difference in different ways you got to train with them. Yeah. Have you ever shot the FN FNS 2000? What are my thoughts on it? Would you own one? Also, high again. Uh, no, I have not show, shot an FS 2000. Um... So I don't really have a good thought about it. I don't know if I've ever even held one. <sighs> it's an interesting weapon for sure. It looks like the Halo rifle. No, I've never shot one. So I don't have an opinion on it. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I feel like if... The open carriers start concealed carrying, their balls will be gone in a week. That, that's called a self-correcting problem, son. If uh, if you can't safely carry a gun, I've said it before, if you can't safely trust yourself to carry a gun, you shouldn't be carrying a gun. If you are completely scared about reholstering a gun, get a knife. Uh, well, I mean, you shouldn't stick a knife down the front of your pants unless you're really, really, really stupid. Uh, but yeah, if you can't trust yourself around a gun, you shouldn't be carrying a gun. That's number one. 
You know, if you have to be scared even after months of practice, don't carry a gun. Carry a cell phone and a rape whistle. Why not carry both? You keep a revolver in your boot and a 17 pointed backwards, pointed towards your PP. Yeah, you can do that if you want. Uh, what's your opinion on the best grain for 9mm self-defense, home defense? Uh, you just need a good hollow point. You can carry 115 gr grain hollow points. Um, I carry federal, or excuse me, Hornady critical duty and critical defense. Um, when I carry a nine mil, uh, typically I will run 124 grain cause it's a nice medium between 124 and 147, but 115 hollow grain, hollow points are perfectly fine, uh, for home defense as well. Can I see the green grip behind you? It's just a 1911, dude. It's just G10 grips i'm not picking up the gun uh glock fanboy there you go that's the perfect combo auto loaders and revolvers yep all the why all the why what you go into the why you like the why you enjoy the why why mc i don't know why but uh my mouth is getting all dry must be all the pills I take. Ooh, another Vanquish. I just want to see how many of you just keep staying around through my stupid shit. Yo, what's up? Dine at the Y. It's your favorite place to eat. Nice. You going six hours tonight? I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm enjoying it right now. I see your 1911. It is my favorite 40 caliber handgun. Get out of here, Bingham. Uh, opinion on buying used guns. I'm all for it. Just make sure you check them out really closely. You can usually tell if something's been abused or just used. Um, it's a great way to save money. And you'd be surprised how many people will buy a gun, put five rounds through it, and then sell it. Dang, that gold one looks good, not going to lie. All the YouTube lives are cringe. Nice to scroll and see someone based. Yeah, well, I was doing, like, actual live streams and stuff, but the audience wasn't there for it, so I decided to do the verticals, and I'm just trying. Can't go wrong with critical defense, and if you can find them, Extreme Shock is the best, but they went out of business. Well, then that's going to be difficult for me, Glock. Any good recommendations on holsters for loose clothing, like sweatpants and basketball shorts? Um, not really. Uh, we the People makes a lot of stuff. Schema makes, like, a skeletonized Glock holster that's very minimalist. It only weighs, like, three ounces. So that would be something for something like that. What's the pistol above the CZ? The pistol above the CZ is the Palmetto State Rock 5.7 liter. Or liter. Fuck me. 5.7 by 28. Prunu, hello. How are you? David, you could also go with like a belly band kind of a thing. Uh, where the holster isn't even attached to your clothing. That way it's secured to your body. Uh, can you hold a Glock if you're under 21? Uh, yeah, absolutely you can. Like here in the state of Virginia, you can hold a gun if you're over the age of 12 in a gun store. Um, yeah, bro recommends an ammo from a manufacturer who's out of business is epic. Well, you see, I carry the black talons. They're really hard to find, but I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who's serving time that knows a guy. What about soft points as an alternative to hollow points and autoloaders? I know some folks use wad cutters instead of hollow points, sometimes in revolvers. Uh, you can, but uh, you just got to make sure that the load is right. If you have too powerful of a load, even with the soft point, it's not going to expand very well. Um, I don't speak Hindi. What EDC belt do you run? I just wear core belts, K-O-R-E, although I'm not really speaking with them much right now because they got mad at me because I didn't make enough videos of their shit. And then when I asked them if they wanted to sponsor a video, they're like, oh, well, we've moved on. Go fuck yourselves. Um, they have special sweatpants made for holsters. No, thank you. Can you buy one under 21? No, you can't buy a handgun in the United States under 21. You can buy a, a long gun, though. Uh, what part of Virginia are you in? Northern Virginia. Uh, what AR would you get under $600? I really wouldn't. But if you have to buy one under $600, get a Radical Firearms or a Diamondback. Oh, you should have left it up, Justin. I was about to answer it. Um, because uh, asking a guy who he thinks is a girl if they're gay, does that mean I like girls? Because if you're asking me if I like girls, then yes, I'm a lesbian. I like girls. Uh, you know why Virginia and West Virginia are separate states, right? 
Uh, no, Redneck, but you're about to tell me. And remember, your name is Redneck, so keep that in mind as you type your answer, Mr. Jokester, Jokester, Jokester. Especially since West Virginia is north from me right now. And if I want to go to West Virginia, I have to go south or north. What is your thoughts on Canic? Canic is great for the money. Uh, it's a great value. Their signature series aren't as great a value, but they an SFX you can get an uh, SFX Pro for like six hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, optics ready, threaded barrel, all that stuff, uh, and a Meta Pro, all those guns. They're very decent. I was thinking the Diamondback too. Yeah. Uh, West wanted to stay with the Union during the Civil War. Gotcha. You love your Meta SF. Yeah, it's a good one. You recommend concealed carry insurance? If so, which company? Uh, do your own research. Um, U.S. Law Shield is who I have, but uh, stay away from U.S. ECA. They will only defend you if they think they're going to win. They'll give you the minimalist and like the shittiest lawyer they keep on retainer if they don't think they're going to win the case. And then if you don't win the case, you have to pay your own court fees. So, uh, fuck them. Uh, you have legal autism in your right foot. You have legal documents. Not even joking. Awesome. We didn't and still don't. Lols. I'm into the sales pitch from David. Worth checking out. Virginia before the American Civil War used to be modern day for VA and West Virginia combined. VA won a silver and fought for the CSA. And Oh, okay. Well, I was just seeing if you were telling like some kind of weird joke about, you know, marrying your cousin and stuff like that. Uh, thoughts on attorneys on retainer. The only reason to have an attorney on retainer is if you think you're going to be doing something that's going to require an attorney at some point. If you think you're going to be facing a lot of libel or um, defamatory cases, maybe get one. If you think you're going to be getting a lot of traffic violations, drug violations, firearm violations, then get a lawyer on retainer. Uh, for the average American citizen, you do not need a lawyer on retainer. Uh, Great Lakes AR-15. I haven't played with one of those in a while. They just feel thicker somehow. If you've ever played with one, they feel thicker than a regular one, uh, but they were decent. We've had good luck with PSA's complete ARs, but not building off their lowers. I get you. Uh, I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Alabama takes too long to drive to. <laughs> not to get too political, but what's my opinion on all is on Subway sandwiches other than Meatball Sub, of course. Um, not a fan of green olives on subs, but uh, black olives, depending on the one. Salami sandwich, whatever. I'm good. Uh, if you live in the U.S., odds are pretty damn high you're going to need an attorney at some point. Yeah, luckily, um, I have family that knows a lot of attorneys, so if I ever need anybody, I got people. Uh, nah, yeah, I can definitely see why you'd think that. Nice. The service is not an actual lawyer on... The service, not an actual lawyer on retainer. Um, I guess I'm kind of missing what you're asking then if you're asking about this, this service. Uh, what do you mean? You ain't good at switching between a smart ass and serious. No worries. How is uh, not taking serial number on plat? How old am I? Ha ha ha. Uh, I have no idea. Do it. Pineapple on pizza? Absolutely. Keith is fading, so he's taking off. Black mushrooms, black olives, mushrooms, and pepperoni is all I need on a pizza. Uh, you're no longer a mod coon. Black olives. I don't like hot black olives. I like cold black olives. Uh, thank you for your cultured answer to your question. Have a good day, sir. Also, nice guns. Thank you, sir. Is steel ammo bad for your Glock? Nope. Break it. Break that shit. Put the steel in there. No, the tolerances are loose enough on Glock guns, and their feed ramps are actually decent, so it'll eat your steel shit. Oh, uh, okay. Thank you for the specification. Lawyers on retainer is service like USCCA, but it's actual lawyers. Uh, I don't have, I, I've never had to employ them, so I don't know, and I haven't done much research on them. Um, uh, you like pineapple, so your opinion on olives is completely invalid. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm allergic to pineapple, so it tastes spicy to me. So it's like adding hot sauce to your pizza. There's a service called attorney. Yep, got it. Uh, it seems to have very few downsides. Just make sure that they will cover like they will represent you and your costs are covered even if you lose or if there's a settlement 
that's the big problem with USCCA. If you lose the case, they do not cover your appeal. They do not still work for you. If the second you lose or take a plea, they cut you loose. So you got to make sure whoever you go with, um, just make sure that they they under that they are going to stay with you until your last appeal is exhausted. Glocks will eat that crap all day. Yes, they will. Same way an AK was, an AK will. Uh, pick up a 1911 and try to look through the frame. You don't see the other side of the gun. Pick up a Glock and that big bunch of looseness in it. That's why they run so well. Uh, they definitely still represent you. Then then I'd be okay with them. That's the same thing U.S. Law Shield does. Brother recently purchased the one and only Trailer Park Defender High Point and has yet to jam after 12 mags through it. I was so surprised. Nice! I'm a fan of Lawyers on Retainer. They have a YouTube channel. You've always been following them for a while. They were the first ones exposing the USCCA bullshit. Um, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Who knows? Maybe I'll check them out for if I decide to switch. Um... Treat it like car insurance. Switch it up if you need to. They did Alan Cully dirty. Uh, big time. Just Google it. Yeah, that's one of the ones I'm, you know, I'm generalizing what they do. But yeah, that was one of them. Your K, AK has yet to feed properly. Jeremy, I'm going to ask you, what's the brand of your AK? And if you say Arsenal, you're lying. I'll wait. Pittsburgh, what up? You got a Yugo and it's not feeding? You got one of those crazy-ass single-stack ones they imported? Uh, it's a 380 ACP, so that might have something to do with it because his 9mm is basically a pump action. Nice. Uh, no, you, you get lucky sometimes. Somebody managed to turn the spring just right when they were assembling the high point. What's your opinion on the Rittenhouse situation? Uh, he shouldn't have been out there. He shouldn't have been armed because he was under 18, but he didn't do anything wrong other than that. He acted correctly in the way he responded while using his firearm. He didn't just go mag dump into the crowd. He didn't fire until he felt that he, it was necessary. So do I think that the acquittal was right? Yes. Do I think he should have been in that situation? No. Um, but it's not like he was out there trying to make the situation that much worse because he was trying to put out dumpster fires. He was trying to protect businesses. So I agree that he was trying to be a civic minded person, but he did violate the law by carrying a firearm under the age of 18. So it's a hit and miss thing. It's, it's, you can pick apart the minutia of what happened, but in the end, his acquittal was right. Uh, Zastava AKs are pretty good. Usually, yes. Um, where are we? <laughs> oh, strip it. Strip it good. Look at all the people. Uh, nope, came packed in grease, and I've yet to have a failure with anything I've put through it. Oh, okay. Well, then I misread your comment. If you go back and see it, you said your AK has yet to feed properly, which means it isn't feeding properly. So, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but you're, if you read your first comment, the one when I asked you what the brand was, it says, my AK has yet to feed properly. Uh, I mean, he defended himself while he was defending other persons, removing or feeding, giving first aid, or how he was wrong in being there in the first place. Exactly. Um, I understand, like I said, he, he did what he did. King B-Dog, what's going on, dude? Yeah, no, that's why I was saying, when you said it was a Yugo, I was a little bit surprised. I know that, uh, I think early on they had some single stack ones come in that weren't that great. I'm not sure you could argue that he was wrong, illegal perhaps, but wrong. Like I said, I don't believe he was wrong. He, he acted in a proper manner. But by the letter of the law, him having a firearm outside in public under the age of 18 was a violation of the law because he was a minor with an AR-15 out in public. Uh, California compliant AR-15 sucks. Uh, you could have stopped that at California. Um, my grandma just... You're in a hard place. Your grandmother just died. I'm sorry to hear that, Cameron. Um... I don't know that this is the right place for it. Um, I Our condolences. You just got to just try to remember her for all the fun you had during her life uh, and enjoy the time you had with her. 
I'd rather be stuck with the Ruger 1022. So you'd rather stay in California and use an inferior weapon? Why don't you just move out of California? And I know some people are like, oh, it's because where I grew up doesn't mean it's a good place. You think there's a lot of people that live in Taiwan that want to live there? Fuck no. I live in North Korea because I was born here. Okay, doesn't mean it's good. Why the California hate? Because they just, they their laws, their rules, their taxes, the price of living in California are so ridiculously not in line with the United States. It's like California wants to pretend they're like Dubai, they're, but they're not. They're all just, it's just, it's a shit place in terms of personal freedoms. Sorry to hear, yep. Yeah. Um, bro, I wish we hate, had, you had an AR-15, we can't have them here. Immigrate. California is cool. California has cool stuff. But California itself, no. Minus 15 social points. Yep. Uh, what gun do you keep next to your bed? Usually a 1911 and a Mossberg 930. Nine thirty pro, yay! Nine thirty pro, yay! Nine thirty pro, yay! Nine thirty pro, yay! I like me some nine thirties, yo. Uh, what do I think about you? Uh, if you happen to be the person I think you are, you're a good person there, Mister Australia. Fix it. I'm moving out of Washington State soon. The gun laws here are almost as bad as California. They're trying. Uh, King is asking what time it is. It's eleven thirty-two Eastern Pacific time. Eastern Pacific Eastern Standard Time. You know what I mean. You're born and raised in Texas, West and North. Shit is overrated. Yep. Clock switches and wannabe gangsters on TikTok reels and shorts is the worst combo ever. Uh, TikTok is a hellhole full of doomed bastards. Um, nothing against the people that are on there, but the people that own it, you know. China. Those That, that place where they, they'll let somebody talk about anal butt sex all day long, but if I put a picture of a gun up, I get pulled down. Fuck that. Dragon's Breath for home defense. Yeah, if you want to set your house on fire. Uh, favorite AR rifle brand? Home built. I don't have a favorite brand. Uh, although Q is kind of up there because they are way less than Daniel Defense, but better. Ethos, that's, that's cool. Thank you. Why are Glocks and ASK so prevalent in gang violence? Because they're cheap-ish. Uh, also because Dracos are cool and Glock 27s are 40 cals. Also, uh, Smith & Wesson SDs are very common in crimes. And Taurus G2s and G3s. Just want to be gangsters shooting on the air and other people's property. Yep. Do I have any wooden guns? No, but I do have air guns. Thank you. We don't fix our roads. <laughs> Full send Brandon. Okay. Uh, music taste. A little bit of everything. I like everything. Every time we've had an intruder, they've been wielding some configuration of an AK. Uh, well, you know, you, you just have that kind of people in your area. Because you can buy Dracos. Dudes will spend, like, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but a lot of AKs get sold right after people are getting their, 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 um, monthly stipend checks. And again, from five years of working at a store and hanging out at my buddy's pawn shop. Uh, you'll see a bunch of people come and get their guns on the beginning of the month, and a lot of people sell their guns in the middle of the month. So you got people wasting their money on shit, and then if you're in a bad situation, right, and somebody offers you cash, no question asked, a lot of people will do that shit. So a lot of people come in and buy a shitty gun, and then they'll sell it illegally, and then bad shit happens. And if you don't believe that, then why is there bad people with guns? Oh, yeah, because uh, they have the ability to get guns from other people with bad situations. Trying to not make some of the Nerf gun as a legit gun. Didn't Australia try to ban, like, the Orby guns, the, the little water ball shooting guns? Uh, this case here for poor people. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like, he's the next guy, but the hype isn't worth it. It's how the hillbillies do it. Billa, hi, I want gun. Good, Billa, go to your local FFL, fill out your paperwork, and get yourself a gun. I hope you find one that you like. You'll be very happy with your purchase if you are a responsible human being and not a piece of shit. Uh, you will get gun. You will get airsoft gun. You can get airsoft guns. Do I like FN, if so, 5.7 or P90? Um, here's the thing. 
FN is cool. I like their products. They're way too expensive for what they are, and I have not liked any of the FN 5 series. They're all shit, and they have shit uh, build quality. You can squeeze the magwell shut on a 509 or a 545 or a 510. Um, that is ridiculous. That means the plastic is so uh, under-reinforced that it is shit. Oh, it's good for weather. Screw that shit. Uh, many guns have thicker grips on them, and it still doesn't even feel that good in the hand. So give me the old FNX, FNHs, and I'm good. P90 is a lot of fun. The PS90 is hot garbage and has the worst trigger I've ever fired. My buddy has a first-gen PS90 that uh, has the ability to run away. I like that one. I'll give $47 and a grilled cheese for that Shadow 2. Sure, tell me where the Shadow 2 is on the on the wall behind me, because uh, there isn't one, so I'll take that uh, grilled cheese. Thank you. Got to work tomorrow. I'll finish streaming the AM. Thanks, Joe. All right, dude. I appreciate that. I'm going to be going at five hours, um, which is like, what, 20 minutes from now? Uh, yo, uh, $1 million per round. Just about in, in Cali. They banned airsoft, and that's how you get gel blasters. Got popular. They pretty much made gel. That's it. Gel blasters, not the Orbeez. You love your FN 510. You won't when it breaks. What gun do I think is underrated? I don't think guns are, can really be underrated. Um, I think that Canik has finally gotten a lot of the recognition they need. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot of guns. The Equalizer from Smith & Wesson, because it's so easy to run and it's hammer-fired. Uh, Runaway PS90, you say? ATF has entered the chat. I said I know somebody who has one. I didn't specifically say his name was Marcus Johnson, and he lives in um, a place in South Carolina. As a CDCR officer in California, hate Gavin Newsom due to gun laws, but also like him because I'm a state worker and gun gun sales don't apply to me due to law enforcement. Nice. You should hit the like button for that. I used to try to get 100 likes, but fuck that. I don't give a shit. Like it if you want. If you people are in here and you like it, it just makes Google like advertise me more. And I think some of you like me because you're still here. So don't be a douchebag. Hit the like button. That's the lesson for today. Hit the like button. All of you, hit the like button. Uh, the Canik is definitely where it's at. Yeah, they've come a long way. You have the assault band compliant AK-75 and generally like the thumb hole grip better than a pistol grip. Maybe that's because you were raised up on thumb hole 22s. Nothing wrong with that. First gen 90s, wink, wink. Love the Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistols. They're underrated. A little bit. AK-74, I know what you mean. Love your AK, never jammed yet. Nice. Or thumbs down. It's an interaction. No, don't thumbs the video down. Don't be a douche. Come on, Justin. No, no. If you don't give me a thumb up, then you're going to get diarrhea tonight. You want diarrhea, go for it. Is that not a Shadow 2 orange? A little difficult to see the exact details of it. Uh, that is a tactical sport orange. Uh, they don't do a Shadow 2 orange. Uh, I don't see the like button. I clicked the, the heart button and said, I appreciate that, Guile. It's tactical sport. Uh, thumbs down help. Uh, technically, any sort of interaction, like if you leave a comment, like all the comments help uh, get me interaction, and thumbs up, thumbs down, it doesn't matter. It just shows his interaction to them. Uh, what if you're a cop in a state with assault weapon ban and mag ban? You can buy them for personal use since you're a cop. Uh, you can bypass a lot of things. Like here in the state of Virginia, if you're local, if you're Virginia law enforcement, it bypasses the concealed carry rule. What if you like diarrhea? Then buckle up, buddy. Uh, you already have the squirt, so thumbs down it is. Well, buckle up, buddy. Uh, thoughts on Kimber? You're looking for a race 9 millimeter 1911. Then you're not going to find one with Kimber. Kimber makes uh, decent guns, but they don't make an, a race gun. If you're looking for a race 1911, then unfortunately you're going to have to buy a Staccato. They're duty guns. Shut the fuck up. No, they're not. They're, they're race guns. They're just selling them as duty guns so they can jack up the price. Uh, have you ever made a reused ammunition? Nope. I don't even shoot reloads. Charlie, what's up, dude? Uh, demo smash. Yes. Play the song Ram Ranch. Can't play copyrighted music, and I wouldn't do it anyways. You're looking at my wall. You can't find the G3 Tactical. Uh, no, I don't own that anymore. I got rid of that a long time ago. If you drop a 320, there's plenty of room in heaven. All right, X-Ray. That joke was funny two years ago when it first happened. That joke was funny 18 months ago when there was only a few people that were making video jokes about it. But come on, man. It's clear that those guns have not gone off on me. No more of the P320 jokes. Or I'll start saying the same thing about your Gen 2 Glocks. Because Gen 2 Glocks had 10 times the number of accidental discharges. Just saying. 
Atlas 1911s go fast as shite. Yep, and they eat your pocketbook. Uh, best upgrade for a Glock that isn't a red dot or a light. Um, just a good set of sights, man. Get rid of those plastic sights. Put a nice set of uh, uh, freaking Trigicon sights on it or something. Night sights. Um, yeah. You got any Uzis? Nope. Have I killed somebody? Nope. It's still funny. Not really. Uh, it's still for me. Fuck you, man. Uh, okay, Gabe. Uh, speaking of 320, did you ever try the M17? M18, that's an M17 right there. Uh, they do make a Shadow 2 factory with orange grip. It's called a Shadow 2 Orange, but now I know you have a TSO. Uh, it's not in production anymore if they are. Uh, they don't do that anymore. Uh, you like, or at least I can't get one through a distributor in the United States. Can we say it about both SIGs and Glocks then? I'm good with that. Yeah, absolutely. Apex trigger is the best upgrade. Glock triggers suck. Yeah, but if you're going to be carrying it, don't change your trigger out. Otherwise, if you're living in an area where you think you're going to use your gun for self-defense and you're living in a bad area and all they care about is their conviction and closure rates, having an upgraded trigger just means that you're out for blood and you were trying to kill somebody. So don't give the attorneys anything to work with. Don't put shitty freaking striker plates on the back that says, look here, uh, I kill everybody. Let God sort it out. Don't put shit like that on your carry gun. Uh, do, 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 apex trigger, blah, blah, blah. Can it? Question mark. Yes. And exclamation point. Glock, Spartan sight. Mm. Gen 3, 1 through 3 Glocks trying not to burn your hands. Yeah, pretty much. Been looking for an M16A1. You can find those. What are your thoughts on a light on your home defense? Um, I'm of two minds of that. You can have one on there. You should have a light just in case you're in the dark. But some other people will say that you should uh, definitely keep like a spare light that isn't attached to your firearm. Because, so this is my light, and let's pretend this is my gun. It, I can do this, right? And I can put my hand somewhere else, or you can come around the side of a corner and do that while still holding your gun in the other hand. So you, if you are in a position where you need that gun, you can confuse the other person by having your light in somewhere else so that if they shoot towards the light, there's a better chance that they miss you versus having the light on your gun and they aim right for the light. And if you're one of those people that practices full weaver or isosceles or any of that bullshit you're going to be center massing yourself it's kind of like why batman wears the big ass symbol on his chest uh yeah so either way what ar-15 do you suggest build your own uh what do i think of the glock 19x mos it's five years too late is that a usp 45 which one there's no usp up there if you're talking about the one with the gray slide that is a 5.7 liter or 5.7 by 28 psa rock Kyber Pass guns are silly. Yes, they are. CZ USA versus Shadow Systems. Uh, any thoughts? Um, no idea. Uh, Timney Trigger Spring Kit for the Glock. 60 bucks. It's night and day difference. Sort of reset. Yep. Uh, Glock 43X or TP9 Elite SC. I'm going to go with the 43X just because of how thin it is. I would go with an MC9. Would be a more direct competitor. And I would then go with the MC9. What stance do you use? I am crippled. I have I'm a double amputee, so basically whatever doesn't let me fall over. Um, I've learned to just shoot between my tripping. It's a good idea to have a light on your firearm and a secondary light, so you're not having to point your gun at wherever everything you want to light up. There you go, too. Hey, sorry, back from the shower. Okay, redneck, as long as it wasn't golden. Uh, Ohio, it looked like one. Oh, oh, it looks like one. Gotcha. The elusive Hemi pistol. What? Do I know 2A Jekyll? Nope. Dude, I don't know what I did. I woke up with bumps and itchies all over your pelvic region. Uh, that means you had a good night. Just go and get some uh, penicillin. You'll be fine. It's just herpes if You'll be good. Um, yeah, I bet you it is, Johnny. You, you're so funny. Ha, ha, ha. I've never once read somebody trying to make me say something stupid on a live stream. Ha, ha, ha. You're so funny. You're so good. Oh, my God, I can't believe that you actually almost got me to say that. Oh, ha, 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 how much did you spend on your first AR? Um, depends. All right, you got to decide what you want it set up for. If you just want it for short range, whatever, just buy a standard one, put some flip-ups on it, then you can get away with the cheapest one possible. If you're trying to go out long distance, then you're going to have to spend some money on a scope. If you're looking for intermediate distance, then you're going to have to get set up with irons and a scope or an optic or an LVPO. So it's actually, it's not a simple question on how much should you spend. You should spend as much as you can afford comfortably. That's the best way I can put it. Guns 
are kind of like the tires on your car. The cheaper you go, the shittier the experience you're going to have. So spend as much as you're comfortable with. Coonskin, you got to take off? No worries, dude. We'll talk to you next time. What does a short barrel shotgun classify as? A short barrel shotgun, if it's an actual SBS, is an SBS. If you're talking about like a shockwave or a TAC-14, they qualify as any other weapon. Uh, you love the Zip-22. Nice. What's my daily carry? 1911. What do I think America and the world will look like in a decade? Do you think that shit and then a collapse society is likely in your lifetime? It's possible in your lifetime, redneck. Uh, I'll be dead before it goes bad, though. Uh, have you ever repaired a firearm? And if so, uh, as well, how much did it cost? Very wide open question, Sanchiro. It, I've repaired guns that have cost me nothing to fix them, but I've repaired guns that I've had to completely rebuild. Um, typical labor around my area is 80 bucks an hour and then parts. Um, in terms of personally, I've again, I've repaired guns just by disassembling them and reassembling them. You really think the Glock 19X is just a trial, their version of a G3 tactical? That's just me. Totally agree with your views. Fire is too late. Yeah, I mean it's fine. It's still a 19X. It's just a, it's just a 45 with brown paint. Uh, best long range caliber, uh, 300 Win Mag or 338 Lapua. Uh, if yes, why do you hunt with? No, I don't hunt. Uh, you can buy ARs in pieces, so if you can't afford it all at once and you can piece it together over time, something quality that will last or run about 1200 a good optic is between five and 1200 Yep. So you can brace an SBS and it be a pistol. If you have the tax stamp for an SBS, absolutely. But you can also get a shockwave and put a brace on it because it keeps it under the right length. You have to find the right brace for it. But they do make a pistol grip and a brace for the uh, Mossberg Shockwave that keeps it under 27 inches or something like that. And, and it keeps it underneath the legal limit because they don't run on suppressed and PSA will ignore your request for warranty. Yeah, fuck that. That's why I just bought, I just have the Virgin, the PSA body on my AR. Ruger standard pistols were never based off the German Luger pistols, but they were based off of those Nambu Type 14s. Ugh. When's the last time you saw a double barrel shotgun with rabbit ears in a gun shop? Uh, just last year in Middletown, we had a dude bring some in and sell them. Uh, did I serve? No, sir. Did not serve. Uh, physical disqualifications. I was not able to serve. 365 or Hellcat? Uh, 365, um, but I'll take a Hellcat Pro over standard 365. Dale comes in. Arrow Precision. They make decent stuff. I haven't heard about a single issue with the warranty. Uh, it's just getting them to service it is a pain in the ass. What's a good starter pistol? Jonas, difficult question. What do you want to do with it? How big are you? How small are you? Do you want to carry it? Do you want to keep it as a range toy? Uh, just get a Glock 19 is what I would tell people when it's that vague of a question. Just get a Glock 19. It's going to run. It's going to work. It's going to shoot. You should be able to competently shoot it. Um, just get a Glock 19. Unless you know exactly what you're looking for, get a Glock uh the shockwave with the brace is tempting the nfa and the f atf nice read the comment about the m16 i'm not hunting for him what's a rabbit ear it's a type of um fuck action uh any experience with the stoger ntr no but i need to get one because they're pretty interesting remington or mossberg or winchester uh winchester for lever guns mossberg for shotgun remington for laughs what does a firearm warranty cover? Typically anything with the firearm in terms of internal malfunctions, unless they can prove that it was something you did like overpressure rounds and stuff. Most manufacturers will just repair a gun unless they can prove you did something wrong. 357 SIG or 10 mil trick question. 357 SIG is just a 9 mil and a 10 mil case. I'll take the 357 SIG. Thank you. What's my most expensive gun and can we see it? Don't really have like what I would call a most expensive guns. Most of the guns up there are, you know, in the fifteen to two thousand dollar range. That's probably the most expensive gun that's up there. That's a TS Orange. Those run about two K. That's a two two six Elite that runs about fifteen hundred. That's a three twenty X five Legion with a Romeo One Pro on it that runs about fourteen hundred. That's a three twenty M seventeen with a Delta Point Pro on it, that's a $500 optic, so that gun's about $1,200, so I don't really have a most expensive gun, I just have a lot of guns between 15 and 2. Opinion on TSOS handguns, either in 1911 line or PX9, if at all familiar with them. I like the PX9 carry, I actually did a video on that, the new Gen 3s or whatever it is now. Uh, pretty nice gun, and at 300 bucks, it's definitely worth a look. The 1911, I actually have one of their Night Stalker 1911s coming, and I just did a video on one of their custom uh, Liberty uh, designs, so I'll have those videos coming up soon. 
Uh, you have a year worth of ignored emails I'd love to show you. And while I don't like Military Arms Channel, even he doesn't run. His doesn't run and wasn't fixed. Yours is 300 blackout. His is 556. Yeah, I don't like Military Arms Channel either. I've got to go, man. It was good finding the channel. Yeah, Dylan, come back anytime. Appreciate that one. Uh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, no, it all depends on what the situation is. I've actually got tried to call PSA as the uh, as a dealer that had them shipped in, and they still won't respond in any sort of timely manner. Meanwhile, Taurus, which is a notoriously budget-oriented company, will just take back repairs and fix them. Uh, what do I think about the new Canik Meta MC9, the 2023 carry? I think it's very decent. Uh, it's better than the FN Reflex for sure, which is like its most direct competitor because uh, it's smaller than like a 365 XL or even a GX4 XL. Tell me you're from Texas by, by not telling me you're not from Texas. I'm not from Texas. I was made in Texas, <coughs> according to my father. What if I use a 30-06 for hunting? Go for it. It's a perfectly capable round. Your thoughts on force reset triggers? Um, they they ride the line between being good and and, and not good. Uh, so a lot of people say, oh, no, they, they should be illegal. And a lot of people say, oh, who gives a shit? Here's the thing. I feel as long as you're a law-abiding citizen who's not out to hurt anybody, I don't give a shit what your gun does. Um, you know, for a long time, they were trying to get rid of binary triggers. So, you know... Guns can become a self-correcting problem if we completely open up the availability of gun ownership to everybody without uh, persecuting everybody for every little goddamn thing they think and say. Uh, the first two years are going to suck because a lot of us are going to die, but if we get past that, I think guns will be a very good thing. Look at the Old West. We took care of our own fucking problems. Um, awesome. I'll have to check those TSOS videos out. You carry the four uh, four point one one. Uh, PX9 Gen 3 with a Siley Wolf and Valkyrie Mini. Very well-rounded handgun. Yeah, they are. They seem like very de decent. Uh, the American 180 versus a Black Bear. If you can get all the rounds in the right spot, uh, American 180 will definitely take down a Black Bear. Have you seen the triple action trigger? If you're talking about the Daewoo slash Lionheart, yes, I have. Uh, fries are gimmicky, but kind of fun. I prefer Echo Triggers. Uh, never mess with an Echo Trigger. 22 LR is weak. Say that to 200 of them. Pretty much X-Ray. Uh, how long of a barrel should I run on an AR from medium to long range? 16 to 18, it doesn't matter. 16 inch will reach out 500 yards all day long. Uh, it's going to be more of your optic and your barrel twist rate. Um, if you're trying to go out longer distance with heavier rounds, go with a slower twist rate. Uh, if you want to go um, higher, if you're going with lighter rounds, go with a faster twist rate. Because the more twist that you get, the more accurate it'll be. Except for when you have a heavy round going too fast, it'll actually reduce its distance capability. So a 1 to 7 would be like ideal for like a 62 or 77 grain. Uh, whereas a 1 to 8 or a 1 to 9 for a uh, 55 grain all day long. That's got a 1 to eight twist rate and it's a heavy barrel um but it's still good enough for 62 grain frts are gimmicky yeah no a competent shooter can go plenty fast enough look at mojo uh grand thumbs friend with an m uh, just his m4 his cqb gun he's as fast as an frt just finding your channel you have a new subscriber awesome content thank you soul uh how far do you think your 10 and a half inch 556 will reach all depends on the ammo you use. If you use just a standard velocity 223 or 556, it still should be, you know, 200 yard gun. Uh, if you're using like VMAX heavy grain stuff, you should be able to touch out farther. Thoughts on 460 rolling? Never shot one. Um, it, I'd be interesting too. Uh, damn, chat went cray cray. See you later. Oh, McManus, if you're taking off, I'm actually getting out of here in five minutes, anyways. Uh, sweet tattoos, by the way. Thank you, sir. Subscribe to you. I don't know you. Do you feel changing triggers on a handgun is problematic, even if it's not adjustable? Uh, it all depends, Jeremy. If you're going to be using it for your personal protection and carry gun, it allows a prosecutor to potentially have another avenue of prosecution against you. Oh, you put in a lightning trigger because you thought you were going to be using it in self-defense and you wanted to make sure you could kill the guy or things like that. Um, it's not as big a deal as people say, but I don't recommend changing your trigger on your carry gun. Just learn to shoot your your carry gun uh, adequately. 
That being said, all my 1911s have trigger work done to them, and I carry them anyways. I don't give a shit. It's a 1911. I, I want the best possible trigger I can, but like my Glocks or the SIGs, like the 226 and the, the 320, those are not modified in any way. They're just bone stock. I uh, heard a while back about some sort of giggle switch, electric switch, I think for ARs, the company was experimenting, didn't know anything about it. No, I really, I, that's a little bit uh, uh, vague for me. Uh, did I try a TSOS Raider? No, I have not tried a Raider yet, but I have the Night Stalker coming. Opinion on Smith & Wesson MP 2.0s. I like them. They're decent guns. They run good. I would put it like an Apex rolling trigger in them, and that solves the only problem I have with them. I'm not a big fan of their triggers on the 2.0s. Uh, should you run backup iron sights if you have a quality optic? Uh, Arm Preacher, good question. That is a $500 optic. My primary arms, ACSS Cyclops on there, and I still run backups. It, uh, you should always have backups regardless, but especially if you're like this one. The Cyclops is a fixed four power like an ACOG, so if I'm trying to reach way out, I might prefer to use the irons with the peep. So that has backup irons on it, and you should just always have backups because what if you have like a standard red dot? So you have a 510 hollow sun, for example, and your battery dies, then you have nothing. That at least has a ret, uh, an reticle that's ret, um, etched reticle. So even if that battery is dead, I still have a reticle for shooting. But even if, if I didn't, then backups would definitely come in handy. Uh, best self-defense insurance. Um, somebody said lawyers on retainer. I have U.S. Law Shield, so it just depends uh, what you do. Uh, just look at them both and see what they offer. Just avoid U.S. CCA like the plague. They're, they'll dump you in a heartbeat if they think the case is bad. What if I bump fire a Glock 20? Well, cool. That's a lot of 10 mil you're going to be using. I see that, but uh, not to lighten the trigger, just to change the profile. Um, I mean, you can change your trigger shoe. If you're trying to, if that's what you mean, like going from a curve to a flat trigger, things like that. Um, but again, it all depends because I know guys that'll take a Glock and there are some manufacturers where they have the Glock trigger without the uh, trigger safety in them. That's an instant no-no. Uh, although like that 320 has no external safety, no trigger safety. All it has is a drop safety. Uh, you have a non-adjustable on your carry. Yes to flat. I mean, that's another thing. Like I said, it all depends because... Depending on the situation you find yourself in, let's say that you're, it's just you and one other guy and you happen to kill the guy, that's going to be a much different story than you versus five guys and you kill one guy and there's four guys left that are all going to testify against you. So the prosecutor uh, feels that uh, you should have either retreated or whatever the bullshit story they come up with to try to prosecute you because you were the guy with the gun. Anything that they can do, um, Paul Harrell, uh, soon to be rest his soul, was talking about how uh, like if you carry a Glock 22 because it's a 40 cal and that's what cops carried. If you drive a Crown Vic because that's what they used to drive, now they drive fucking Tauruses. But if you try to do things that make you seem like law enforcement, then they say, oh, well, you're trying to copy law enforcement bullshit. Anything they can use, they're going to. So just make sure that you're in the right when you have to use your weapon. Chambering a 300 blackout round in a 5.56 seems like a good idea. Yeah, I've seen that go very bad. Uh, we had somebody do that at our gun store. Uh, what are some ways I can support the channel? You got yourself a new subscriber to say the least. How often do I do a live chat? I do lives every uh, uh, three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, you can support the channel. You can look at the links and stuff. I, I have shirts and stuff that are available like this one. Although this is the prototype, the big, the newer one has a bigger thing that's down a little bit lower. Um, you can become a member. You can hit the join button two bucks a month. And I do a giveaway at the beginning of every month for members. Um, and then I do one at the end of the month for everybody. Uh, should I change the stock on your AR? Absolutely. Get one that you like. Uh, what is a drop safety? Sanchiro, good question. Inside of most modern firearms, especially striker-fired ones, but some hammer-fired ones, there is a plunger that is activated by the pull of the trigger. It'll push up, which then allows the striker or firing pin to pass where that plunger is and strike the cartridge. It's designed so that if you drop the gun without pulling the trigger, you know, let's say, yes, 320s go off, don't put it in the comments, but if you were to drop, say, that CZ on the ground on its back, it's even if the hammer fell, it has a drop safety in it that protects it from firing the gun because the trigger itself wasn't pulled. So that plunger has to move out of the way before the gun will fire. 
Uh, copy. I'm in a right to carry state. Then go for it. Uh, hot take on Clint Smith at Thunder Ranch, based or cringe? Um, I agree with a lot of what he says. Uh, obviously, as an individual with my own op uh, opinions and thoughts, there are some things I don't agree with, but he's he's okay. Um, you know, he's, he says what he believes in, and I can't fault somebody for doing that one. Uh, if you believe in what you're saying, then, you know, that's cool. I mean, if you're completely and demonstrably wrong, that's one thing. But he just kind of throws it out there and he says what his opinion is. And he's got decades of experience, so he must know what he's talking about a little bit. So, uh, what's the worst gun you've seen? Um... It's kind of hard because somebody's worst gun might be a great gun to somebody else, but there was this company that used to make really shitty, like, $100 guns, and I had one of their 380s, and we got one mag out of it, and the follower popped out of it. Thoughts on the Browning High Power Pistol? If you like 9mm, it's a great alternative to a 1911 because it was designed with the 9mm cartridge in mind, and it also eliminates things that some 1911 owners don't like. Some don't like the grip safety. Some don't like the way um, that it, it works. Uh, and this more simplistic design of the Browning High Power. Um, I enjoy them. They're good. Um, they're still popular. I mean, that's about all I can say. Uh, kids, I think we're done here soon. Uh, thoughts on the Alec Baldwin shooting? Should have never happened. Should have been better control over props on set. Should have been triple, quadruple, and checking on everything. And Alec Baldwin's stance on the whole thing just is the number one reason why uh, he should go to jail. Because he keeps insisting he didn't pull the trigger and multiple sources, including the FBI who tested the gun, said it couldn't go off unless he was holding the trigger. So, uh, you know what? Uh, commonly held belief is not the truth. How much did your 1911 cost? Depends on which one you're talking about. Sometimes I pick them up at pawn shops. Sometimes I buy them off of people. Sometimes they were gifts. That stainless one, it's worth 12, 12 or 1300 but I only have 500 into it. So I, I find deals. Um, it's hard to say. The Smith & Wesson 459 is your favorite. I had one of those. I sold it to my buddy. Uh, how much did I pay for the Mako paint job? Um, the Mustangs, if you're talking about that video, it was like fourteen or 1500 and they fixed the damage I caused to the trunk lid. Great seeing you again. Till next show, brother. All right, Guile. Thank you so much for coming back, dude. Um, but like I was saying, I, I think it's done. I'm at a little bit over five hours and I am fading out quick here, guys. I got to get up early in the morning. I have a doctor's appointment. So to everybody that stayed around this late, thank you guys so much for a wonderful Monday morning live stream. Wednesday, seven o'clock Eastern, or I'll be on and then we'll go for as long as we can again. Gun with the biggest, with the biggest kick I've got. I've sold all my big kick guns. Um, keep being awesome. You too, fix it. Uh, good night, but it's afternoon here. Well, Welcome to the afternoon, uh, Sanchiro. Thanks for coming back again. Appreciate you asking some good questions. I like being able to explain stuff. Um, love you, man. Have a good night. Hey, hey, thank you, Calvin. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, if you if you haven't hit the like button on your way out, maybe consider hitting that thing. That way people will be like, oh, look, people like him. And then YouTube will stop being a bunch of douche nozzles. Thanks for the replies. Take care. You too, Jeremy. Uh, come back for the next one, dude. If you think of new questions or if you want to just hang out with more people. I am down, so I'm going to hit this button and go away. So, have a good night, guys. Bye, Paul.